Sega comes back, right? And E3 has a physical event next year. Well, then why are you here, Phil and Phil? <laughs> but anyway, if E3 comes back next year and they have a physical event and Summer Games Fest is happening roughly the same time and also has a physical event, do people go to one or the other? Do people go to both? Because I feel like people might just go to both. Anyway, um, it is the year 409, which means the year is not found because it's year 404. Next year will be year 405. I want to say we're running close to the end of it, too. Yes, we're in late winter, the second of Obsidian. You answered the question, and I didn't like your answer, which is totally fine. And um, my response to your answer is, well, then why are you here? If you don't want to watch me play Dwarf Fortress, what, what are you even doing here? Um... It's kind of, wow, that's a, so we have, we've got a couple really upset dwarves. Um, the biggest, no, most notable event is we have a new king. Um, the new king is Radio Free Olive, who's also very, 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 very depressed, um, which is annoying. So <laughs> we get to deal with this. Uh, well, it wasn't a funny joke, so um, we get to deal with that dwarf as our king for the, the, the coming future. Another thing that we need to do is I need to make a statue of Radio Free Olive um, because of the fact that they are now our king. Radio Free Olive, and we also need to make a statue of the new mayor, which I also haven't done. Who's do it? Uh, no, because I do not do that. Not in this fort. If you want to play Dwarf Fortress that way, you're more than welcome to, Lola son. I don't do that in Long Death. No, in Long Death, we let things play out. I'll expel people, but no accidents. We're not a fortress of violence unless we're the ones attacked. Besides, it's not like he tantrums or anything. I have a question. If you um, were having mental health problems and someone just told you to kill yourself, how would that make you feel? We have to do our best to help this poor king. Keep them alive. Can I expel the king? No, they're the king. Why would I expel the king? We only have 25 dwarves in the fort right now. We need to treasure the ones we have, even if they're a little bit annoying. Because we are very limited on the dwarves that we currently have. Well, I mean, I'll say this. If I expelled every dwarf that was a slight problem, Long Death wouldn't have lasted this long. So. If I squished every dwarf that was a problem, Long Death also wouldn't have lasted this long. So if you would like to keep a fort alive for a thousand years, you do that the way you see fit. But trust me, killing every dwarf that's slightly annoying is not a solution to problems. So we're making the king's figurines. We're also making them statues. Long live long death indeed. Can you make him happier? I mean, we're trying. What, what, what part of we're trying do you not understand? I mean, one of the first things I'm going to do is remove his hauling. Only got appointed to being king on the last stream, so. Still trying to figure out how to work with this human. Um, we're at war, so the humans keep invading with us. So we need to figure out how to work with them and deal with them. Um, currently, um, there's a lot of bodies in here which we're going to need to clean out. So part of the pro one of the projects for today is we're going to try and get lava in there to clean it out. Uh, well, we haven't had a migrant since the year 120, and we're in the year 409. Um, 
birth rate is fine. The problem is, is we're dealing with um, Dwarf Fortress related issues. <laughs> also, I'm playing in a much older version of the game now where stress is a much bigger deal. And I have to take care of dwarves that become stress. The uh, population cap is actually, well, te technically we have 53 dwarves. 25 are just permanent citizens. The rest are all migrants, or merchants, rather. And one of the merchants is actually the queen, which is kind of funny, because the, the queen is a merchant who was married to Radio Free Olive when they were expelled, but I brought them back because the population got too low. Well, it was low on purpose, but we're not this low on purpose. I want it to be closer to 40 or 50, which we've been at before via just dwarves having kids. Do I know about Space Station 13? That's like asking me if I know about Oxygen. Never heard of her. Of course I know about Space Station 13. What do you, what do you take me for? Somebody who doesn't play weird, obsessive niche video games and somebody who has never heard of the streamer Rust Money before? Come on. I've literally got like a two and a half year long reset for, to Rust Money. Of course I've heard of SS13. I've played SS13. I have it installed on this computer right now. I also have uh, Space Station 14 installed on this computer right now. Um, well, at least you're happy. The meaning of assumption. Oof. What's the name of a book? All right, well. Do I not have any gold? Hmm. I do. I got 101. But a lot of them are being used for various random things that aren't super necessary. And I kind of want them for statues. I'm going to rip those up real quick. I wonder if I have native gold ore. Gotta have some. At least I know I did at one point. I was under the impression that I had a lot of gold bars just sitting around. What are these? Electrum? Oh, we could do them out of Electrum or Brass. Yeah, they're mostly Brass and Electrum. Some Bismuth as well. Fake gold, essentially. And this is all Limonite. Which is Iron Ore. Alright, well. Let's cancel both of those. Uh, let's make Electrum statues. Can I? Wait, really? Oh, no. Oh, man. Um, I don't want to make infinite. I just want to make one. Why do I keep forgetting to hit one? My muscle memory is not working today. There we go. Done. Got them all set up. So they'll cancel those gold statues. Make them out of Electrum instead. I really need, like, a disclaimer somewhere on this stream where it's just, like, if you're asking me about a game that I don't actively stream, yes, I already know it exists. No, I don't want to stream it. <laughs> because that's that's usually where these questions go. It's, have you heard of this game? Would you stream it? Like, well, I haven't yet, so why would I know? <laughs> it's usually how that goes.
So you're... That's actually not true. There are games that I've that have been mentioned in chat that I haven't heard of before. They're just very rare. Close to zero, yeah. Vast majority of the time, it's... I, usually when people ask me about random games in chat, it's because they want me to stream them. And I always need to remind people that it's like, yeah, well, if you're asking me about a random game, odds are pretty good. If I don't actively stream it already, I have no interest in streaming it. Mm, no. Disagree. Thanks for the 10 cents, Irish stupid. The thing is, when, when you're getting asked the same questions every single day, eventually it just starts to become like a, yes, I've heard of the game, no, I don't want to play it. <laughs> it's like you just skip some of the parts. It's like, well. I, I play games that I'm interested in. It's uh, Part of the reason I, I get annoyed with this is because, like, Aurora 4X. There's a few people who watch this stream who play Aurora 4X that really, 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 really want me to stream Aurora 4X. It's literally never going to happen, and I wish people would stop asking. So whenever the topic of Aurora 4X comes up, I'm always just like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so why are you still asking me? Um, same with most Paradox games. It's like, whenever that comes up, it's like, yeah, I have no interest. But like, I have to answer that question three times a month from different people. So if I could have a way of like quelling those questions before they happen so I don't need to be like eye roll. All right, no, I'm not going to stream that <laughs> because two other people asked me this last week. Without feeling like I'm just being an asshole, which is usually how I end up feeling. Chatbot command? That doesn't actually fix the problem, though. Chatbot commands are not this one all fix all everything thing. You have no clue what it is? Google it and look at the UX. <laughs> you tell me what's wrong with it. Literally just Google Aurora 4X and then go to search by images. People say that Dwarf Fortress makes your eyes bleed. They haven't seen Aurora 4X. <laughs> Aurora 4X is a it's a um, single player space 4X made by a crazy person who just wanted to make a game for himself, um, and allows other people to play it. Um, it it looks like the worst combination of uh, neon blue and lime green running in Windows XL for like Windows. 98. <laughs> That's what it looks like. But it's 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 like the Dwarf Fortress of Space Forex. It's, it's just this extremely deep, um, endlessly replayable and modifiable, malleable Forex game. And it's very good for what it is. It's just not, not a game that I ever want to play. It, do, it doesn't actually run in Excel. It runs in C++. But it looks like it runs in Excel. Looks like the worst parts of DF and Eve combined. Well, fortunately, it has the worst parts of Eve removed. The parts where other human beings play that game. Um, so that's good. You don't have to deal with other humans in Eve. Uh, unlike Eve. Um, but outside of that, yeah, I agree. Okay, let's... Uh... Pull that lever. Let that water out. So I'm going to need to drain out some of the bottom of this. An old star chart software from 1995? Yeah, kinda, actually. What I actually need to do is I need to make like a big document at some point with my current game rotation. That's what I should really do. Where it's just like games that I'm actively playing, games that I'm considering playing soon. But the thing is, is it would get updated so often that I don't know if I would remember to keep up with it. Then I also have to take into account the fact that my brain just decides it wants to do other things sometimes. <laughs> so I, 
Yeah, I don't know. But, you know, like Dwarf Fortress, one benefit that um, Aurora 4X has is it is free. <laughs> Just make your whole monitor monochrome. <laughs> I mean, that's one way around the problem. I feel like the proper way to play um, Aurora would be to get yourself an old tube monitor at, like, 480p. And then just, like, you know, the, the old tube monitors that had the little dials on the sides where you could, like, twiddle the dials to, like, adjust the colors? And just remove all color. Just goes full monochrome. And then just make it look like an old, like, fake display or something. That would actually be kind of... I was I was thinking about that, Han Tomas. Is like, that would also be a really good way to play Caves of Cud would be on an old monitor. Also, I totally forgot to do this, but the dwarves that are alive currently in the fortress are Dragon, Lotharticus, Anonimo, the Scoid, Malden, Merc, Red Octobear, Disco, Diamond Destruct, Volleylol, Tigos are the third, who, by the way, has a full fucking title now because they've killed a bunch of people. They're now the Lantern Trumpets, the Rhyming Something Something. Uh, the Rhyming Tresses, yeah. Um, anyway, Lilim, Katsu, Zindros, Stone, Radio Free, Olive, our king. All hail the king. Uh, Paranoid, Metroid, Rory, do it. Frog for hire, who was depressed last time I checked. Arch the second, Mist, wait what, Wilmer, uh, Jack Nurick, Bastet, Banana, and Navy. So your truck broke? That's nothing new. Hopefully not with you in it. Oh, the key broke. Wait. Um, are you outside of the truck or in the truck? <laughs> because if it broke outside of the truck, I'd be almost more concerned if you're locked out. But yeah, in the ignition? Like, can't you just call a locksmith? This seems like a suboptimal problem, I gotta admit. I don't really know how to <laughs> respond to that. that. That sucks, dude. <laughs> So I gotta dump that body. Well, sounds like you uh, you got all day though. Oh, only twenty minutes. That's not so bad. Never seen a car key break. I broke my mailbox key in my mailbox last year. Yeah, I, I broke it in my mailbox last year. Thick as fuck? I mean, I think that Orange is just bragging about how strong his thumb is. You know, just real strong thumb twist on that ignition. Just snaps the key right off. But yeah, I've, I've heard of that happening. You don't usually start a car 20 times a day? That too. Yeah, you usually start your car maybe, what, twice a day? Maybe three? To go run an errand or go to the gym outside of twice? A lot more stress on a truck. Key, I would guess. Yeah, you've just got a really strong thumb. Orange. At least it's not that long of a wait, though. And at least you have enough data to, you know, watch Twitch and whatnot while you wait. It could be worse. I mean, granite. Uh... Where did my granite go? Oh, there it is. You've broken an immobilizer key from your mom's car once in an open position. Thankfully, the car would be stuck in reverse until the locksmith came to fix it. Oh, man.
Yeah, I mean, when when I locked my when I locked my when I snapped my key off in the mailbox, it was like peak like second wave of the pandemic so like restrictions were all at the maximum and it took me like four days um to uh what, what's the word it took me like four days to get the key fixed because there was like one guy working at the locksmith and he was just booked so i finally got him to come fix it and he brought pliers and pulled them out and made me a new key and all that um and it worked it was fine but uh during that time i had to put like a sign on my mailbox saying mailbox key broken um, please do not deliver mail till this day when the key's getting repaired. Which I'm sure Canada Post loved, but it was fine. It was like that or slide it under the door of my apartment. They, they never did that, so instead I just got no mail delivered for a few days. Also, I've never heard of an immobilizer key before. What's an immobilizer key? Man, I haven't even turned on this pump stack in a very long time. I need to go all the way down it and make sure that it's all set to work. I mean, it should be. One thing I do need to do, though, is I need to drain some of this lava out. Just a few Z levels worth. Also, uh, we're now into the first of spring. So the game is saving. I almost want to Google a mobilizer key. Because, yeah, no, I've never heard of an immobilizer key before. This is a new concept to me. I'm assuming it's a key that, like, locks it in a particular gear or something, but... A steering wheel lock? I mean, I've heard of those. My dad's old truck had a steering wheel lock. But why would it st lock it in reverse? <laughs> That, that's the strange part to me, is the fact that it would lock it in reverse. Alright, so we're still at 25, still at 53, nobody died of old age. Draining in case of, ah, that's the lever I need to pull. This is a very far away lever. I, you know, what's kind of epic about this fortress is I don't think any dwarves have come down to this room probably in 150 years to pull this lever. I can't quite remember when we finished this, but it's been a very long time. What was that race video about, cutest, that you just posted? I haven't watched it, but I saw it in my sub subscriptions. I haven't, just haven't had the time to look. Zindros is coming down to pull the lever. We're going to be draining out a bunch of lava to be able to redirect lava. But in order to redirect lava safely, I have to change things slightly. There it goes. That is a lot of lava that is now draining. So if I jump all the way up to here and go all the way up to here, this is now draining out of the top here. Yeah, the, they, they mentioned that during the race, but what was the mistake? You have a manual transmission. If you set it in reverse gear, you can insert a metal bar into the side of the gearbox, which will prevent you from changing the gear. There's a separate key to disarm it. Can I just say that is maybe the most Soviet thing I've ever heard? Like, that is the most, like, we're just going to fucking throw a wrench into this and see if it works solution for a thing that I've ever heard. That is bonkers.
fascinating. <laughs> the mistake is to copy Mercedes? Oh. Well, I mean, if it worked for Racing Point. <laughs> but, um, hmm. You, you insert the bar into the hole once you get on the highway. So it's like a pin that puts you into cruise control? Am I understanding this correctly? That, huh. Wow. Once again, I will state, once again, that is the most Soviet thing I think I've ever seen. That is crazy to me. <laughs> yeah, I literally never heard of that or seen that in my entire life. But yeah, no, when, when Racing Point was still called Racing Point, there was some hubbub about, like, the Racing Point car in 2019, I think it was... I think it was 2019, literally just being a carbon copy of the Mercedes car, which is why they were so fast that year. It's because their car was all, like, to the point where they had to, like, look at, uh, like, the FIA had to look at their plans and every single step that they used to build the car, not believing that they didn't just, like, steal the straight schematics from Mercedes. That shouldn't obviously. Wait, um, hmm. Are you on a VPN currently? But that's, that's strange. This is going to take a little while to dig through because there's, um, all of this water up here. But actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do it this way. Yeah, I'm going to do it this way. Go up this way. Go up one more. Over to there. And then go down to there. Actually, you know what? Let's go up a few more tiles. Let's go up to here. Go over to here. Go over to there. And then down on this side. We're also going to go along here. Which should also be quicker to dig through. So I just need to kind of keep an eye on the lava and wait for it to drain down enough. Decided to buy Warsim due to my recommendation to try it out at least. It's a fun little game. Just don't take it too seriously. <laughs> that's that's my advice on Warsim. But the, the combat stuff's gotten a lot better recently. Merck and Williams made the same design decisions, I think. It was just em emphasize, it's just emphasizing the ground effect. Okay. All right. Well, I guess I, I get to watch the video then. But, I mean, I rather, I will watch the video regardless. Hold on, am I supposed to take you seriously, Orange? <laughs> Hope I didn't miss a memo there. So the problem with me dumping lava into here is dumping lava is going to destroy all my drawbridges. Um, the okay part about dumping lava into here is um, on one hand, it'll destroy all my drawbridges, but it will also... Um, man, will it destroy this Wolverine bone door? So I have this artifact bone door here. Will lava destroy it, or will lava only destroy it if it occupies the same tile as it? Does anybody know? Because this is an artifact bone door. But I don't want to open that unless I have to.
gas cap lock? Jesus Christ. What is that, to lock your gas tank? You sure you put this on a gas cap and not, like, on a school locker? Because <laughs> that's what that looks like to me. That looks, that looks like something that you'd, like, pay a loony for to, like, lock your bathing suit and wallet in at a pool. Seen those on... I, I'm assuming that's to, to stop people from stealing fuel, yeah? Because, <laughs> like, that makes some sense. Still, Soviet as fuck. You know, I'd like to remind you, draining this tube takes 10 billion years. <laughs> like, it is actively draining right now, but my god, does it ever drain slowly. I go all the way down to the bottom. Yeah, it is it is draining right now. But it drained real slow. I mean, that's how punk bands go on tour. Didn't you know this? Orange? Sheesh. You stop at a truck stop and take what you want while they're sleeping. Of a guy drilling a tank and setting themselves on fire. I mean... Darwin strikes again, I suppose? If you drill into a fuel tank, what, what do you really expect? Real life doesn't work like Breaking Bad, I would say. They're going to start hitting these watery, wet areas. Those are some of the most interesting URLs I've ever seen. Lockpicking Lawyer has a video about that lock. Really? That does sound like a sort of thing that Lockpicking Lawyer would do. You know, cutest, I'm not really one to be like, that's a shady link, but if somebody just like posted that link that you just said, try this at Tygo, if somebody just posted that with no context in my chat, I would assume it was some sort of phishing link because that's what it looks like to me. That link looks like a scam. There's nothing about that link that looks legitimate. Everything about that link looks like the sort of thing that would, like... Considering J1AIL. Uh-huh. <laughs> I love the series of videos that Lockpicking Lawyer did with him and his wife where he's just like, I'm gonna lock the, the ice cream up. And then she just, like, cut the bottom of the ice cream bin off. <laughs> Has, like, every lock on his channel at this point? Mm-hmm. It does look like jail. That's, that's how I read that. That looks like a link that you click on and you go to jail. That's how that reads. <laughs> The scary looking link is how the sites actually interpret it. Sure, no, totally. I, I, I completely I completely believe it's just like not an English website, but <laughs> it very much looks like shady link dot something. The the malware the malware site that you use says it's suspect. Well, I mean that doesn't surprise me a huge amount. Um, I need Gabbro. 
or iron. Um. Orthoclase would work too. Pretty sure I have a bunch of Gabbro, don't I? Hmm. There they are. Hello, Keegan. You downloaded Thor browser just to click. Oh, you downloaded a Tor browser just to click on this link? I mean, I generally would trust links that my Russian mod posts <laughs> to not immediately destroy your computer. Maybe just after some time when you least expect it. Now, if you installed a virtual machine, just to um, click that link, then I'd actually be impressed. All right, so I need to put another door, door in front of that. The elves have arrived to trade because it is early spring. In the year 405 and long death. Uh, let's do do it first. And radio free olive. Continuing the history of this fortress. Or click it on Linux and watch the viruses getting confused. I, I, I used to... Well, there, there's somebody who I know through Twitch who I still interact with sometimes who um, has a habit and hobby of finding shady links that bot po bots post and uh, opening them up in Ubuntu VMs or old Windows VMs and just seeing what they do. It's a heck of a hobby, I'll put it that way. But how you doing today, Keegan? What's up? We're playing Long Death. Long Death is at war. And I'm trying to find a um, clean, simple, easy solution of disposing of human bodies. Um, <laughs> because there's a lot of them uh, in this hallway. And I don't really want to just send the dwarves in there to, you know, go deal with them. So instead of sending the dwarves in to just go deal with them, I'm doing it this way because it's easier. I don't think Billin is lava safe, is it? Uh, definitely isn't, but I'm going to check just for sure. Same with nice. Well, nice isn't, so it doesn't matter. Pile them and burn them. It's literally what I'm doing, but I don't want the dwarves to pile them. Because if the dwarves have to see them, that's a lot of unnecessary stress, and that's what I want to avoid. So I'm not going to tell the dwarves to do anything of the sort. I'm simply going to um, redirect my lava so that my lava can deal with it. Alright, so you get hooked up to the most recent bridge. Two iron mechanisms. One of our coworkers in the 90s was always carrying a floppy with a virus, which he's isolated on it with him. He said that it was his pet now. This reminds me of that, um... That sounds like something that the... That one YouTuber who just, like, investigates DOS viruses. Like, weird-ass DOS viruses. You don't have the slightest idea what's going on in this game? Yeah, like what, what uh, El Neso said. Please ask. 
because we can help. It's actually like pretty simple if you've ever played The Sims or games like RimWorld or any kind of colony management game. Um, it's pretty straightforward for the most part. It just looks obtuse. I like the score. 92. Very risky. At least there's no fishing issues. But it is safe. But it is... It's safe but sus. <laughs> and very risky. That's... That's Russian websites for you. Um, where, where, where are you? There you are. Going to bring as much used clothing as possible. And... Um, Request my trader. Also, apparently one of my merchants committed a crime, so I'm gonna put him in prison. Well, I've never played it, so I don't know, but yeah, I I I I wouldn't know. <laughs> I've tried to play it once and it was such an unpleasant experience, I'm never going to do it again. Um but yeah, I have no idea. I don't think so. It's it's, it's more of from the bits that I've played, it's much more of an automation and slash diplomacy slash sandbox thing. So depending on how you design the enemy factions that you're playing against, um, it'll change quite frequently. You got raided into my stream? Oh, did you come in from FG? <laughs> if you were lurking in FG's channel, then that'd do it, Mr. I'm Tickets Rich Now, Diamond. <laughs> What's up, man? Should all be good? Gotcha. Flexing the worthless digits? Yes. I mean, sometimes you gotta flex worthless digits. Just like I gotta flex arbitrary internet fame. You know, I tabbed over to Bellinaire's stream, and I have his subtitles turned on. And I don't know what he's talking about, but I'm going to read these subtitles out loud. Happy Napara, Xterra, sponsor the stream. Thanks, early sparkly water, <laughs> is what his subtitles thought he just said. So, I guess that's what happens when... Um... <laughs> <laughs> when uh, Google Translate's trying to keep track of a fin. His subtitles are hilarious. Grab some more plums and apricots. Plum wine. What, flexing our internet fame? I, go I suppose. Also, Cutis, can I just talk about for a second how great a race Silverstone was? I fell asleep halfway through it because I was just really fucking tired that day, but woke up and watched the rest of it in the afternoon, and my god, that was a good race. Damn. I, I, really good race. Really fun race to watch. Really makes me hopeful we're actually going to get like a three-way fight for the championship. Silverstone was great. Honestly, like, every every single Silverstone race I've ever seen before has just been boring. But, man. The CCS is ridiculous. Yeah, no, I I mean, the, the closed captions are, are ridiculous. It's, 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 uh, there, there's a few people who watch my streams who st have said that they're deaf. Um, and they say that the closed captions are good enough that they can follow approximately what I'm saying. Which is... Better than not having closed captions, as far as I'm concerned. So it's better to have, like, halfway functional closed captions than it is to have no closed captions, you know? Bastet, what up? It's good to see you. Hello. Hello. 
Although I will say that there are some closed captions uh, solutions on Twitch that are scammy as fuck. It's working great on my channel? Yeah, except for when it's not. You scared your mom by screaming with your sis during the last two laughs. That's funny. Kind of adorable. Also, hey, Athros, what's up, dude? How's the thing? Good day. Just offer those as a gift, but I literally can't. Turns out the elves are the new uh, receivers of my used laundry now. Scamming is fucking G. Um, yes. Scamming is in fact fucking gangster. Also standing is fucking gangster. How did you do that? Captions. <laughs> Baldur's Gate 3 stuff looking great. Work is work. Everything else is normal as it gets in the U.S. Yeah. Yeah. How am I doing? I'm doing all right. I've, I've been in a weird mood this week. It's like, you know the feeling when you're just a couple of days away from just falling into a horrible depression? You know that, you know that feeling? I'm at that point, and I've been teetering on it for the last week. And it's not pleasant. Um... Aside from that, I've been okay, though. Camping was great. Vacation was great. So I'm generally in pretty good spirits right now. But I'm trying real hard to keep my brain in check, which is why I ended stream very suddenly on uh, Tuesday this week. But here's a pile of old clothes. I'm sure they can break them down into something. You know, I j also just realized how quickly this is going to inflate my... Um, Death toll. <laughs> 20,000 dead. Here we come. So the last two years have been kind of quiet as far as enemy invasions go. It's been a little bit since they've actively attacked us. So that part is good. Well, hasn't really gone down much. It's down to here now, which is an improvement. I'm sorry, what? 20,000 daddy? What? I... Okay. <laughs> you know, like, like, like I've said many times in the past, closed captions is either hilarious unintended comedy or a very useful tool for people who are disabled. <laughs> it's like those two things. And nobody complains about either of them, so. When it's not working, it's hilarious. When it's working, it's very useful. Yeah, I know, definitely. Imagine if we went to war in the first hundred years like half of chat wanted us to, Stone. Fortunately, though, we still have plenty of um, my, uh, uh, temporary people living here. The merchants. I like that my uh, captain of the guard slash broker is just taking a real quick break to go chain somebody up and put him in prison. <laughs> Uh, 25 total. 25 dwarves are in the fort. We were at 31, and then one died, and then one got real mad. Or rather, we were at 31, and then one got real mad and killed a bunch of dwarves. And then, um, Tygo, uh, one-shot him. 
So, and got grim satisfaction out of it. So, shoutouts to Tygo, killing Bloodcat. Bloodcat, um, was a very troubled dwarf. Although it's fitting that Tygo's over here just worshipping, uh, the deity of disease and death. So, that part's fitting. Shouldn't there be a party in the tavern now? I mean, currently we're trying to clean up all these bodies, so after we're, fi we're done figuring out cleaning up all these bodies, then we'll have a party in the tavern. Also, traitors are something we haven't had very frequently, so they're kind of a priority currently. But yes, we do need to have a party. We do, in fact, need to have a party in the tavern. Long death, start war, you won't believe it. I mean, I kind of don't do clickbait, literally, but... I mean, we've been... The lowest we ever were at was 21. So 25 isn't too, too bad. And we do have plenty of merchants. It's just a matter of them making babies. The problem is, is when dwarves have babies, it's always like t uh, one couple, and they're like, yeah, two babies a year on average for, like multiple years and then suddenly you have like a family of like 17 which is great but then they don't marry each other which isn't so great yeah i don't really do clickbait but that being said, um, the closest thing to uh, clickbait that I've done probably would be that, uh, that, that well, maybe not clickbait, but like the closest thing to me going against what I do is putting out that video that Diamond took all the screenshots for, the Stone Sense video. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, dwarves will not marry siblings. They will marry, like, second and third cousins, though. Um, which is kind of fine. Dwarves have pretty close to, like, regular human standards, I would say, when it comes to, like, who they will get married to. Um, it's like, they'll, they'll marry, like, step-siblings and half-sibling, like, and, like, half-cousins. Um and like several times removed cousins, but they will not marry like somebody in their immediate family. Although, um, one thing I do think is kind of annoying is when you have like these super happy dwarves that go and get married and then have a billion lovers. Cause if a dwarf is a lover with somebody, they won't have kids with them. They will just simply be their lover and get happy thoughts from it, which is fine. But the problem with this is if you have like one dwarf who's like, I'm in love with everybody, and then they have like 10 lovers, it's like, great, that's 10 dwarves now that won't have kids, which is actually the reason we're having problems right now, because I had this one lady dwarf who kept on, like, be who was lovers with like nine different dwarves, including the king, uh, <laughs> which was like a problem because she was married, but she also had like a bunch of girlfriends and a bunch of boyfriends, um, which meant like half my dwarves for that entire generation just didn't get married and didn't have kids, which is part of the reason we're in this pit right now of like, oh, great. Uh, my dwarves aren't making babies because they were <laughs> too busy all ha like having happy orgies with that one dwarf, which is great. But like, if that makes any sense. The F do it good? Yeah, like they're too busy just having sex for fun instead of making children. God damn it. <laughs> but, you know, some sometimes it's just, it's just what you gotta work with, unfortunately. God damn it, how much longer do I need to wait for this thing to finish draining? Can you carve fortifications? Oh my god, you can carve fortifications on constructed walls? Wow, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to, you know, obliterate my dwarves that are there, but that's kind of neat. 
I literally just need to wait for enough of that to drain. All right, let's see if this is fully set up and good to go. Nope. Okay, my elves are done trading. Means my captain of the guard is going to go remove a construction. See how that chained up dwarf is doing. Repentant! Great. Feels admiration after being near a completely fine container and is satisfied after receiving water. I was confined. I repent. I repent. Which means they, they will be totally fine probably by the time they get out of prison. How long are you in prison for? 20 days. Yeah, you should be good. I love it when I have dwarves that love being in prison. Uh, no, the, 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 it was Kisoth, Kis, Kis, Kisoth, something. Um, it was one of my merchants, not Sui. Sui wasn't a lover dwarf. Sui just had kind of a funny end to her love life. Um, I did have, um, Axon was one dwarf that did that. Bastet was another dwarf that did that. They do happen pretty frequently <laughs> in current Dwarf Fortress, which is kind of funny, but it's one of those, it's not that big of a deal. It's just kind of amusing more than anything. Are there ways to help dwarves getting in sexy Baba time? Uh, lock them in a room together, <laughs> just like real life. I think that's the only spot that I need to fix. Yeah. That's not true, but okay. You're just saying words, <laughs> Diamond. You asked me how do you, how do you like make dwarves make kids? Lock them in a room together. I answered your question and you're just like, "No, that's not what that is." It's like, "Oh, okay. Then don't ask me questions if you're just going to like write them off as non-answers." <laughs> All right, pump number one is going. The pump that we use to power pump number two. Actually, no, that's, eh, well, I mean, we partially use it to power pump number two. Then there's also this pump, which I'm going to rebuild. Is that not like set up to work? Oh, I see why. I have to rebuild that. Hopefully I can get this whole thing set up and running for this year, but we'll see. Problem is, is I'm, there's a very real possibility I get attacked this year. Are the people experiencing that Discord is punch pushing Nitro there more? Probably, but I pay for Discord Nitro, so I can't say that I've had that exact problem. Um, but chat, have you guys noticed Discord is pushing Discord Nitro more? 
That wouldn't surprise me in the slightest if they have been, though. That would make a lot of sense. Why are you finding it bothersome amounts? Oh, we got a merchant tantruming and a merchant punching a merchant. Frog for hire, why are you tantruming? Yeah, I, I pay for um, Discord Nitro because I, I have to. Is that why you're tantruming, Frog? Is because you're not very Discord experienced? You're getting 29 days in prison. And the captain of the guard is making a rock figurine, so you got a minute. Seems like it, yeah. There seems to be an alert you can't clear. From Discord? Or where? Screenshot the alert. And post it in sub chat, and I'll tell you how to clear it. Hopefully there will be a repentance period. Yeah, I hope so too. Otherwise, you're just kind of screwed. Currently, you're regretful after starting a fist fight, though, so... Generally a good sign. See, this dwarf is, like, almost entirely fixed already. At least there's no other, um... Real prison sentences against you, so there's that. Down to five. It's going to take a while to drain. But yeah, once it's below that level, once it's below this level, I just um, fortify that wall right there, build a wall in between the two, and then pull the, pull, pull the fill lever. Although I need to remind myself where the fill lever is for this thing. I think it might be... Not this. I think it might be this one. I think that collapses this. As for the turn it on lever, I think it's down at the bottom. I think it's down here. Didn't get it? That seems to be the general response to that movie. It's the drain in case of ah uh, lever. Shit, where's the turn it all on lever? Oh, maybe there isn't one. Oh, wait, no, I know where it is. I know where I put it. <laughs> it's in the weird um, transfer spot. But not. Nope, not there. This whole, like, I haven't used this system in like a hundred years. I don't know where I put my levers. Might be this. Maybe it's in the maze. Not in the maze. Probably, it's probably. Yes, it's in the maze. Pump stack shut off. Found it. Okay, cool. Great. <laughs> this is the I hmm built too many systems, too ramshackly. It's full. Yes, it's full. Cool. Industrial machinery. Yeah, and like, where's the where's the on button? All right, well, something else I need to do. I need to pull this lever right here. Because this is going to open this floodgate. I need to put another door in front of that door.
specifically at Gabrodor. Then I need to lock all of these dwarves out of here. I still don't want them running through here. Got lost in productions and only parts survived. I yeah I don't know I I I haven't watched it in its entirety in a long time so, but the gist that I always understood of that movie is that it's not the sort of movie you get the first time you watch it if that makes any sense. Let's just forbid everything in both of these so that things just don't go in there. Same with up here. I forbid everything. Just don't even go up there. Don't even, there's no reason to go in that door. I guess cleaning's a reason to go in that door. Um, auto clean on activity orders, bid gather, only farmers harvest, workshop zone orders. Actually, you know what? Let's do, um, restricted traffic for these zones. I set these all to restricted. Maybe they won't go in there and clean. Probably still will. I can hope. So this is very unrelated to anything. Um, but does any did anybody watch that video um, that I posted in Discord about the the one dude leaving Linus Tech Tips? One of their editors quit um, to go do YouTube on his own time and get married. Because he gives Linus a bunch of rolls of toilet paper as a parting gift. Because apparently he was so broke before he got the job at Linus Tech Tips that um, he stole toilet paper from them for years. And that was an apology. <laughs> Which I think is kind of amazing. You watched a month or two ago? Gotcha. It's funny because that's something I used to do for my old job when I was broke as shit. <laughs> and when I bought a graphics card was when I was like, all right, I'm not broke. I'm not so broke that I have to keep doing this. <laughs> Except I never gave them toilet paper when I quit. I just kept stealing the toilet paper. Your, your childhood looks a lot like a stalker game. That's kind of scary. but also very believable. Neil, how's things, dude? How's the return to Twitch been? I'm making sure dwarves don't walk into this muddy hallway full of corpses. You wondered if the whole reason for a lot of retail TP shortage was the loss of access to corporate TP? That's a scary thought. And I don't know. Plant seeds. Why does planting seeds require you to walk through the death tunnel? My dude. Walk out. <laughs> I mean, you know what? Actually, you live your life. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. All right, door's been locked. Now we get to figure out why you're walking. Okay, I guess you just... Oh, I see. There's a seed up there. But that should be forbidden. Oh, did you literally discover it's forbidden when you got there? Cool. Um... Anybody up here in the top? Yeah, look like it. 
just need this one idiot to leave, and then we can lock the door behind him. Saigon so want his secret shortcut? Sure. Mayhap see um Saigon over here. Always acts with mercy and compassion at the forefront of his considerations. A strengthening after a new romance in 399. A new romance? Oh no, you're another problem. Married to the mayor. Mayor's husband. Also has one, two, three, four, five lovers. And Kick Roast was one of those, um, I, I'm lovers with everybody. Diamond, you're part of the goddamn problem. Fucking problems. God damn it. Fuck. Shit. Maybe I should just lock you into the body tunnel. This guy gets around. Yep. What a loving colony. Yep. This was, uh, it's like two versions before the version I'm playing on right now that they added in um, healthy open relationships, which are great. It's lovely. Everybody's super happy. Problem is, None of them make babies. God damn it. Just fucking real life problems leaking into my video games. Anyway. Hello, Hellion. What's up? It's not the most lovers I've seen one dwarf had, though. Okay. Perfect. That is sorted. You know, something that gets me that I think is very funny is the people who watched the uh, screenshot video that was put up about this fort. The number of people that thought that this in the middle of the screen was a volcano, I genuinely think is hilarious. How much is the most I've seen? Uh, 30 or 40 lovers. Not all of them in the fort, though. I had a human necromancer... Uh, that joined one of my other forts in a different world um, that had about 40 lovers. You'd be Polly if your partner would let you? Not going to comment on that. <laughs> Friend of mine um, said that one of her boyfriends um, wanted an open relationship, and then the relationship split about three months later because she, within a couple of weeks, had... Uh, multiple partners um <laughs> and uh he wasn't getting any so he got jealous and dumped her which i think is kind of amazing so then she's just left with all of these other partners and he's now single <laughs> maybe it was your upbringing uh, seeing the doors uh, accepting an open relationship seems weird i mean yeah it's your upbringing <laughs> as long as everybody's consenting adults, it's fine. It's only bad when it's religion mandated. It's literally the only time that um, not living in an open relationship is... or the, That's the only time that living in an, in an open relationship is bad. Be careful what you wish for. Yes! <laughs> Yes. Careful what you wish for. I'll say open relationships where uh, both partners are involved in the open relationship generally last longer than open relationships where only one person is dating multiple people and the other person is not. Yeah, there was this. Uh, I, I, I've. We, if you pay close attention, because the 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 names are non-sex dependent, but if you if you pay attention, uh, you'll notice it's like, oh, like that's the those two dwarves got married and they're both dudes. Lovely. That happens a lot too. Although one thing that I do think is kind of funny is that like Tarn implemented um, uh, non-cis relationships so that certain factions wouldn't outbreed other ones. <laughs> like, okay. It was a solution for a bug and also convenient in Dwarf work.
All right, well, this is gonna take forever to drain. This feels like the dwarves would be more old fashioned and not you disliking open relationships. All right, so I have a question. What's more old fashioned? What's more old fashioned? Catholicism saying that you can only uh, have sexual relationships with one other person? Or the Greeks? <laughs> Which old fashioned do you want to go for? Because by the statement of old fashioned, it's like, all right, old fashioned according to who? Old-fashioned according to which religion? <laughs> or is this uh, Christianity saying, we need children? Or is this the Greeks saying, yo, we have olive oil? Um, <laughs> because, like, at that point, it's just completely a matter of which hierarchy and structure you're talking about. It's a culture thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dwarves can of togas? This is also true. I don't know what I'm implying. I'm tired and semi-manic. Don't take me too seriously. <laughs> I'm implying exactly what you want me to be implying. Dramatic pause in case somebody wants to clip that. Uncommonly, uh, the <laughs> yes, no, it, it, the, these particular dwarves don't have togas. Don't they have to be like a super deserty faction to have togas? It's like a hot weather thing. I'm just gonna double check to make sure there's no dwarves stuck in there. There isn't. Yay! That's definitely not what I was implying. Don't worry, I'm too straight. I'm painfully straight. Also, Twitch isn't a dating website, so there's that. If you want to date me, find me on Tinder. Good luck. Or Bumble. I deleted my Hinge account because I got... There was too many crypto bots on that one. There's a tolerable amount of crypto bots on uh, the other two. I am painfully straight. By that I mean I am annoyed by people who aren't. <laughs> because life seems so much easier when you have more options. Oh, why don't you just go... Hmm. The notification won't go away. Nothing happened. That is bizarre. Wrong. I only work on visually impaired. Using somebody's disability as a pickup line sounds like a good way to get your face broken. But that's just me talking. <laughs> Who in the world told you that would be a good idea? What does a crypto bot do on a dating app? Hi, I'm so-and-so and so-and-so. I actually live down in Seattle, but you know, I, uh, something, something crypto startup, blah, 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 web three. And then me just responding with, I want to play Apex Legends because that's what you do to those things. But hey, like, you know, do you want to play some Apex Legends? Yeah, but like, what? And how about instead of hanging out? Like we just, uh, we, we, we talk for a little bit longer. Okay, do you want to play some Apex Legends? Well, hey, here's a here's a link to sign up for my uh, Web3 startup. Hey, do you want to play some Apex Legends? Hey, if you click this link, you can get, you know, that shit. No, it's uh, actual just a bot that wants you to click on crypto referral links. <laughs> That's what all it is. And also, uh, if you're curious about the I just want to play some Apex Legends meme, um, just go to Twitter and search for it. There's a bunch of, like, various... Uh, dating app bots that are just like, hey, do you want to see my tits? Responds with, I just want to play some Apex Legends. Insert tits photo. Responds with, but I just want to play some Apex Legends. That's lovely. But can we play some Apex Legends? Followed by, do you want to come over, honey? Sure. After we play some Apex Legends. Followed by, just send money to this link. Sure. After we play Apex Legends. <laughs> but I just want to play Apex Legends. 
Anyway. Um, yeah, once again, using somebody's disabilities as a method of hitting on them is uh, distressing. Although, if you want to send me Love is Blind by, uh... Was, it... Was that Third Eye Blind who wrote that song? Fuck. It's like mid-2000s pop punk. I'd be mildly impressed, because that's a deep cut, is my response, but... Literally just waiting for this lava to fucking drain out. Should have made a bigger drain for it, actually. You know what I you know I you know what I love unironically? That Calthorn? My blackout curtains. So one could say, I love my blinds. Guess we did use up all of our gold ore. That's annoying. How oh, well. Give you 114 seconds. All right, you have exactly 114 seconds. 14 seconds. All right, that's significantly less. Let's see how Frog is doing. Probably pretty bad. Was guilty after being confined. Oh, wait. <laughs> I forgot about this prison. There's a prison cell that I have that's literally just in the corner of the king's dining room. I forgot I put that there. I put it there as a joke. <laughs> Whoops. You got the um, good prison, I guess? Hmm. You seem unhappy. Well, okay, I just opened up the G-Force experience with the wrong hotkey combo. That startled me because I thought my monitor was breaking. I really, really, really hate it when people go on about, oh, it's okay, fucking Cybertronics will fix your problems. No, they won't. <laughs> I'm not gonna go over that rant again. Bum bum. What part of like I don't think this is funny and non-offensive? Do you not understand, Hellion? Pretty much, Verona. Yep. Yeah. Like, I, when you initially suggested it, my statement was using somebody's disability as a joke slash pickup line is neither attractive or pleasant. It's actually just kind of offensive, you know? It's... Please don't. <laughs> Especially through Twitch chat in a world where Twitch isn't a dating website. So sod off with that shit. <laughs> If you want to hit on random people on the internet, go on Reddit. Well, I mean, the joke was made, and the joke was acknowledged, and I said the joke wasn't particularly funny, and then it's continued on, so I'm asking you politely now to stop. I don't really appreciate fake pickup lines shoved at me at my expense. Especially as a bored, lonely, single dude. <laughs> That's just kind of mean. I mean, I'm not pissed. I'm just mildly annoyed. <laughs> it's like, it's, can you stop? It's more that. So, you're all good. Don't worry. 
I'm literally just waiting for lava to drain out, which is about as quick as watching paint dry. Uh, I need to make two more figurines and a bl This shit again? Fuck. I guess we go back into the arrow of Balas. Motherfucker. Just gonna make sure that I still have, um, Beach Workshop. Yep, still have three. I don't even know if I have anybody with Siege Workshop jobs assigned. For those of you who don't know, we had a king in this fortress a couple hundred years ago at this point, probably. <laughs> not Maybe not that long, but like over a hundred years ago, who would mandate like 15 ballista arrows a year. Anyway. <laughs> um, after several hundred, or s several tens of tens of tens of years, Maybe like 50 to 100 years. Uh, we had like thousands of ballista arrows by the end of it. Um, and now my mayor is mandating ballista arrows again. How old are you? 146. Cool. You don't have that much time left. Phew. We re-enter the glorious age of ballista arrows, I suppose. Do I have ballistas? Yeah. <laughs> Not practical ones. Ballistas are very impractical in Dwarf Fortress just because of the way they work. They're better at killing your own dwarves than actually like used as a defensive weapon. So. Dude wanted to make an invader kebab? Clearly, yeah. Invader kebab is a very good term. I'm going to use that one. Thank you. Didn't I never even thought about it, but. Invader, uh, or ballistas are more efficient and more effective than, uh, catapults. But. Just came to mind. It's, it's, it's a good line. I like it. But generally, you actually end up making just a, a bearded kebab with local dwarves. I'm sorry, what? Oh, I see, water spray coming back up. I was like, why the hell? Okay, looks like power is turning. I literally just need the lava to drain enough. Well, it's drained a few layers already. Another layer is about to drain off. Yeah, they are pretty good. For well, the thing about catapults is dwarves can't be hit. You can't friendly fire with catapults. You can friendly fire with ballistas. <laughs> um, so I personally uh, prefer to use catapults if I'm going to use them. Vlad the Impaler up here and making an invader kebab. Invader kebab is like my invader... Uh, Zim themed restaurant specialty, frankly. Vlad the Impaler is a very good Imperial Sour from a local brewery around here. But yeah, I, I could see using catapults as stone transportation just because catapults are uh, not friendly fire. If catapult's friendly fire, then eh. <sighs> but the fact that it's a kind of non-issue, it's like, yeah, yeah, I can see that. Also, I've been staring for three hours. I gotta go use the restroom. Always on time. I'm also gonna go turn the dehumidifier off because it's not too humid in here anymore. Back in a sec.
Yeah, I'm gonna fire a stone at Seashore's walls. That's catapult ammo. But yeah, if you want to know what happens um, if you use uh, ballistas poorly, just go watch. I think it was Monster Killer for Krug Smash, because there's a point in that where he fires a ballista and s sort of accidentally kills about I don't know, like six doors. <laughs> You have described MRI machines as magnetic doom wheels. Uh, not quite magnetic doom wheels, but definitely like the fastest way to remove all of your piercings involuntarily. <laughs> um, so, you know. You're decent at coming up with uh, graphic descriptions. Yep. I've never actually had to get an MRI. I, uh, I do listen to a noise artist who made music using an MRI machine once, which was pretty cool. I've never needed an MRI. I've had uh, plenty of um, ultrasounds of various parts of my body, but never had an MRI. Because they use it to search for cancer, which I don't have, thankfully. But they need to do ultrasounds and weird bits of your body to be like, do you have tumors? And I'm like, no, I don't. Damn it, doctor's checking me for cancer. All right, so we're down to here, which means I got one, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven more layers to go. How many have we done? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so, so we're about halfway there, living on a prayer. I mean, I, I can see that. So, so what you're saying is, a uh, an MRI machine is the dangerous version of, um, oh shit, the steam sails over. Uh, are the, are the less dangerous medical version of this game that is currently ninety percent off? Steel rats, this thing. This is a spinning death machine. It's basically like Sonic, but you're on a motorcycle that has a knife at the front and you drive over shit. That's what I think of when I think of spinning death machine is tiny little indie game that very few people played. You went to a hospital for an MRI right as I was leaving. I hear a loud bam. You turn around and you see a metal wheelchair smashing in the machine. That seems like a poorly managed hospital, sir. Like a very poorly managed hospital. Spinning with all of the cladding removed? Oh, there's probably more than one. In fact, I, I think it's probably only a matter of time before Look Mum No Computer buys one and disassembles it. Shoutouts to anybody here who watches Look Mum No Computer. <laughs> it's very disturbing. Eh, I'm more disturbed by my own body than the machines that we construct, so. Hey! I wondered.
Bah. Waiting for lava to drain is slow. I really need to make that drain at the bottom a little bit bigger. Because it is so small. <laughs> it is so small. I mean, the, the drain at the bottom of the lava tower is literally... Uh, this, right? Looks cool, but it's so small. I, I think I maybe after this we need to go down here and like expand it. Make it like three or four times bigger. Because this takes way too long to drain out. It's a little bit ridiculous how long it's taking to drain out, actually. Although for me, the most disturbing thing about being in hospital isn't any of the machines or things they poked me and prodded me with. The most disturbing part about being in the hospital was the fact that they left me just outside of Echoes for four and a half hours during a pandemic. That was the most disturbing thing about being in hospital for me. Was they lost me and thought that I left. And then when they finally found me, found me, it was me and like five other people. They just like left in a hallway on stretchers, like isolated, not able to leave the stretchers. Um, when they found us, found us, um, and pushed me back to where I was supposed to be, they were like, oh, we thought, we assumed you just left. <laughs> because apparently people do that. Why am I clearing up the lava tower? To redirect it into the um, piles of human bodies. That's why I'm draining it. Because I'm going to redirect it. But I don't really want to start draining it with the, when there's lava still in it. Because that's just going to kill people. Uh, on the topic of jokes that aren't funny. That's a joke that isn't funny, Piranha. The actual concern, though, was I really needed to pee and wasn't allowed to leave my stretcher. That was the disturbing thing. I had to sit there for like three hours needing to pee. In the basement of a hospital. Also, the humans have arrived to trade from the faction that's not at war with us. Good to have you guys back. Welcome back, lads. Huzzah for the humans. The realms of stone. I think it's fitting that the realms of stone are still at peace with us. I do think that that's really fitting. I just hope that the dwarves come trade with us this fall. Because it's been so long since we've heard rumors of what's going on in the local areas. It's... A bit distressing, actually. I need to know who's getting invaded. Because these guys don't send us a liaison or anything. Or, or a treasurer. They just show up and say hi. Your sieve is better than the sports sieve. This is true. Yep. Um... Not stream safe. Thank you for the warning. <laughs> Why would it not be stream safe if he did it on his stream? If it's not stream safe and it's something Hazad did on his stream, you should delete that clip so you don't get him a DMCA takedown. Unless it's just loud and you're being silly. But you do got to be careful with that stuff. I wouldn't want Hazza to get in trouble for anything stupid. Like, if somebody does something that uses music that isn't stream safe, do not clip it. Because that is the best way to get them, like, randomly banned in five years. Which is also why a lot of streams just straight up don't allow clipping anymore. Because they are legitimately concerned about that happening. 
It's like, oh, you play three seconds of music on your stream, somebody clips it, and then somebody else files a DMCA. Bang. You have a strike. Woo. Happy that. Welcome to the world we live in. Spoilers, it sucks. Also, I've finally recovered all of the subscribers I lost yesterday. Woo! It only took me a day. Cheers, Diamond. Just deleting that for completionist's sake. Hello, wait, what? How's things? This fruit fly hasn't died yet. Ah, oh, I flew away. Okay. How's things, wait, what? How's your day been? What's up? Humans are trading with us, which is so nice. Work is over, real life has begun, life is good. Hell yeah. I like that work isn't considered to be real life. We are currently draining out the lava tower a little bit so that I can redirect lava over to here. So that I can pour lava on all of these human corpses so that we can go in there into a nice clean spot and uh, fix these bridges and do all that without having to stare at corpses. Remove all the, the meltable steels and such. I'm all right. Brain's in kind of a weird place right now, um, but been okay. Nothing to actually heavily complain about. We thought the humans didn't like us. Uh, one of the humans like us. There's multiple factions of humans, though. It's not all of the humans. Just because you're, we're at war with one human faction doesn't mean every single human faction in Dwarf Fortress is like, you die now! That's not how that works. It's just, um, one specific human faction that we're at war with. It's like saying... Uh, Russia's invading Ukraine. Thus, humans are invading Ukraine. That would imply that all of the Earth is invading them, not just one country. So, one specific human civ is attacking us, not the entirety of the world in this... in this particular run of Dwarf Fortress. So... There are two different human civs that we're aware of. There's the Confederacy of Sport that we're at war with, and the Realms of Stone that still trade with us and still bring us tribute. Yeah, I've been attacked by dwarves. I've been attacked by my own civ before, while still trading with other dwarves, which is weird. I actually really like those kinds of situations where it's like dwarves go to war with dwarves. I always kind of wonder, it's like, what calamity caused this conflict to happen? When Eurus gets attacked by Eurus, that's when you know that you're truly in trouble. The Realms of Stone is fine currently. They haven't attacked us yet. Differing opinion on separate beard styles. The appropriate way to wear your beard is neatly combed. The appropriate way to wear, wear your beard is in double braids. Oh, no! Actually, it's more likely. Um, somebody went crazy over here and killed our diplomat, and then uh, diplomat disappeared, and then we sent another trading group, and then they, the one of the traders' wagons got toppled by a giant crow, which then... Uh, they, they lost a bunch of materials, and then a were-creature attacked another caravan on the way over, and then they were like, You attacked us! And the other guys were like, Um, what? And then they invade them. Much more likely. It's just like how World War 
one started where it was more just like a calamity of errors that made very little sense instead of like an actual like legitimate conflict starting. Well, that's usually how the like conflicts between people start is just miscommunication and the wrong person gets assassinated and suddenly everybody's shooting at each other. Yeah, th this guy discovered the secrets of life and death and now suddenly bodies are appearing everywhere. Hmm, weird. Yes, the Council of Men. Petty squabbles and miscommunication. Thumbs up. The sad part is, uh, at least on Earth, we're past the point of petty squabbles and miscommunication because everybody can communicate way too effectively now. So now when uh, famous rich people petty squabble and miscommunicate and try and start wars and the rest of us go, Hey, hold the fucking phone. What? Because <laughs> the rest of the world can see very clearly the heck's going on. Which is why everybody's anxiety is higher than normal. <sighs> Stress is funny. Yeah, I decided to do um, Long Death again today because I really want to get this lava cleaning system up and running. That was the main impetus as to playing Long Death again today instead of doing the Plank of Nations. Because I've up until recently, I've only been doing Long Death one day a week. Um, whereas the past two weeks, I've done it twice. Which means, you know, more, more Long Death. But I would also like to remind everybody, one week and three hours from today... Karn Adams will be joining me on stream to answer questions about Dwarf Fortress, but there's a wrinkle in time this round, and um, I'm crossing the streams, and uh, Tekid is going to join me. Um, so I need to probably meet with Tekid sometime over the weekend and uh, chit-chat with him and figure out exactly what we're going to do, but um, there will be maybe a bit of a different feel to this round. It won't just be me reading off questions. It'll be me and Tekid reading off questions. So... That's the thing that we're going to do. I'm going to hopefully get Tekken some YouTube subs off of it. We'll see how it goes. So I don't know what could possibly go wrong. Yeah, I got Tekken on board. He was also on my podcast once, so that's how I know it'll work. <laughs> he was on my podcast once. We recorded a, like, two-hour, two-hour, two and two hour and 10 minute long podcast and including like 40 minutes of us talking about Dwarf Fortress and then afterwards him and me sat in the voice call for another four hours and just talked about other various Dwarf Fortress and business related shit and it's just like yeah okay this will work we, 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 we can definitely make this work Wonder what kind of music Tarn enjoys? I know he plays guitar. I chat I I feel like Tarn is either one of three things. Tarn is either way into like classical music or very much into like current indie like psych rock. But I kind of doubt the second one. Questions on military matters will happen? I mean, have you seen the new military screen? The thing is, like, military... Well, I guess maybe old bugs. But, like, the new military screen, I think, is going to solve most people's concerns with it. Aside from, like, the old AI annoyances. But I think the the idea is that... My, my goal for those talks with Tarn is to turn them more from just, like, standard Q&As into sort of more close to what DF Talk used to be. 
Because DF Talk was like kind of a a really cool little podcast when it was happening monthly where they just talk about Dwarf Fort. And I really kind of want to move those more in that direction, if possible. So we'll see what we, we can do with them. I'll do my best. There's a lot of trading getting done. Four of seven. Getting there. Why aren't those the same thing? <laughs> I, I'm saying more of more of an interview and less of a Q&A, which is all that they've been up until this point. I still want to do the Q&A stuff. The Q&A stuff's fun, but... I don't I don't consider a Q&A an interview. That's a Q&A, which is all that they've been before, which is just I I source a bunch of questions from the audience and then ask them to turn. That's that's all that they've been previously. They've just been Q&As. I wouldn't really like I call them interviews, but they're not really interviews. Like on a technical standpoint, eh. An interview is where I go in with a bunch of topics and get them talking. Q&A is mm, less of an interview. But, you know, I, I will do my damnedest to make it something interesting. And if bringing on tech, it helps, we'll, we'll do that as well. Besides, I like it when creators for specific games work together and don't really like it when everybody's just constantly at each other's throats in contest, which is generally what this industry ends up being. I like the old days where everybody kind of helped each other. I'm trying to do that with other Dwarf Fortress creators that seem interested. For what it's worth, there was one time I invited Krug Smash on to chat with Tarn, and his response was, I think I would die of stage fright. And then never got back to me about it again, so. So basically what you're saying is you're not very familiar about Tarn aside from the interviews I've done in the past, or? I mean, I've met him once, but... I wouldn't say I know him particularly well. Just talked with him for about eight hours on streams over the years. My favorite thing about Tarn is that he plays Factorio style games. Like he played, um, he sunk a, like hundreds of hours into Factorio. He played, um, Satisfactory. He played, uh, Dyson Sphere program. That's one of my favorite random factoids about Tarn is that he likes factory games. Maybe like one or two of the videos of him explaining the dev updates. Fair enough. The <laughs> fort must grow. This is true. The code base must grow in the case of Dwarf Fort. Like, I kind of wish that Tarn was better at social media because he could probably do quite well if he did, like, occasional, like, programming streams or if he did um, modern social media type things, like uploaded YouTube videos and such. He could do quite well. He could completely, like, undermine my entire industry <laughs> of, like, news updates if he was quick on the editing trigger and post it to YouTube, but makes sense why he doesn't. He just seems nice and passionate. I mean, he's a very smart dude. He's very good at talking to people. And he likes his game a whole lot. Oh, so, makes sense.
while we're trying to give away as much crap as possible to these humans. The biggest problem that we've had is like in getting invaded by <laughs> by the other human faction has limited my ability to sell shit really quickly. We've kind of acquired enough items that the frame rate was starting to slow down. Non store bought? You mean like farm fresh? There's a farmer's market that happens on Thursdays and Saturdays here in the summer where I can buy farm fresh eggs and I can confirm, yes. If you have eggs that are like maybe a day or so old, far much better. Far, far, far better. <laughs> Straight from the butt. Um, I'm not going to talk about chicken anatomy, but um, <laughs> the, the Brian of uh, Caves of Cud once tweeted that he went into a grocery store for the first time since the pandemic started, which was like the first time in months, maybe maybe a year even. And he was like, holy shit, the price of eggs doubled. He's like, considering, because he has chickens, right? He's like, my chickens lay on average like uh, two dozen eggs every other day or so. He's like, I get about a dozen eggs a day for my chickens. He's like, and if they're selling farm fresh organic eggs for like six six to eight dollars in the grocery store, he's like, they're literally shitting money. I'm in the wrong industry. <laughs> Which I thought was quite funny. All right, so done trading. We got one, two, three, four, five more layers to go. So it drained out two in that time. In like half a season, it drained out two layers. I might not even be able to do it this year. Because I need this to drain out enough. <laughs> the yolk has so much color. Yep. Well, it's because they, they have to preserve them, right? <laughs> um, they feed the chickens things that make their eggs last longer. There's There's a lot of, like, weird science with the poultry industry that's best not to research unless you want to stop eating chicken and eggs really quickly. Um, but yeah, I basically don't eat eggs unless I can get them from a farmer's market. Unless, like, I'm desperate for protein, which is pretty rare. Normally, I'm pretty good about keeping enough protein in my diet. Eggs are kind of a... In case of emergency, break egg kind of thing. In case of massive health problem, break egg. Okay, you know what? This should all be forbidden. Why are you walking out here? Good thing that eggs break easily. Only in case of emergency, though. Generally, I get my protein from nuts and beans, so... And generally, I would say it works pretty well for me. You've been cutting back on all meat in your diet pretty drastically in the last year or so, red meat especially. Yeah, I still eat red meat. Like, this is this is the thing about me. It's like, when I tell people that I'm a, I generally eat vegan, they think that it's like I'm, I'm super strict or something. But, like, I, when did I last eat red meat? <sighs> right after my birthday, um, I bought myself a. Uh, sirloin steak. Really nice steak. Really nice cut of meat. It was like a $12 steak or something. This is the last time I had red meat. It was on my birthday. Which I'm think is a... I'm, I'm pretty sure that on one's birthday is a good time to eat a steak. Damn it. Um, my mom made pork ribs for my birthday as well. And I think that's the last time I had meat. <laughs> Quite a while ago, actually. When I went to Quebec, there was one time I had pork uh, in dumplings. 
It's too much meat. Oh, yeah. Well, the thing is, like, meat is not good for you <laughs> in a lot of cases. Especially, like, the way... That, like, we, we are so good at growing animals to produce as much meat as possible that a lot of the benefits are kind of lost in the shuffle. Um, like, you need protein, yeah, but you need a variety of protein. I like pork if it's cooked well. Um, and that that's plant-based protein. That's uh, meat. That's uh, grains. That's all. There, there's a lot of different sources that you can obtain protein from, and they're not necessarily all just steak. But the, the industrial food complex is kind of a terrifying thing, really. I will say I kind of go out of my way at this point in my life to not eat bacon. That's, I think, like, red meat and, like, bacon are the two things that I actively avoid. Um, at least in the stuff that I have at home. But when I go to restaurants, my... I open up my options quite a bit more like when I, if i'm in a restaurant um i'll eat almost anything except for maybe octopus at this point or like horse or dog obviously on bacon and ground meats yeah it's it's the mass produced industrial stuff that you kind of want to avoid Like for me, it's 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 fifty percent a health thing, but also significantly like just a it's bad for our planet, yo. <laughs> Unless it's bacon made at a butcher or something. Yeah, that that stuff's hard to find though. You're going to fall, you numbskull. Also, beware of my Twitch channel. It's now vegan propaganda. The nice thing about um, being vegan, though, is you gain superpowers. It lets you fly. True story. But the second you eat meat, you lose your superpowers. Kind of a shame. You know that Canadian bacon is just a weird cut of ham, right? Why do you keep insisting on standing on the tile that's about to drop? Oh, wait. Yeah, literally, if you stand there and he finishes build, Okay, fuck it. I'll come back here later. That's fine. It's just cured instead of smoked is the main difference between... Canadian bacon. Although it's not technically Canadian bacon. Calling it Canadian bacon is like calling French toast French toast. It's actually just eggy bread. The Irish got it correct. Because, you know, I, I, I spent most of my life referring to French toast as eggy bread. Not French toast. Because that's what my grandmother called it. Was eggy bread. Not French toast. Because the French toast didn't come up with French toast. The French didn't come up with French toast. <laughs> So calling Canadian bacon Canadian bacon is weird because it's actually just back bacon. Canadians don't call Canadian bacon Canadian bacon. We call it back bacon. That's a hard sentence to wrap my head around for some reason. Canadians don't call Canadian bacon Canadian bacon unless you're referring to the movie Canadian bacon, which is unrelated to Canadian bacon. So when you say Canadian bacon, I actually think about the movie Canadian bacon and not back, back bacon, which people call Canadian bacon for some reason. Anybody else's brain hurt yet? Because mine does now. <laughs> I feel like I just played a Zactronics game.
Yes, the movie Canadian Bacon that did not star Kevin Bacon. Honestly, that probably, say that, that probably would have improved the movie Canadian Bacon if it starred Kevin Bacon, because everything that has Kevin Bacon in it improves by a significant margin. Also, you know what, you know what's funny about Kevin Bacon? Is as a younger person, it took me a really long time to realize that he was unrelated to the Bacon Brothers, who are two very notorious criminals um, in the in the Greater Vancouver area. I, I because one of them is also named Kevin. Sounds like bacon trivia. I, you know, I've never done like pub trivia or anything, so. Yeah, no, the, the the bacon the the bacon brothers were drug runners and one of them is in prison for first degree murder. One of them is in prison for drug running, the other one is in prison for first degree murder. So it took me a really long time to realize that the movie Tremors and Kevin Bacon were not were not were not related to the Bacon brothers. Fucking bacon. <laughs> also completely unrelated to, um, you know, Justin Timberlake and uh, him and bringing sexy back, which is definitely about back bacon, right? But yeah, Canadian gangsters, they exist. We 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 do in fact have criminals, believe it or not. It's quite the Wikipedia article. Oh, are you on their wiki? You know, I I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah, Jonathan and Jared and Jamie Bacon. The the, the thing about the the Bacon, wow, that is a long Wikipedia article. What's funny is like I l live close to multiple places that they did co cocaine deals and like they cuz they're Fraser Valley, Vancouver area um <laughs> all that um also, they have collection connections to Kelowna, which is re uh, not lovingly referred to as British Columbia's Florida, um, to the point where the coronavirus was jokingly referred to as the Kelowna virus because everybody in Kelowna refused, like, Kelowna was the only place in British Columbia that refused all restrictions for, like, a year. Um, so we, 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 if, if whenever there was an outbreak, it was like, where's the outbreak? Oh, it's in Kelowna. Yep. That makes sense. <laughs> it's another outbreak in Kelowna. It was like every single day I'd wake up, I'd look at the news and I'd see a news about another outbreak in Kelowna. Every single day. I had to um, clean my glasses. <laughs> um, I don't know if I'd say wonderful, but <laughs> it was definitely uh, some funny jokes for a bit there. The Beaverton loved that joke. The Beaverton is basically, oh, here, here's a positive Canadian thing. Um, if you uh, like the onion, but want the Canadian version of that, go look up the Beaverton. The Beaverton loved referencing the coronavirus for a while there. Another outbreak of the coronavirus, um, which is the, the Beaverton is the Canadian onion through and through. And they loved making that joke. <laughs> uh, 
Kelowna is generally where wealthy people from Alberta move when they want to move somewhere that's got more logical climate. I say logical climate as like, you know, not stupidly hot in the summer and not stupidly cold in the winter. It's just kind of mild. But it's still pretty flat, like Alberta. So they, they move there to retire, which is why it's our Florida. But, you know. I'm waiting for the uh, Netflix series on the Bacon Brothers, though. The thing about the, the the thing about the Bacon Brothers is, because like that whole saga kind of only ended about a decade ago. I think we need to wait another ten years before. Um. Yeah, no. If you if you're buying wine in Kelowna, that's about right. Yeah, if you're buying wine in Kelowna, that's about right. They do make good wine. Lots of good wine comes from there. The one person I know who moved up there actually moved up there to work on a vineyard. <laughs> Oh, south, yeah, a Soyuz. Well, a Soyuz is where my family used to do most of our family vacations growing up. Warmest lake in Canada. Fact. Also, I stepped on a cactus the last time I was there, and the last time I was there, they had a huge arcade across from the campsite that we stayed at, which has since burnt down, which makes me sad to think about. They had Ikaruga. Patchwork, what up? Thanks for the 35th month. Welcome back. Good to have you around. Welcome to the stream where I have Dwarf Fortress in the background and natter about whatever the fuck's in my brain. How you been, man? The stream where I talk about the Kelowna virus. <laughs> and Kelowna and Canadian gangsters and back bacon, completely unrelated to Kevin Bacon. Imagine this fucking conversation started because we were talking about Canadian bacon. Which then led to Kevin Bacon. Which then led to the Bacon Brothers. <laughs> Canadian gangsters. Cocaine runners. You knew a native who grew up in Hope? Oh boy. Last I heard, they were living in Kelowna and working at a museum in Yale. I almost moved to Hope because Hope, BC is beautiful. That, like, I... Before pandemic, before I was diagnosed type 1 diabetic, I was actively looking at apartments in Hope. Um, because if you've never seen Hope BC, uh, you have probably if you've seen Rambo First Blood because that is the one thing that they really have as a claim to fame. They are the entrance to the worst highway in Canada and it's where Rambo was filmed. <laughs> Um, but it's this tiny little town in the middle of a fucking mountain range, and I've always wanted to live there for a bit. Because I, I love Hope. I've spent many summers in Hope just hiking and camping. It is a wonderful place to be. But they also have some pretty rad car shows. Like, I love Vancouver because of how close in proximity to mountains it is. Hope is like that times 50 with a quarter, like with a 50th of the people. It's like <laughs> just a wonderful little town, but also um yeah, literally if, if you type in hope bc rambo they have th like these fucking statues everywhere there's like eight of them around town which i think is kind of hilarious um they also have this um which exists you want to go pretend to be rambo um which somewhere in my dad's photo albums is a picture of me making the rambo face and that rambo hope bc <laughs> all that jazz Yeah, you can go find the gas station that he shot at a bunch in Rambo. And also, um, there's the... Hold on, let, let me look up the tunnels. Um, yeah, the, the tunnels. So all of those scenes where he's getting chased by the helicopter... Um, these old train tunnels go through Hope, like, go up kind of around the edge of Hope, and you can walk through them all, because they're just hiking trails. The tracks have been removed, like, a hundred years ago. Um, but all of the scenes where Rambo is being chased by the helicopter and, like, scaling the sides of mountains and shooting at shit are all along these tunnels. So if you just, like, go do this hike, which, it's not a log hike, it's, like, maybe six kilometers or something. It's mostly flat, because they're old train tunnels, right? Um, you can see literally every single scene from Rambo. 
just by walking along it. <laughs> um, although they are kind of nightmare fuel if you're scared of cramped places. But, you know, super cool. I'm not a huge fan of Rambo or anything. I just, I've been there, so I, I it's their one claim to fame. There we go. We've got like three more layers to do. Whoopee. Why am I making Mario sounds? Canada seems gorgeous in general. British Columbia is gorgeous uh, when it comes to mountains and stuff. But large parts of Canada are a lot like America, where it's just kind of flat with a lot of grain fields. Um, so I, I guess it depends on what your definition of gorgeous is. If you like mountains, British Columbia is beautiful. Um, Manitoba is just kind of a swamp. <laughs> it's like a cold, muggy, mosquito-infested swamp. Um, and then, like, Toronto is just kind of flat. Most of Ottawa is just kind of flat. Most of, like... Um, Saskatchewan's flat aside from like the random badlands which are kind of rad um, PEI is a tiny little island with a lot of potatoes um, and some sheep maybe like 15 people living there <laughs> um, the Yukon is just the Yukon is just like alpine nothing there there isn't like yeah there's mountains but they're not huge and it's just kind of the Yukon is a lot like Finland <laughs> or like northern like Scandinavia. It's it's like it's not particularly hilly. Like it's not flat, but it's also not mountainous. And it's like a lot of tiny ass trees and not much else. Old gold claims, basically. Most of the mountains are further west. Like most of the mountains are like in um Alaska, but the majority of the Yukon is like Although, what I consider to be mountains um, are a lot pointier than what's up in the Yukon. So, yes, it's mountainous, but it's like flat mountainous. If that, it's not super steep mountainous, if that makes sense. It's very a lot of rolling hills. But yeah, the Yukon's beautiful, but the thing about the Yukon is like, you also don't really go to the Yukon. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like you, you could go to maybe Yellowknife. Um, which currently is 23 degrees Celsius. Um, you could go to Yellowknife, which is, you know, like this, this is a city kind of in Yukon-esque area, getting close to the Yukon. It's pretty flat. Beautiful, but pretty flat, right? Um, so like this, this is what I mean by it's flat. Like, yeah, there's hills, but it's pretty flat. Oh, bumpy. In the U.S. and not Canada again? Uh, because we gave it to them, I think? <laughs> I, wasn't that actually, like, a Russian thing? Like, it was originally Russian territory and they sold it? I, I don't actually know. Look at beer history, not mine. It's kind of nice-ish. I stayed in Yellowknife for a weekend once, years ago. And it was pretty nice from my memory of it. It didn't rain. But it's been a long time. We're going to have to wait until spring. Before this is going to work. Yukon is where you stop on the way to get gas to go to Alaska. Yeah, it's like if you want to go, if you want to go see like Yukon-esque area, either go to Finland or go to Alaska. <laughs> Because, like, the thing about the Yukon is the Yukon is a big fucking patch of wilderness. And there are indigenous peoples that should live there. And nobody else should live there. Like, realistically, we should just leave that a patch of wilderness. That's my take on the <laughs> Yukon. Like, yeah, there's a few, like, hot spots where you can go as a tourist to go stay. But, like, we, we really shouldn't be going there. Also, uh, it is fall now and the humans have arrived. Miners? We don't need more gold, okay? <laughs> we shouldn't be up there. There's no reason to. 
Fun fact about the Yukon, we are still very few, so few people living there, it doesn't qualify to become an actual province. It's a territory. Yep. Yep. We shouldn't be destroying wilderness for absolutely no logical reason, and mining up a few more scraps of gold is not a logical reason. Those times have come and gone. We should get past that patchwork. So, no. Indigenous people should be up there. Nobody else. No reason. The only other people that should be up there are, like, assistants or people bringing food to people who do live up there, who have the right and reason to live up there. Maybe hikers. Like, if, 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 if you want to go on, like, a multi-day backpacking trip, it's pretty good for that, but... We need lithium now. Yep. <laughs> Look at that giant hole in Africa. We need uh, to stop buying personal vehicles. And that industry needs to die. But, you know, we also need our planet to explode so that we can just stop damaging it in slow motion. Um, you're all for mining, but do so responsibly? I'm really not. <laughs> we need to find ways around all of that, but... There's a reason why I'm not in politics. There are certain things that I am pro, but mining up more gold for no reason is not something I am. Space mining could be fun. The problem with space mining is it costs way too much to get up there and way too much to bring it back to the point where it's not worth it. Going up to space, mining something in space, and then building something in space is more logical. Well, there's two things up in the Yukon. Gold and oil. Uh, we don't have the pipes to bring the oil out, and there's no logical reason to mine gold. So, Why are you continuing a discussion that I don't really want to have? Besides, my point still stands. We shouldn't be up there. Anyway, uh, the Council of Men. Let me know when you want me to scroll stone. You suggested end miners, and I said we shouldn't be up there. And you're continuing this conversation. So do you want to continue this conversation, or do you want to end it and move on? But yeah, no, when it comes to mining shit in space, the problem with that is, like, it's too... It's not... A, there, we don't have a logical way of going up to space and bringing it back that's sustainable. We'd spend more going to space and coming back, which is why we just need to fire out a bunch of drones to an asteroid to go build a space station out there for us. Good. Patchwork. Like, there's many, 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 many scientific papers about how it's completely irrelevant to do that. Yeah, I'm gonna slaughter it literally immediately, but... Yeah, they did bring us an alpaca. Is this the same group that attacked me last stream? They wouldn't be giving me tributes if they were. There's two different human groups. One that was sending me two small tributes a year, and one that was send me, sending me one big tribute a year. These are two different factions. So they wouldn't be trading with me and would not be bringing me tributes if they attacked me last stream. That's not how the game works. I'm assuming you got it, Stone? What are we doing? Uh, I was letting Stone grab a screenshot of a thing. Because Stone keeps track of those. Stone has uh, screenshots and documents of every single tribute for the entirety of the history of the fortress as a kind of fun side hobby. Side hustle. The game kind of keeps track of it as well, but it's fun to have it in... Um, a more permanent format, I guess? Hobby of mine since 2020? Quite literally, yeah. 
pretty long-lasting hobby. Rock figurine one. Two more layers to go. Yeah, we're going to have to wait till next year. Oh, well. I'm pretty sure the water is going to stop. Since they're done. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, now that the save file is public for year 400, I'm kind of hoping that some crazy people will go make a wiki about long death. That's something I'm kind of hoping for. And something I'm hoping for very much so. You have by off osmosis become the most knowledgeable in tributes. This is true. You're probably more aware of them than I am. I'm convinced it's just like random items warped in out of thin air, but. I can tell you the average stacks of any item Rhubarb plants. I don't know. It's the first thing that came to mind. So I need this to get down to here, this level. Then I need to fortify that wall there. And then I... Well, actually, another thing I need to do is test this bridge. So let's test this bridge. Did the payout change? Nope. I haven't touched it. Always need rhubarb. Found strawberries on sale? Mm -hmm. Thunk. Perfect. That work. Gabbro and iron? Why, did you get a different amount for some reason? The highest you've ever seen is around 20. Oh. What is the rarest item that they've brought? Out of curiosity. Or what is the item that they've brought the least of? This doesn't seem right. Well, I mean, you won. Why are you complaining? Maybe the bot's skimming off the top. True story. I haven't touched them, though. That is a hard question to answer. Because hmm. that's the kind of stats I want to know. Is what is the thing that they've brought the least of a certain item? Generally, one-shot items tend to be very specific materials and crafts. Uh, true. Like a deer hoof or like a horse hoof necklace. Kind of type deal. Or like those like random like horn figurines and such. Um, let's make iron floodgate. Let's make two. Floodgate one. 
blood gate two so i don't forget those are four and then i'm gonna put one one here oh hey i have a gabra one sure we'll, we'll place that that'll do just fine this one there and then one up top No demands from Z King. Tribute materials do have trends? Really? Will they probably look at what material the Civ has access to? Well, I mean. If when you embark, you're only able, like if, if your faction has no access to iron, then you can only have a steel anvil as an example. Or if your 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 faction doesn't have access to iron, then you can't bring iron swords with your iron picks at the start. You can only bring copper. Um, and if the faction has access to no metals, then you just get the copper pick by default. And then if you remove it, you can't add in a new one as part of prepare carefully. You only get the one copper pick. which is kind of super interesting. Kind of super interesting in my opinion. So now I can direct the flow of lava as well. Which is going to be helpful. Also, this is completely unrelated to anything that we've been talking about today. But I saw a picture or a gif on Reddit yesterday of um, somebody feeding a seal. And it's looking all cute. And this person's feeding this seal a piece of fish. Like at a... At a... What would you call it? A... Um, uh... Like an aquarium. And the top rated comment made me laugh hysterically. So it's worth sharing because I, I feel like other people here need to laugh as well. The top rated comment on it was, be careful. Seals are actually really dangerous. I hear a group of them killed Bin Laden. <laughs> and reading that uh, made me fall out of my seat laughing. So, you know, seals are dangerous. <laughs> Remember that. A high school kid is teaching you about for the fourth dimension. Isn't it weird how the world works? Slow clap. Yep, I know. <laughs> As a, an example, the Realms of Stone have never given us sand, pear, wood items. The alchemy have access to sand, sand, pear, wood, sand, pear, wood, and have given us them. Yeah, that would make sense because they are in very different parts of the world. Get my glasses clean. It's frustrating. Oof. Sampai. Sam Panini. Your your name is fun to say. Well, you know if it makes her happy, right? Slow clap, I think, though, is the proper response. <laughs> Just... So wait, hold on. She asked you to fuck her like a Navy SEAL? To tell her to watch the pacifier. Well, to, to, I, I shouldn't tell you that most of my joy is, uh, like, uh, you know, not real, right? <laughs> it's very rare that I'm actually happy. Is this? Yes, that is not act actively dumping water in that. Two of seven. A.
Is that really a Lonely Island song? I haven't listened to or thought about the Lonely Island since... Since they had that brief spat where they wrote a bunch of songs with Justin Timberlake. That was about the last time I... Like, it was like Three Way and Mother Lover, I think, were the, was the two songs they did together. Those were like the last, like, Lonely Island songs I listened to actively. I keep forgetting that they made a movie. <laughs> Although my favorite Lonely Island song is the classic We Like Sports that nobody remembers because it was before they kind of blew up and went viral and all of their songs became super famous, aside from them, you know, just being, like, comedians. Is it a great movie or is it a great movie? I, I don't I don't know if I believe that that movie is great. We like sports and we don't care who knows. From shooting hoops to the Super Bowl is definitely still their best song. I wonder if any of their songs don't age well. I haven't listened to any of them in a while. Those two or three very good songs. Does it? Probably not great, but you'll laugh. Gotcha. And hello, Elkas. What's up? Playing Long Death again today. I'm still setting up uh, the, the lava cleaning system. It's almost ready to go, although we're going to be at the wrong time of year, and I'm going to run out of uh, water wheel pressure. So we're going to have to wait until spring for the thaw. But we'll be ready to go by the... Started next year, which is real good, considering we're in early autumn, and that means we basically just need to wait a season. Um, yeah. Should be good. Looking forward. And then we'll have to go in and replace a bunch of drawbridges, but that's fine. I'll just replace them with gabbro and iron. It'll be okay. But uh, lava's almost done draining down to the layer that it needs to be at, which means it's almost done out of this one. Which just means I need the little moving specks to disappear. There it goes. Now it's... Down to here, and now this layer is draining. You're orange now? Orange, we have someone who's stealing your identity. <clears throat> I don't need, I, I think orange is, like, not here currently. Pretty sure he's driving again. Because he broke his, or his key broke off in the ignition of his truck. <laughs> So now I can jump up here now that that's installed. Just gotta link that building to trigger and then we're literally good to go. I just need this to drain out. Uh, King is not making any new demands. So are you orange in prep in preparation for the lava? Wait, what? You know, I I, I was sitting here and because you, you said that it's probably not great, but it will make you laugh. I was sitting here, I was like, what was the last time a movie made me laugh? Because it's really rare that films actually make me laugh. I think the only movies I've actively like laughed out loud, as in like laughed 
for real at in recent memory where I was sober was the death to 2020 and death to 2021 end of the year wrap ups that Netflix has done two years in a row. Cause those are kind of great. Like I never see anybody talking about those, but those things are actually kind of amazing. The best part about them is the fact that they'll reference things that happened like a week before it came out. Like they are literally editing those down to the wire of release. I think like that and like maybe Dairy Girls. I laughed pretty hard at Dairy Girls. Dairy Girls was a good show. Recommend watching Dairy Girls. Very Irish, but very good show. Just about a bunch of alcoholic high schoolers basically in Ireland. Alright, so that's set up, that's set up. Literally just need that to drain. Now we sit here and twiddle thumbs and wait for that to drain. Is anybody else here just waiting for fire? Because to be honest, I'm just kind of sitting here waiting for fire. Also, chat, did you know that you can carve fortifications in constructed walls? Because I learned that today in Dwarf Fortress. <laughs> I had no idea. I thought that you had to construct fortifications. Like, the number of times I've deconstructed walls and reconstructed fortifications, it's like, man, how did I not know? What the fuck? <laughs> That's wild. It's like, I didn't know that. Can you engrave constructed walls too? No. <laughs> which is, or rather here, let me confirm. No, you can't. Which is why I always assumed you couldn't fortify them. You can fortify them, but you can't engrave them. Which is kind of incredible to me. That's so bizarre. Just like a lot of things in Dwarf Fortress. It's so weird. It's so bizarre. What the fuck? So there's a game coming out on Steam called Dragon Forge. Looks to be like a open world base building thing about being a dragon. I saw it for as I was as I opened up Steam to then disable it. I saw this and I thought it said Dragon Force and I was like, excuse me? I was very confused for a moment there. You build walls and then fortify them? Well, clearly I wasn't the only person who just who knew this already. At least one other person did. Could it be proof of what, Mr. King? Fortunately, King hasn't tantrum since King became king. King is utterly harrowed by the nightmare that is his tragic life, but doesn't actually seem that depressed outside of that. He's just utterly harrowed by the nightmare that is his tragic life and is frequently depressed. He never... Hold on, what? Okay, I, I've read that as he is never, he is frequently depressed. He never acts without prolonged determination, deliberation, even to his detriment. Raz, welcome back for another month of Tier 2. Cheers, my dude. Thanks for continuing to keep this channel alive. With your subscription support. Jack, can I get a big round of beers? Raz, keeping that sub alive. Big thanks, dude. Damn close. Also damn close to everything. Not quite, though. Maybe we'll actually have some time to do some pumping. Get some lava in there.
do you work today, Raz? Or are you just... Because, like, you're here kind of early. <laughs> I feel like you normally get here in, like, a couple of hours now. Also, with the release of Formula 1 2022, F122, I do wonder how many video games have more numbers than letters in their title. You can now enjoy your coffee in chat and in IRL. Crip coffee. No, it didn't. It didn't work there. Is it tier three, or is it not? I don't even know. I don't have an easy way of checking. I think it is tier three. Crip cheese is tier two. Crip seven is tier two. I really wish I had more customization over what tiers my emotes were available under, because I. I don't know, man. I have extra emotes for higher tiers just because I can, not because I think it's a cool thing. And I don't think it's a cool thing. Also, um, chat, in case you didn't know, did you know that AI Dungeon is coming out on Steam? In two weeks? Because I didn't. Yeah, really. Maybe that'll finally be the time that I stream AI Dungeon. That's weird to know that AI Dungeon is coming to Steam. How much is left in this? Yay! This layer is almost done, which means I can turn the thing on in a sec. Just going to wait for that lava to finish draining. I wonder if they're going to... They're not going to charge for AI Dungeon on Steam, are they? I wonder if that's part of the book Kickstarter thing. Just make sure you disable the stuff. Yeah, the, oh no, suddenly, like, everything is very sexually charged for no fucking reason stuff. Yeah. We'll be very careful to disable that. I've definitely messed around in AI Dungeon before. And the last time I messed around in AI Dungeon was before they had the not safe for, well, for, before they had the not safe for work filter. There was controversy? I don't have any feelings because I don't know about it. Three PM is your old eight AM for the old schedule, so yeah, you guess it's very early. Well good morning. Wait, old schedule? Which what schedule are you on right now? But yeah, I don't follow AI Dungeon particularly closely, so I've messed about with it once or twice, but never really paid attention to it outside of that. So yeah, I have no idea. Is it something I should have feelings about? Gold Rush? I was near to an instrument. This pleases me. I feel this, man. All right. Well, let's give it a moment and go down here and put a cork in it. For deeply unethical stuff, a past, uh, especially that I feel like stories where people were upset that they were monitoring, but also, well, yeah, that's not controversy. That's logical. <laughs> okay. So I, that's, that's my take on that. I 
I don't think that... I guess that that would mean they would have no problem with me beating up Sonic as Sherlock Holmes then, yeah? Because <laughs> that's what I did the last time I played um, AI Dungeon. But, yeah, I don't know. That, that to me makes perfect sense. As a reason to pay attention to what people are using it for. But if they're, like, you know, harvesting information and selling it, that would concern me. But if they're just, like, keeping an eye on people that are using it as a way to act out pedophilic habits, then, yeah, no, fucking <laughs> monitor the shit out of people. Please, in fact. but paid for full access that, you know, if you stop using a piece of software because they're monitoring it for pedophiles, because they're monitoring it for pedophiles, that makes me question you and your ethics as, and why you're using the software in the first place, not the software that's now monitoring people for pedophiles, but noted. I mean, it's sort of like Dwarf Fortress removing certain words because they were kind of problematic. Like, Dwarf Fortress used to have a word in it for nude. The word nude? Um, there were several other words that were removed from Dwarf, Dwarf Fortress because it was generating awkward... Th I mean, I would almost say that Dwarf Fortress still has words in it that generate awkward things. Like, the fact that elves love to name their faction pregnancy. It's like, squirting death pregnancy. It's like, excuse me? Um, but, like, at least they come out just kind of funny instead of a problem. You know what I mean? Whereas something like AI Dungeon has the capabilities to generate some extremely concerning things. Tasked with finding government criticizers? What, in AI Dungeon? <laughs> Sorry, what? What are we talking about at this exact moment? Squirting death pregnancy, a phrase now exists in your brain. That wasn't captions fucking up. That was just me talking. For reference, Max, that was literally just something I just said. That that wasn't closed captions fucking up. That that was a sentence that I just said. So that was in fact a accurately captioned thing that I just said. That's also going to be in a vote on YouTube. Once again, not the strangest thing I've said on this stream. But squirting pregnancies are a, um, <laughs> a elven sieve in the other world that I have running in, in Dwarf Fort. Actually, it might be a site government. Regardless, it's, a, it's an elven group. All I have to say, though, is, oh, Dwarf Fortress, never... Never change. Oh, you're, you're actually just playing AI Dungeon. Yeah. No, well, AI Dungeon is an AI generated. Um, AI Dungeon is an AI generated. Uh, how do I word this? It's an AI-generated text adventure, so naturally it would remind you of Zork, which is a written text adventure. 
instead of an AI generated text adventure. They're both still text adventures, but one of them's just run by a slightly smarter AI. <laughs> I say slightly because it's not that smart. <laughs> it's smart enough. You can like tie it in circles pretty quickly if you try, but where's the fun in that? Also, Zork is playable in my Discord server. So. Now, if we can just, like, meld AI Dungeon and Mid Journey. So you can just get, like, an AI animated film that would just take 50 hours to prep. That'd be kind of rad. Although, true, true story. I, I was reading that, that article about that Google engineer that said that they're one of their AIs and one of their instances of one of their AIs has become sentient and needs to be treated like an employee and not a piece of software. Um, and then released a whole bunch of screenshots of that stuff. Didn't it have like a six before? Like what, what was that? What, what, what was it at before, before we like told everybody to go leave Dwarf Fortress 10, 10 out of 10 on IMDb. I still need to make a video about that. <laughs> Saving it for a rainy day, I guess. Yeah, it has Zork 1, 2, 3, and 4, I think? But yeah, it's in the text adventures room on my Discord. Sometimes it takes a little bit of fiddling to get it working, but... Yeah, there, there is a bot that lets you play Zork. On Discord. Alright, so... I can now pull this lever. Hopefully there isn't any holes anywhere that's going to start spilling lava anywhere. Yeah, it's free. Um, what's the name of the bot? Give me a second. Uh, XYZZY is the name of the bot. This, this bot. Has 33 text adventures in it. It's a little fiddly to get it started, but... All right, lava pumping. Just gonna make sure that it's pumping everywhere, not spilling any lava anywhere in places it's not supposed to be. Yeah, that's fine. Actually, I shouldn't have done that in that order. Oh, actually, I see what's happening here. That lever needs to be pulled. Before I pull that lever, because that's just building up pressure right now, so it's going to shoot out. Um, I need to pull this lever. So do that now. We'll do that first. And then we're going to pour some lava into this thing. I require a granite block. Colossal Cave Adventure. Um, Reader Rabbit was one of the first games I ever played. Fucking wearing time is Carmen San Diego. Although I, I've I've done this bit before many times, but. I literally have the first game I've ever played, the original disc for it, in my drawer right there, in my sock drawer. Um, it's a copy of Demon Attack uh, for the Tandy. All right, now that that lever's been pulled, I can go up here and pull this lever. Let's see how far this lava shoots when that lever gets pulled. Like 90% certain that that's the right lever. Got us to the panicking buzzards. Speaking of good band names. There goes the lava. It's coming down. 
All right, so now that starts filling up pretty fucking quick. And now we pull this lever. The uh, fiery bit is happening now. Bridge fall down, and it begin. Now it begin. Which means we can start burninating all these human bodies. What, to play AI Dungeon? Yeah, that's why I'm wondering if they're going to charge for it on Steam. Definitely Carmen San Diego. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Was the first one I ever played. But, like I said, the bit that I've done a billion times. That's the first game I ever played. This is going to take a while, but right side, it'll clean everything. I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna pull this lever. Let's make sure that's not dumping anywhere. Moon bugs? I'm not, I'm not sure what moon bugs is. Is that another old video game? And this is where we're pulling it from. Down here. Oh, Moon Buggy. Okay. I feel like I've heard that name before. It sounds like a video game. Those aren't lava safe, are they? Nice, isn't lava safe? We should melt. Yep, they are. Sweet. This is also going to clean out all of that uh, god-awful unwanted mudstone. Which is pretty fantastic. Also, chat, if you're uh, if you're lurking, we have a bit of time before stuff starts to freeze over. Yep, we still have a bit of time. We're, on, we're in late autumn, where we will still have active... Um, uh, ...pressure to be able to keep pumping lava. So that means we might actually get some burning. Some effective and efficient floor cleaning of the dwarfy variety. But once it freezes, we're eventually going to lose water pressure, which is going to stop it from pumping. This is going to be slow, but... It'll be slow and effective. Actually, you know what? Let's let's close this floodgate for a little bit. Let's let it fill up. Are those plants in the death tunnel? Yep, they grow in mud. There's a lot of mud in the death tunnel. And the plants in the death tunnel will burn. Well, let's just... Uh... Check them there. You want figurines? Also, I think of Moon Buggy. Oh, Moon Patrol. Okay, yes. That I am familiar with. Moon Moon Patrol. Not to be confused with Paw Patrol, the kid's TV show. You hope someone writes about the Great Cleansing? I don't think dwarves are that, like, aware 
The Great Fire, maybe. Although I would actually say that the Great Cleansing was when I rerouted this into the Cavern Layers to cleanse the Cavern Layers, which I did basically the exact same thing as this, but dumping it into the Cavern Layers. That was a fun bit of time. Commander Keen? I played Commander Keen. I also, I also played Lemmings, but I played them like maybe a decade after they were new. Although Commander Keen may be longer than that. I played Commander Keen, I don't know, 2003, 2004, maybe? Multiple years after I played Demon Attack. I played Demon Attack in 1997. And I remember that year very vividly because it was the year my dad got a computer. He had it for about two years and then he got rid of it when we moved. Or that, or he put it in a room where I didn't see it anymore. One of the two. Hard to tell with parents when you're that young. I never played. I've The only Duke Nukem I've ever played is Duke 3D. I've never played the 2D Duke Nukems. This is 6 of 7 and 7 of 7. I'm going to let this fill up on this side a little bit. I'm going to let that stop moving, and then when that stops moving, I'm going to pull that lever. Fire some lava through here. It's not going to really fire, but it'll at least flow consistently instead of slowly. It'll flow faster, as they say. There you go, that, that's enough. Pull the lever, Dorf! Not the wrong lever. Pull the right lever. Perfect. Look at that. Someone is copyright claiming side-scrolling Duke Nukem games from the early 90s? Ooh. Why? That seems like a waste of everybody's time. Also pull the other floodgate. And there it goes. The more um, breaks and directions that they go, the stranger the flow is going to get. But this is about to catch fire. Halt, because you're catching fire. Really? I thought it would catch fire. Okay, guess not, guess not fire until it touches the bodies. There it goes. Now thing on fire. That's what I wanted to see. Thing on fire. Smoking. Fortunately, this doesn't actually hurt frame rate unless... Oh, there it goes. Now some of it's on fire. It only hurts frame rate if um, it's blocking pathing, but it's not blocking pathing, so it's fine. We could also use this as part of a defense mechanism, but there's no real reason to. What a way of dealing with dirt. You had a therapist tell you about exploding head syndrome, type of sleep disorder where you hear a loud noise or explosive crashing sound in your head. The sound isn't real, isn't real or heard by anyone else. The episode typically happens suddenly when you're beginning to fall asleep or waking up during the night. Yep. Did they say what causes it? But yeah, that is absolutely something that I have. Exploding head syndrome makes it sound a lot worse than it is. <laughs> I'll say that. Then I'm going to have to rebuild half of these bridges. Most likely.
Kind of sad that no lava's fallen down here yet. Lock the doors in the tavern for a little bit. Sleep deprivation and high levels of stress and anxiety. Interesting. But yeah, that's something that I get pretty frequently. Usually when I'm manic, but it's not always connected. It's kind of like, you know, you're trying to sleep and then suddenly what sounds like a gunshot goes off. It's kind of what it's like. The only way to really explain it. Suddenly just the loudest bang you've ever heard and then it just, then you're awake and you're like, wow, heart rate's going a thousand miles an hour. So thanks, I are stupid. I don't know why, but I, I don't think I would ever remember exploding head syndrome. <laughs> the other nice thing about pouring lava on floor is it also clears mud off the ground. So wherever there's like mud from old things, like water, um, it'll be cleaned up by this. But having to go through and rebuild everything in here is going to be kind of a pain. But at the very least, we won't have to deal with all of these bodies, which will be nice. Lava flow sure is slow. Yep. Just like real life. It also doesn't build up any pressure like water does, so it doesn't go boosh. It's a very slow, deliberate death instead of a fast, deliberate death. How many in-game days has it been? Well, a day passes every two seconds, so fuck if I know. Um, but about half a season, maybe? Quarter of a season? Maybe a month? It hasn't been that long since I turned the thing on. It was like mid-fall when I turned the thing on. We're now in late fall, so... Maybe a month? A month or two? But yes, lava flow is in fact slow. You'd starve before the lava reaches you? Eh, depends. There are ways of making lava flow faster, but all my ways of making lava flow faster are currently being um, wrecked by the fact that there's water right above it. I didn't really think about it when I was building it. I was kind of in a hurry. How many days does it take for a dwarf to cross the fortress? Uh, I don't know, maybe a week. I can't tell if that's a joke, like how how many how long did it take the chicken to cross the road or something, or not. <laughs> so, but yeah, a couple days, I think. Take two, who else? Take two owns 2K Games, which owns the publishing rights to Duke Nukem. Really? Even though they do not have anything to do with the original side scrollers. Wait, why are they content striking? Although, I mean, to be fair, Take Two sued a tattoo parlor in New York called Rockstar Tattoo for being called Rockstar Tattoo. Um so. Oh, yeah, I guess Take-Two take, take two really isn't above anything. <laughs> huh. They're a garbage company? No, they're a video game company. They just happen to have garbage policies. 
a garbage company would be like waste management that, um, you know, has garbage trucks and removes garbage. They actually provide benefit to society, unlike Take Two. All I'm saying is don't be so mean to garbage companies, okay? Garbage companies are good people. We need them. Otherwise, you end up with really gross cities. What's the main goal? Um, so I drowned a lot of humans with water in here, and now I'm burning the bodies and all the unwanted clothing things, so I don't need to, um, uh, what's the word? So that I don't need to uh, worry about uh, the dwarves being exposed to all the corpses and like giving them unnecessary amounts of PTSD. I only want to give my dwarves necessary amounts of PTSD. So. Garbage disposal. The water is for drowning the humans. The lava is for burning the bodies. Although I might just turn it into... Um, I, I might make it into more of a just... Bring out your dead. Burning the bodies. But we'll, we'll see. I might just make the whole... I might transfer the whole thing from water into lava. I just didn't have much time when I learned that I was getting uh, invaded. So I set it up to work real quick with whatever I had, and I had a surplus of water. So I was like, well, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll use water then. Also, it's now winter, meaning water pressure is gonna stop. Yeah, I mean, modern times. We're not going to kill somebody with a warhammer or a spear. Unless we really need to. While the game saves. As it do. Can I just say that fuck cars is a really good subreddit? This was the best thing that I found out about during Slash Our Place was the existence of this subreddit. This is a very good subreddit. I also didn't realize this was an issue. Apparently some people don't like bike lanes. What? I, yes. Well, I mean, some of the things that people post as far as anti-bikes and anti-walkable cities goes, yeah, it's pretty painful. Fuck cards is actually just kind of cathartic, though. Cath cathartic! Ha! Hardy heart. Been funny. Um, well, I guess we can just kind of let that do its thing for a bit. Hey, Cormacker. Those things. I'm um, burning human corpses. Normal dwarf things. Don't tell Twitch. They might ban me if they take that out of context. All right, so it's official. I don't actually need to block half of it because it's filling faster than it's draining, so that's fine. Very slowly burning human bodies, anyway. We're also being assaulted by owls currently, I think. Also, this doesn't really have anything to do with anything, but let me know when Manor Lords comes out, because I want that. <laughs> Founder of Take-Two, who lied to shareholders, pled guilty to falsifying business records and was banned from holding any control management position in a publicly traded company. When did this happen? And can you please link an article? I'd like a sauce, please. Hmm. 
This is just going to take 10,000 years, but it'll eventually fill up and all the bodies will burn. As one as the as well as the one dwarfy body, which I feel kind of bad about, but At some point this is just all going to ignite. Still trying to find your brand in a way. I know that feeling. Yeah. Took me years. For when it's ready to go. Yay! I've been following that game on Twitter for like a year plus. <laughs> it's like, hmm, every single time they put out a video, it's like, ooh, this looks really good. For those of you who don't know, Cormacker does uh, stuff on Twitch, but also does community things for Hooded Horse. We're publishing Manor Lords. I'm just sitting here going, Tarn, can you please speed up the physics of lava? This shit's too fucking slow. <laughs> Lava's too slow. Although it's parsing my own pumping. I did a problem. Your internet cut out and you missed it all? Nah, that's fine. Which part did you miss? I mean, you, 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 you typed in the part that was relevant. Sauce was Wikipedia. Archive.org Wikipedia. Jeez. This is a website within a website. I love it. Oh, this was 2007. Boy. I mean, if I had to run take two, I think I too would die of a heart attack. Fascinating. Reading for later. Educational purposes. Thank you. It's just like I love it when people try and defend Rockstar. They're like, oh yeah, Rockstar is, it's fine. Take Two is just their publisher. It's like, no, dude, they merged. <laughs> That's not how that works. Those two are one and the same. It's like saying that Activision shouldn't be confused with Blizzard because they're different companies, though. Ah. Morons. Cut when I started reading, but I'll get. Ah, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, I didn't really say too much else. I mostly just kind of gave you a verbal shout out. Can we get some things burning? I want to see things burn. I want to make figurines for the king. Figurine. But what do you mean by you're still trying to figure out your um your your own brand in a way? To be fair, my my brand was found for me by accident. The whole skulls thing. It was literally a meme that chat made and I ran with it. And whenever channels have super manufactured themes and brands, I always find it just, it never quite, never quite tricks my brain into believing that it's real, if that makes any sense. It always just kind of feels manufactured. Dwarves are all socializing. No crimes have been committed. This is good. Bamboo's under stress, which is fine. One dwarf up there is having an absolute nonsensical panic attack, and that's also fine. People were complaining about the original GTA game with all the violence, and the founder was like, ooh, let's merge with them and make money with the, from the controversy. Oh, really? Hmm. Else the brand is formed by the community, if I'm honest. In my experience, it's like, how, you pre how one presents themselves on stream is just something that kind of grows organically. It's like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just a very non-professional streamer. It's like, I've been I've been doing this for almost a decade, and it's like, my presentation was originally just a bookshelf behind me because that's the room I had. And then I had all of this, like, sound foam shit. And eventually it just became like, what if I just, like, put foam behind me and kind of stole excessive profanity shtick, except minus the monochrome camera. And uh, I ran with it. Now I sit in the void. And it kind of works, I think. It suits my general uh, demeanor and personality. 
the void. Who here remembers the pre-Black Wall? Anybody here, like, remember this dream back when I had a bookshelf? People were like, I'm going to miss the bookshelf. Nobody complains about the bookshelf being gone anymore. Nobody. Nobody at all complains about the bookshelf being gone. I will say, and this is just kind of a word of advice. You have pets. Not a great idea to fully theme your channel around those pets. Pets don't live forever. <laughs> and it's really sad when I see channels where it's just like, yeah, my cat died. And like all of their channels theming is their cat. Just kind of sucks. <laughs> Like, I know a couple channels that have had to rebrand in the past few years because it's like, yeah, their pet passed away. It's really sad. <laughs> what, people that theme their channels after their cat? Or dog or whatever? Or the, like, void thing. That's another thing that I never fully understand about streaming. It's like, I've been streaming for years, and I can't quite tell when I'm being funny or entertaining. And then Chad's just like, dude, I'm dying. I'm on the floor laughing. And I'm just sitting here like, what? <laughs> I'm talking at my monitor. Excuse me? And drinking coffee. Well... Usually one of two things happens. Either they redo everything or they just kind of leave it as like a memorial. One is just kind of dep a depressing reminder of your pet that died for the rest of your career. And then the other one is just kind of sad <laughs> because like then you have to like come up with a new theme for your stream. Reminds me of Evil Trick, but it was his girlfriend's cat. Did Evil Trick have emotes that he had to remove because of a girlfriend? I mean, like, I had an emote on Better Twitch TV, which was like a cartoony version of my ex, which was fine because she moved out and I just deleted the emote. But I had, like, one emote. I didn't actually know that about Evil Trick. Although, I know, like, almost nothing about Evil Trick, which is strange, because I was in a team with him for years. Fabs, what the fuck is up, my dude? Hey, blind. I'm back. Finally got my BS say in teaching. When was the last time you were here? It has to have been like at least a year ago. Yeah, no kidding, almost a year ago. 9921. The last time you spoke in my chat. Sup, dude? How's things? 9921. It's like almost a year. It's like nine months? Ten months? Something like that? Sup? Missed ya. We're burning human bodies. Still in long death. Not much has changed. Did he? Huh. Man, I never knew that about Evil Trick. Like, I was in a team with him for years, and I know almost nothing about the guy. Which is... I don't know. Like, I feel like I know every single one of the people in my team really well. E Evil Trick? No, not so much. He's not somebody who talks about himself very often. At least in, like, a work situation. Survived COVID and got your bachelor? Fuck yeah! Good to know. Good shit, dude. I would say most of us have survived COVID. Not everybody's had COVID, but most of us have survived it. Although, as I love to tell people, I don't think I had COVID. <laughs> teams? What are teams? A Halcyon Frequency is a team. Speaking of Halcyon Frequency, you should also go follow Bellinaire, another member of Halcyon Frequency. What's up, Bell? I don't want to shut up Bella Derp. There you go. I think he's been playing some Oxygen Not Included. Um, so Oxygen may or may not be included, in fact. Hey, Shinobi, what's up? Bella Derp is accurate? Bella, I have a question. Why are you playing Oxygen Not Included? <laughs> 
been so long. What, what, what suddenly like happened that you're like, man, time to time to play O and I. Oh, you actually found Ock? Well, that's good. I'm slowly burning a bunch of stupid human corpses that were dumb enough to attack me. Um, problem is, I didn't do this in a very logical fashion, so it's taking forever. And my pumps are about to stop working because I need water power, and my water is now frozen because it's winter. I think it's all frozen. Yes, it is now frozen. So I, I no longer have anything powering my pumps. So it's only going to get slower from here on out. <sighs> We've been waiting to play the end game and all that. Oh, I get you. Okay, fair enough. Worked as a nurse with it and survived that fucking bug. <laughs> and now you finally became a nurse teacher. Good to know. Hell yeah. Yeah, no, I the, the only real thing that's changed between now and, like, a year and a bit ago is I only stream three days a week now because I take YouTube slightly more seriously. I don't want to quite, like, <laughs> give myself too much credit, but um, I stream three days a week now, but the three days a week that I stream, I stream about 11 to 14 hours. I do three really long streams a week and forget what day it is by the end of it. You telling me another Godfather actor died? Huh. Well. Godfather's a good movie. Go watch The Godfather. Also, thanks for the 10 pennies. They're stupid. But, you know, it's it's good to see you back on O&I. I don't know. It's, like, weirdly nostalgic for me. Also, um, I'm just gonna do this. Like this, it's like it's 2017 again. Does that mean I have to play Planet Coaster to like truly finish the fight trifecta? Because I'd rather not. This is a really good Twitter thread. That is my work email. It was originally a personal email, and then I made a new personal email, so it's no longer a personal email on anymore. <laughs> it was one of those like, that's my email. There you go, email me or something. Um, from ages ago, and then everybody got more professional, so I made a. A new personal email that's more locked down, but yeah, that's my work email. Yeah, you can you can send me whatever work related stuff. That's where all the raid shadow legends sponsorships end up, so that's generally what I check. your home address <laughs> but yeah no that that's that's where i receive keys for video games generally or if you want to harass the whole stream team at once halcyon frequency also has an email which is very funny because people seem to think it's like our personal emails from time to time and then we'll just get like emails sent to the entire team addressed to jess or addressed to me and it's like, okay, well, it's very clear that you're the copy pasta, didn't read the fine print, and aren't very good at your job, PR person. 
It's actually a really good way of like weeding out people <laughs> pretty fast. Stuff's burning again. At least that's working as intended. But please don't send me more raid Shadow Legends sponsorships off sponsorship offers because I'll just have to turn them down too. Hey, that merchant finally died. This merchant has been dying of dehydration for the past week. It was slowly going nuts. We have a coffin form? Yes. You were just typing that one? I mean, I know that there's hot money to be had for Raid Shadow Legends, but I'm just not the right audience for it. Truly. I mean, you know, hold on a second. I just, I, I want to show you one of my favorite patch notes things ever. Um, which apparently I was one of the only people to notice it, which I think is kind of amazing. But, um... Here, yeah, it was the Jupiter Hell Patch 1.4.0 Chaos, where they blab a little bit about the thing. And then, but first, uh, a word from our sponsor, Raid Shat. Oh, wait, Hyper Strange. Yeah, they're publisher, Hyper Strange, right? <laughs> it's just like, but first, a word from our sponsor, Shit. Raid Shat. <laughs> Which I genuinely think is hilarious. But I was the only person to get the joke. Another little tidbit from the stream that I did with um, Epion right after that was posted um, was apparently Hyper Strange included um, art from uh, Jupiter Hell in Postal, Brain Damaged. I think he actually included a screenshot. No, he didn't. Not. Eh. Ah, there it is. Yeah. He, he, they, they included this screenshot because there's, like, Jupiter Hell art in there. But apparently they did that without permission. Um, so they were joking back and forth that they could theoretically sue their own publisher for doing that. <laughs> Which they're not going to. Also, Epion, the developer of Jupiter Hell, noticed this in a G-Man Lives YouTube video. <laughs> He's like, hold on a second. I recognize that shit, um, which is kind of amazing. Like imagine like your publisher doing something with art that you didn't give them permission to do. It's like he, I did that, but yeah. Looking forward to Hepion's next game. Hopefully it does well. Still curious to see, though, whether or not it ends up being a Hyper Strange published thing. Because they seem to be... Hyper Strange is a weird publisher. It's like, if you look at if you look at their games, it's like... Boomer shooters. And then rhythm games? <laughs> and then a strategy game for some reason? I just... I don't know. <laughs> They're a weird publisher. They kind of go all over the place. But I want to say shout outs to whoever's running the Hyper Strange Twitter account because it feel to me it feels like it, it feels like early days of Devolver kind of humor, which is good. There's not a lot of Twitter accounts that are that funny anymore. Except for EA Games, of course, that Twitter account is hilarious. Speaking of unhinged Twitter accounts, has anybody, like, looked at the Twitter account for Radio Shack in the last decade? I mentioned this a couple days ago on the stream, but I need to mention it again because of how fucking off the fucking charts that Twitter account is. You want to see, like, some unhinged corporate Twitter? Go look at the Radio Shack Twitter. It is wild over there. <laughs> absolutely wild. Like, it's completely insane, that Twitter account. Yeah. 
There, some stuff's burning. A slow cleansing effect. At least the lava's still pumping. Kind of amazed that this whole thing's still working. How much water is still down here? Damn. Plenty. Damn, this thing's working way better than I thought it would. Imagine socializing in a hospital. It's literally what those dwarves are doing right now. Right, I think I'm going to plug this bottom side again. Just let this top side up here fill up. I'm actually going to have to turn off the pump stack. Because this is filling faster than I than I need it to. <laughs> Let's change the topic. Well, I mean, the dwarves... I, I've made the, um, the hospital in this fortress into a socializing spot. Is there any genre I'm not into? Um, visual novels? Maybe. Although, but even then, there's, like, some exceptions. Um, not a big fan of, like, Call of Duty. Um, oh, don't ever make me play a detective game where I actually need to think. I've played a couple of those in the past few years. Like, non-violent detective stories where it's like, figure out the clues! And I'm just like, someone else do that. I'm not getting paid enough to do this shit. And I also don't like things that require other human beings. I have to communicate with other people. <laughs> Communicating with other people, bad. You're going to bed? Well, fortunately, I don't think I'll hit another fall, so you're probably good on paperwork. I'm gonna pull this lever again. Because this is filling faster than it's draining. Not really. What I don't like are... I'm trying to think of a game. What I don't like is... Like, you know, those point-and-click adventures where they're just like... Oh, I don't like Metroidvanias. I really hate Metroidvanias. Uh, but I, I don't like point-and-click adventures where they're just like, here's a bunch of clues. Now solve the mystery. I, I'm not a big fan of that. But if it's like, would I like Clanfolk? I already have Clanfolk. <laughs> um, fun fact, I grew... I went... I, a friend, my best friend went to the same high school as the, the founder of that team. <laughs> or my best friend growing up went to the same high school as the founder of that team. I've been aware of the uh, Space Pirates and Zombies studio for a while. I, the thing is, I like point and clicks. I just don't like... Basically like the games Frogwares makes. Which is mean to Frogwares, but... I'm not a big fan of the... You're Sherlock Holmes! Now go be Sherlock Holmes! I'm not a big fan of those games. Think like Sherlock Holmes. It's like, I'd rather not. How about I just... How about I don't? Seems way more fun to just not. Hmm. I might get another key for it. Oh. I didn't know that you guys were publishing Clan Folk. Last I checked in with them, they, they, they didn't have a publisher. It was just been Max Games. Yeah, no, I, I, I played Spaz before it was on Steam because Space Pirates and Zombies, a.k.a. Spaz, this game, um, was one of those games that couldn't get on Steam for forever because um, it, 
wasn't good enough for whatever reason and was for sale on its website from the old days of indie game dev. Um, and I, I remember, like, I think it was Total Biscuit even, making, like, a video about it being like, yeah, this should be up on Steam already. Um, Spaz was pretty cool, yeah, for its time. I never played the second one. I only ever played the first one. But I, I owned a DRM free off of their website. I was fighting. Report crime! Oh, no. Nobody dead. Stone's reporting a crime. Long death at war. Yeah, the humans invaded us. Also, hey, Lake Bear. What up? G'day. Well, Frog did it again. God damn it, Frog. So that's why there's lava over here, is because I'm trying to burn these human corpses. I ain't missing much. Then they went and made a golf game, which I also never played, so. <laughs> they, they made Golftopia. Which, from what I can tell is kind of like is this an, a make your own golf courses game i don't even know a strange golf game they made a golf game <laughs> but i never played it so yeah it is a make your own golf courses game kind of an attempt at sim golf i think does the burning work it burns the bodies the problem is lava moves like molasses so it just takes seventy-five thousand years uh, to actually get anywhere with it. Which is kind of annoying. But it does eventually work, yes. Might shoot some lava out because it's kind of fun. Maybe I could redirect this whole thing. Frog is getting some beatings. And see, this is stuff burning. This is lava burning bodies, slowly. A new one? Well, hair's up right now. Do you want it up or down? I'm not getting new hair. Need to figure out a way of doing this more efficiently. Guess I could, like, just pump it over here, maybe? Hmm. Maybe instead of the setup that I currently have, I can redirect it. But it instead goes over here. Here. have done that in the first place. There's an owl in my fortress. So anyway, I need I need you to respond. Up or down? What do you want? It's currently up. Do you want it to stay up or go down? Because that's how that command works. You had to read the thing, which you clearly didn't. So. Too bad, no refunds. Down? Okay. There you go. That simple. Blah. Fortunately, no, because I don't promote um, writings and works by uh, transphobic weirdos. So no one's going to Hogwarts. Bearded Bind. Blind is my name, not Bind. 
There's an L there. Thank you. Look at the clean bits. Really shouldn't have connected it to the side on the right. Well, actually, this is filling up slowly. Dejected after being caught in a snow snowstorm. You think they'd get used to it at some point. I'm also starting to wonder as to when those humans are going to attack me again. You're used to thinking that I had shorter hair? Nope. My hair goes pretty far. <laughs> I mean, here. the magic. Ugh. I have lots of hair. Like, lots of it. This is why I have that command now, so that I can remind people, yes, I have lots of hair. <laughs> I do, in fact, have a lot of hair. Um, I would be happy if nobody ever compared me to Danny Sexbang ever again for the rest of my life. That would be lovely. So my hair isn't really curly, it's just wavy. When it's really short, it gets kind of curly. Invisibility cloak? I mean, in the dark, it kind of works like that. Um, singer for a comedy band that I think is annoying as shit. Last step. Very unfunny comedy band. Kind of in the same way some people think that the Bloodhound Gang are funny. It's like, well, mm -hmm. no, this is just kind of gross. Maybe funny if you're a small child, but an adult, I don't find them particularly funny. Twenty K, should you? I don't know, should you? <laughs> you to you, Ming. The only person in charge of your destiny is you. Well, I don't think investments are up, are they? If they're not working. I mean, <laughs> just a little bit early on the shove, I guess. All right, so that's the best way to do this, since I'm going to build a more efficient method of cleaning this. Best way to do this would be to do something like this. How old is this fort? Uh, 405 years old.
How old is this for? Yes. Yeah, that's a that's a reasonable response, I would say. going to hurt the frames a little bit because channeling always does. Well, I mean, I have been playing this fortress for multiple years. So there is that. One thousand is the goal. Yet to be seen if we'll make it. That is the goal. Of course, I would like to make it, but... Regardless of if we do or not, I'll... I'm happy at this point, frankly. They're not cheats. They're assists. They're tools. They're plugins. They're not cheats. But I'm not modifying the game in any way. When do I. Th That's not a newbie question. <laughs> the hell? Newbie question would imply, like, that you're playing the game and you're actually asking a question about the game. But that's not a newbie question. That's a question that noobs and pros alike. That's just a question. A newbie question is like, how do I make a door? Or uh, how do stairs work? That's a newbie question. <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> Genuinely, it's just, I, I don't. But hello, Ed. How are you? Time is subjective, yeah. <laughs> it all depends on your proximity to time. What material is that? Is that diorite? It's... Okay. Okay, so I guess what we will do... I'm still going to use these same tunnels. I'm still use the whole same the same whole system. And I'm going to pull this lever so that it drains out a little bit more. It's going to drain out slowly, but hey. Actually, I don't need to wait for it to drain out. Yeah, it doesn't need to drain very far. Which is good, actually. We can just build this this way. Um, that just proves that you don't know what you're talking about, Diamond, but that's fine. I mean, the thing that I always... People always say that. It's like, I, I hope the Dwarf Fortress is out before I die and stuff like that. And to which I have to respond with, well, unless you're planning on dying of unfortunate circumstance in the next year or so, you're good. So I also, I'm not some sort of like all-seeing... Oracle, I, I don't know when the game's going to release. I don't have secrets that people seem to think I have. Ask Tarn yourself when he's on my stream next week. Like, I... I don't know. <laughs> Just send Tarn an email and ask him. I will get you a more likely response. Although, you'll probably just get your email ignored. <laughs> because it'll be out when it's finished. Just like everything's always been with Dwarf Fortress. We'll be done when it's done. Till then, don't worry about it. I 
I don't fully understand why everybody assumes that they're going to die before the game comes out. It's just a little strange to me. Because if you were that concerned about it, you would just play it right now. Because it is completely playable and free currently. And contrary to popular belief, it's not that difficult to learn. But I digress. All right, um, I cut out that and we're going to build another, we're going to make this into a little reservoir over here for lava. Our merchants punching people, god damn it. Frog, why do you have to be so slappy? You keep attacking people for kind of no reason. No logical reason anyway, aside from you're grumpy. I wouldn't say that that's necessarily a logical reason. But yeah, if you have any actual newbie questions about learning the game, feel free to ask, but I can't give you answers about when the game's going to be released. Anyway, chat, can somebody bring up something else so I don't sit here and just keep rambling about the same thing over and over and over again? Because that's what's going to happen. We need a different topic of discussion. Aside from people dying in the next six months before the game comes out. It's also uh, an opinion that I get asked for about two dozen times a day. And it's an opinion that I can only answer the exact same response. I don't know when it's finished. What's your favorite cheese? Ones that don't give me indige indigestion. Beating the kids at start. Uh, you know, I'm I'm glad that you had the car soccer bit at the bit at the end there, because that was a, a concerning fact about yourself for a moment there. <laughs> you chose YouTube Premium over Amazon Prime. You know, as, as somebody who has YouTube Premium and Amazon Prime currently, although I've unsubbed from Amazon Prime for next year, Amazon Prime's a better service. <laughs> YouTube Premium sucks, but, I mean, you live your life. Cheers, Fabs. It's good to see you, mate. YouTube Premium is a terrible service. Like, genuinely terrible. And the only reason it has so many subscribers is because uh, they're, the only thing that's worse than that service is the amount of ads that they shove at your face. So, I'm not a fan of YouTube Premium in the slightest. Really bad service. Has been for a while. Anyone have a pie hole? I had one and then it burnt out because I left it in the sun because I'm smart. Not a lot, nudist none in yourself? Yeah, piles are still a thing. Not a lot of reason to make one, but yes, they are definitely still a thing. Played the game not long, not a long time ago, and was annoyed. The the base ASCII tiles were not squares but rectangles. It also includes a square tile set. You literally need to change like three letters in an init file. Um, how is the base game right now? It's fine. Do I have any game dev experience on my own? Zero. Nil. None. Absolutely not. 
Do not want to. No interest. I, uh, I mean, talk to Aqua probably. Wait, what? Well, I mean, it's not really one of the devs. I will have Tarn, who's the dev, <laughs> right? Like, there's two people that work on Dwarf Fortress full-time and have been working on it full-time for, like, the last 15-odd years, and that's Zack and Tarn, right? So Tarn does all of the programming of Dwarf Fortress, and this will be, like, the eighth time he's been on my stream, so it's not exactly a huge event, but there's a lot of old VODs on my YouTube channel of that. So this. Hmm. It's a little annoying. You can just place a wall tile right there. Go around it. Uh, Zach does uh, bug test, like searching for bugs and. Um, he did all the does all the writing and a lot of the design work. All right, let's Granite go. I've got so much. I guess I need to make more granite blocks then. How does James Hoffman simultaneously look like a 50 year old and a 10 year old? Uh, the best part about James Hoffman is he's in his 30s, <laughs> he's in like his mid 30s. Um, the secret is gray hair. It's for the same reason that, like, I always blank on his name. Because I know him as the character that he plays. Patrick Stewart has just looked 70 for the last forever. Do I have a creator tag on Epic? No, because fuck Epic. That's fine. Bellinaire does. You can give Bellinaire money. Put in Bellinaire. I think FG has one too. Yeah, Patrick Stewart is 81 years old and he's been like 60 since he was 22. Uh, well, it's, I mean, it's longer than 15 years for Dwarf Fortress. For Dwarf Fortress, I think it's like 18 now, but it's getting close to 20. Getting close to 20. Well, the bald head makes him start to look younger. Yeah, I mean, if Patrick Stewart still had hair, he would he would look a lot older. I 
Yeah, no, J James Hoffman was won the Barista World Championships in his early, like his mid twenties and like the late two thousands. So, you know, he is way younger than he looks. I mean, another person who looks way older than he actually is is DJ Wheat. Yeah, DJ Wheat's 45, and he kind of has this, I'm an old man look now. <laughs> Shoutouts to Wheat. He's a good dude. Okay. Correction. He was in his late 30s the last time I looked up his age, like three years ago. <laughs> he was 38 when I looked up his age last. Deep is this lava. How deep is your lava? Kind of want people to walk around this, or dwarves to walk around that, rather. We're just going to fill this up with lava, which is going to take a long time. But once it's full, I can just open up the, the thing down here and just let it flow out. It'll go faster this way. I can also use the other side as well. Have like a two-pronged approach. Which means I need let another lever up here. I also need more... Iron mechanisms. We're going to make a drawbridge down here. I have no idea what that means. Wait, what? Did my Gabbro blocks go? I know I have lots of them. They're there. Pretty nice amount of them, in fact. Uh, if it gets too shallow, it goes stale, yeah. Or it evaporates and then gets cleaned up. It turns into, like, these kind of charcoal bits. These ashes and mud. It can sometimes, like, destroy floors and such. But um, I'm mostly just trying to use it to burn bodies, right? Like, these U's all need to go away before I can go into this hallway again. Although, if we get invaded right now, that would be very inconvenient. <laughs> so I'm kind of really hoping we don't get invaded right now. Um, there's no jinxing it, because that stuff doesn't actually matter. So, don't have to worry about jinxing it, it's fine. Um... I discovered two things today. You need two medical dwarf and what a deadly blood. Oh, I'm <laughs> oh yeah. No, deadly blood of forgotten beasts will like make. Well, actually, it depends on the effects because the effects are random. Um, so, I mean, it might just make them have a sneeze and a sniffle and it might make them uh, vomit blood. 
or make their skin rot off immediately. You know, it's fun. Okay. As somebody who was a um, homeless drug addict for a bit in his life, yeah, I don't need more of that in my life. I'm good. <laughs> I got away from that shit. I, I've got too much first-hand experience with that. Um... Where does this go? Where did my fucking granite go? Am I actually out of granite? This is weird. <laughs> this is like my first time in like the last 200 years that I've been out of granite blocks because I made so many of them for a bit there. Could add some bridges not to kill but for cleaning up? Nah, I'm good. No fun. The boring way to do it. Also, I can't really do that once there's bodies in there. I'd have to do that before there's bodies in there. The medical the root they eyes unless they extra. But what? But the medical dwarf was contained during the operation. The chain of death start the sieve in the fortress. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah, no, I've I've had some really. One of the weirdest effects I ever had in in the in a fortress was I had this forgotten beast that was a bird thing uh, that flew around above the fortress, spraying deadly dust down on people in the fortress. Um, but the deadly dust for that creature, the effect that it has had was literally everything starts bleeding. <laughs> it was like uncontrolled bleeding was the effect of it basically. So suddenly, like, the entire fortress, everybody's skin, like, simultaneously fell off and everybody started bleeding. It was pretty, um, dramatic. <laughs> it's a very quick death, fortunately. Yeah, Dwarf Fortress. It's a fun game for the whole family, yeah? Kids love it. Especially the part where they bleed to death. Fortunately, Dwarf Fortress is not getting raided by the ESRB. <laughs> Actually, I'd be really, I'd be really curious to know what rating it would get. I feel like probably just M. I might just get a T. You never know. Cartoon violence, blood pinata. That's just another way of saying human. Speaking of blood pinatas, how are you doing, animal? Nothing. Some pieces are better left forgotten. The, ain't that the truth? Oh yeah, once again, looking for my granite blocks. I know they're in here somewhere, but they keep moving. There's the non-granite blocks, just granite granite. You forgot ratings were a thing? There's a um, really interesting interview I watched a little while ago about... Um, how ESRB actually rates games. It's quite neat. Weekend has started? Hell yeah. Any plans for the weekend, Animal? You put Violence you potentially could come across? Or like described violence would be the one that kind of perplexes me. You're now into spring. Stuff is rated R for rad. I don't think that's what's R that I don't think that's what the R stands for, but you know. I'm not here to poop on your parade. But like Rimworld had to get rated recently because it has it has a console. It's getting a console port. Um and the the rating made it briefly get banned and taken off of sale in Australia. So, you know, that was a weird thing that happened for a minute. It didn't last for too, too long. It came back on sale pretty quick, but there was a very brief period of time there where RimWorld wasn't available for sale. Because it got taken off of sale for being 
Who fucking... You know. Silly. Speaking of games that I'm looking forward to, though. This is something I'm looking forward to. Looking forward to playing this. I I, I, I played Money Man Valley a bajillion years ago on my iPod Touch. <laughs> uh, but coming to PC in full screen. So excited for this. Uh, probably something to do with, uh, you know, eating of other people and, like, blatant murder and all of that jazz. I don't think it's got anything to do with guns. Guns are fine in video games. The problem is what you're doing with the guns. If you like perspective puzzles, yeah, very fun game. Looking forward to it. Although I think my favorite video game censorship in history is all of the various Wolfenstein games that were released in Germany where you don't shoot Nazis. Instead of shooting Nazis, you shoot robots. There's a lot of different versions of Wolfenstein. There's also, like, a version of Left 4 Dead that was released in Australia originally. I don't know if this is still the case, but at least initially, when Left 4 Dead 1 was released in Australia, it was exactly the same game but had no blood for some reason. So instead of, like, shooting zombies and they explode into, like, blood spraying everywhere like left for dead you shoot zombies and they just explode into pieces <laughs> and ragdoll away like weird inflatable dolls it was the strangest version of that game that i've ever seen there's a bunch of videos of it up on youtube if you want to find it but it was... seeing that game without any blood just looks weird because <laughs> like that game is supposed to be like a basically a water park of just blood splatter which is glorious but Where you play as robots instead of the dudes? What? Okay, I didn't know about that. That's strange. Yeah, no, there, there's lots of, like, strange examples of video game censorship over the years. It's like, I don't think Hotline Miami 2 was ever actually released in Australia, and the devs are from Australia. I seem to remember, like, reading a thing about them stating, Yeah, just, like, steal it. It's fine. <laughs> we want people to play our game. <laughs> It's the fact that your pawns can be naked. I don't think that's an issue, animal, but, um, yeah. Hotline Miami 1 was a great game. I wonder if I could even play Hotline Miami 1 anymore, because I remember that game making me, like, nauseous, the first Hotline Miami. And, like, my motion sickness in games and stuff like that, and my eyes have gotten a lot worse. I wonder if I could even play Hotline Miami. Like, I remember, I, I never finished it. I made it, like, two-thirds of the way through, and then, like, the later levels became a bit much, and so I stopped. But I enjoyed those early levels, and I had a lot of fun with it. But. Yeah, no, I, I'm very much looking forward to Monument Valley. On the topic of chill, uh, non-violent games. Very much looking forward to playing Monument Valley. Because I never played Monument Valley 2, and supposedly this is Monument Valley 1 and Monument Valley 2 in one game. Yeah, Panoramic Editions. It's 1 plus 2, and so it's both of them. So, yeah, no, this isn't just one. This is both of them. Which is cool. I didn't know that they'd released other games on Steam. Hmm. I'm learning things about that studio now. I didn't realize they'd released other PC games. So remember how I said earlier that it would be very inconvenient if the humans invaded me now? Well, this is very inconvenient. All right, well, time to drain some lava. Uh, everybody inside? Nope, okay. Everybody get inside. Because we under siege. Also, while we're at it, I got some things to seal. Specifically that, that, and that. <laughs> Celebrate good times, come on. Do, 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 do. 
You're off to dinner? You have a good dinner, Taylor. Might be time for me to get lunch soonish, actually. Alright, let's lock some doors. Thanks for the penny, Iyer, stupid. Okay, how many have they sent? Well, looks like it's the same faction. Dang, why are you running so quick? Let's see. I'm looking around for... Dwarves outside. Humans? Okay. We should be clear. I'm going to queue up the... Lock at the door lever. Got a lot of, you know, lava to drain. Well, maybe not drain, but got lava to make go away. The biggest problem with this... I have a bridge I need to rebuild, sort of. <laughs> oh, this is going to be kind of a pain, but should be okay. Even if I don't drain it. All right, so now we just need to wait for all of this lava to go away, which is going to take a little bit. They run quick because they don't have any gear? Yeah, that would check out. Doom Crossing Eternal Horizons. Is that a thing that you just typed in my chat? <laughs> right. Fortunately, um, I can turn off the part where we can only go to specific places in the fortress. So, now we just need to wait for all this lava to disappear. Let's unforbid all of those canceled suspended jobs, I guess. You got to pay the imp for your rent. I wh where did where did that even come from, animal? Can't wait for Doom Crossing Eternal Horizons. What where where did that come from? Why why are you just like throwing words together? Did you, did you open up like video game name generator or something? Which by the way, very accurate. <laughs> There's a bunch of different video game name generators online and they're all very amusing to me. Came out on the same day, and they made a number of crossover comics and music with the Doom guy hanging out in Animal Crossing while the Animal Crossing thingy slaying Doom monsters. Oh. Right. Well, I don't own a Nintendo console and don't pay attention to anything Nintendo just kind of as a general rule, so that makes a lot of sense as to why I missed that. Thank you for catching me up. What's up, Undercroft? Communities have really grouped together in, ador in an adorable yet odd way. You know, I'll be completely honest. I stopped paying attention to literally everything related to Animal Crossing around the time that I realized that political leaders were, like, running campaigns in Animal Crossing. I was like, all right, this shit's too weird. <laughs> and I just, like, stopped paying attention to any of it. Muted all of the trends on Twitter. <laughs> I was like, this is, this, is, this is too far. I'm done. I'm out. I'm good. Drag him in. Thanks for offering, though. I'm sure I could look them up, too. Yeah, I don't listen to video game fan music kind of at all. Unless it's, like, tribute albums. But I'm not a big fan of, like, weird crossover things like that. You kind of have to be a fan of both of the things to enjoy them, and I'm not a fan of either, really, at this point. I like original Doom, but... If I'm going to play a game that's like Doom, I'm just going to play Jupiter Hell. Yeah, man, I'm good.
Well, it's all good, Dragman. I've seen you lurking. I don't think I'm that inept. I'm also not in a good mood, which is why I'm just talking slightly quieter. <laughs> well, that's okay. Brain doesn't always behave, and brain has not been behaving, especially recently. Yeah, that doesn't sway my interest one way or another, though. Rupin. Cheers, animal. I will ignore it. But unlike they see me rolling, we not hating. You're allowed to lurk. That's fine. There's a taco stand near you that makes some good tacos. That's one thing that I'm always jealous of LA every time I go to LA is they just have like this abundant supply of good tacos that are super cheap. It's just not something that exists where I live. Describe tacos, but I'm hungry and I want lunch. <laughs> I don't need descriptions of tacos. I mean, you can describe tacos. That's fine. You same here. You just want someone to torture you. I mean, sometimes I want games to step on me. So you know what? I, I, can, I can feel that. I can get with that vibe. Instead of describing tacos, IR Stupid chooses to throw a subscription at Undercroft. Well, um, thank you for chucking a subscription at Undercroft. Enjoy the ad free viewing for the next 30 days. Cheers. Thanks much. Very nice of you. There's only one taco place in your area in the city that's next door, and they don't deliver to your place. It's in the city next door. Oh, in the city next door. I thought you meant, like, in the house next door. When you said in the city next door, I was like, next door? You can't have cities next door. Right, you live in a small city or in a small country with not a lot of land space. The game does have an in-game text slash voice chat and they did not say anything and just left. Is that the thing that put you in a bad mood? Seems kind of petty. I mean, that sucks, but. Such is life. Which lava's right there? Three? I don't know. I wouldn't let that sort of thing get you down. Such a small thing. All right, so I need to let a little bit more of this lava out. As so we go back down to the bottom. How's that lava draining coming? Eh, I could almost let them in, but I don't really want my dwarves to like try and kill the early ones and then fall into the water. So I think I'm going to hold off of that. Yeah, that seems pretty much fine. I 
We just need to wait for maybe another five minutes and we can let them in. Just kind of want this other side over here to be filling sooner rather than later. But yeah, I don't know. I don't like playing games with other people for many, many reasons. You have a good night, Trupin. Cheers, dude. Thank you much for hanging out, as per usual. See if we can get these humans deadified. Also, the reason why I need to make sure that all of this uh, lava is out of here is if I do this wrong, then I kill people or kill dwarves without intending to or wanting to, which isn't optimal, killing your own dwarves. Uh, let's call this lava hit cleaner. Uh, add new task, assign a bridge. Oh, it's not actually done yet. This will also need a lever, which I'm going to just put up here right next to it. They have no access to it currently. At least the lava is draining at a reasonable pace. I'd go get food. I was planning on getting food at 3 p.m. It's 3 p.m., right? So I'm sitting here hungry, but these damn humans invaded. I don't really want to leave the game running, but I also don't really want to leave the game paused for like five, 10 minutes. Hey, Merc, what up? I'm uh, under siege and also trying to set up an efficient method of cleaning out uh, bodies. So, you know. <laughs> That's how today's been. How you been, dude? Nice to have you around more frequently. There we go. That's what I was looking for. About leaving you on a duck break? I don't like cutting the VODs for long deaths, so I don't want to do that. Just gonna do my best to uh, kill this raid, and then once I've killed the raid, I'll go get lunch. Problem is, I'm sitting here and my tummy's grumbling, but I'll live fine. Kind of a slow day there? Well, that's good. My, I'm having kind of a slow brain day, and it's not pleasant. Got a stream. Are they killing my cows? Motherfucker. Come on, unicorns. Stab them to death. Sometimes they do. Usually they just kind of run away. How goes the drainage? Most of that's gone. Yeah, you know what? Let's let's just do this. Wish us luck, chat. Let's hope that we can do this successfully again. 
lot of jobs are going to get suspended right now. We may have to kill this initial squad right here. They appear to have all walked down here, which is an odd spot for them to be. But at the very least, they're close to the front door. That This squad right here we might have to kill. These guys. For a particular reason, you guys haven't pulled the levers yet? There goes one. This uh, this human wrestler seems incapable of actually getting at my unicorns. They keep jumping away. And he just keeps repeatedly screaming, help save me. I've improved my striking. Help save me. <laughs> Runs away. Jumps away. Help save me. You know, honestly, I think that this human wrestler is in more distress than my unicorns. The human wrestler attacks a stray cow, but she jumps away. The human wrestler punches a stray cow in the tail with her left hand, bruising the muscle. The human wrestler scratches the stray cow in the front hoof. The human wrestler punches the unicorn in the right front hoof with her left hand, but the attack glances away. The human screams, help, save me. <laughs> I was out in the rain. This makes me grouchy. Help, save me. <laughs> hmm. It's like my sub sound. Help, save me, pal. Um, all right, can we get this lever pulled, please? There we go. Classic human. Punches cow, screams in pain. <laughs> Complains cow hit them. Blames cow for their pain. Makes cow pay their insurance fees. Yeah, that sounds like a typical human. Uh, they're not guard cows. They're just livestock. I milk the cows. Um, and make cheese from them, and I slaughter the unicorns occasionally, but are we drowning enemies? About to! You here for the show? What's up, W Kitty? Humans, yep, still the humans. You're the human, man, 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 man. All right, well, all the doors are open. They should have a direct line in here. I don't think there's lava blocking the way. No, there, no, there's no lava blocking the way. Okay, so they do have a direct route into the fortress, so they should take it pretty quick. They may send a scout first, though. They do often do that. I love that that human wrestler is now actually starting to die. Or rather, not die, but lying on the ground due to exhaustion. I think I'm going to have to sacrifice all of these unicorns. Oh, I've got everything automated, more or less. Dwarves don't pump anything manually. That would be ridiculous. Okay, here comes the first humans. You know what I could really use right now, chat? A burger with a piece of pineapple on it. Something I haven't had in a very long time. Yeah, they're going to kill all those unicorns. That's fine. I got spares. The two pens are full. Madison, thank you very much for the brand new subscription. Good to have you around. 
Good to see you. Cheers. Yeah, can I get a round of beers? For the brand new subscriber. Burger with what? A uh, burger with a piece of pineapple on it. It's one of those don't knock it until you try it things. It's called a Hawaiian burger. Usually also has some sort of like teriyaki sauce on it. Or a barbecue sauce. Beef patty. I guess theoretically you could also use like a Beyond Meat patty or something. Even better with a fried egg on it. I just want like a good breakfast burger. I don't know. Nobody around, nowhere around here makes like a good like pineapple breakfast burger. Red Robins makes one, but it's not good. <laughs> I don't really like Red Robins very much. Man, that's sad. I mean, I did need to cull my um, unicorn population anyway, so it's fine that, like, I'm permitting them to kill my unicorns. It just kind of sucks, and the reason it kind of sucks is I wanted to slaughter them and have the meats, but meats will now all be wasted. Is what it is. Station my military up there. I'm sure you can, animal. And... Alright, I can put the cork back in the basement. Or I can cue the lever up anyway. Yeah, this fort truly shows off how big it is when I fly down to the bottom of it. <laughs> like the fact that there's all this stuff down here that nobody ever really sees ever. How many levels is it? What, this whole fortress? It spans about 160, I think. Why did they just turn around? Um. Hmm. Are they leaving? Are they regrouping? What are they doing? They appear to be regrouping. In some way. But they're all leaving. Maybe they're like, guys, there's a lot of lava in here and like dead people. Maybe we should just go. <laughs> Turns out these dwarves are maniacal. Absolutely diabolical. Yep. No humans down here. Are they all leaving currently? I'm slaughtering my unicorns. Is an average for the dwarves? I think the goblins are maniacal. But, you know. Dwarves seem a bit more respectable, I would say. But what do I know, truly? No, they just leave. They're just leaving them to rot. I mean, they're, I, they seem to be taking kind of these scorch and burn. Oh no, they are leaving. Huh? They killed all of my unicorns, and now they're leaving. Except for this one human. Or a few humans who appear to have gotten into my other ones, into my other unicorn paddock somehow. Are they going to leave or are they going to keep fighting with my unicorns?
Humans are just running. All right, well, because they all seem to be out of there. Pull that lever, and I'm going to pull that lever. I mean, Hard Rock Hallelujah is kind of an earworm, so I would see that as pretty easy. Get Hard Rock Hallelujah stuck in your head specifically. Okay, how many humans are left? Most of them are in my unicorn paddock, from what I can tell. Waiting for the door to open. There it is. Sending the military out. Or specifically, uh, Zindros and Disco. Who murders unicorns? Yeah, well, humans, apparently. Much for sugar and spice and everything nice. My majestic unicorn fields have been ravaged. And in response, we shall cut you into little pieces. Where, what humans are left? No, oh, they're all over there. Actually, you know what? Let's just station them right underneath these guys. Because they're technically still sieging us, but they have largely left. Why are you all the way back out there? Need them to kind of group up there just a little bit. Because there's still this little cluster of humans over there in the corner who I need to deal with. I'm just waiting for there to be at least five or six dwarves in one spot before we go about fighting. Otherwise, they're in, gonna just run in and die. I really need the good ones to be in there. Like, you know, someone with like 17 notable kills like that. Or somebody like Tiger with 14 notable kills or somebody like uh, Banana with zero. <laughs> Wait until there's like four. Ready, dwarves, go get them. Let's follow Red Octo Bear. Chat, can I get a round of beers for these dwarves about to charge the last few humans standing on the edge of my fortress? There's three dwarves versus like 11 of them, so. And this one is wielding a book, specifically. I mean, look at that. Got a Life with Probing. Which is, of course, says superior quality parchment choir. Written on the item is, in, uh, is a manual entitled Life with Pro Probing. Written by Cheers Jamie. Uh, it concerns the surgical method of probing. Uh, the writing is unorganized and it shows a hint of tenderness. It is passable. Charge! Oh no, don't start puking. That's bad. Ty goes up front. The humans shoot out arrows. Get into fights. Oh, that's one, two, three. Not bad so far. As long as they don't get hit by any arrows, they should be fine. Those last four should go down pretty quick, I would think. All right, we're going to need to turn off the Celebrate Zone. The last few dwarves. And the siege is now over. Um, and I can turn off this squad. You guys can 
definitely rescue the wounded. Please rescue Red Octo. Hopefully you're... Oh, his left upper leg is broken. Oh, his leg is broken. That's fine. We can absolutely take care of that. Please don't die on me. That would... I love how they don't rescue their fellow dwarf. They just run off. <laughs> like, you know, st standard dwarfy st like style of doing things. Literally nobody is rescued. Oh, there, there we go. Diamond Destruct coming to rescue the, the wounded. Shoutouts to Diamond for being the only dwarf with a soul in this fortress, it turns out. God damn it. Leave it to the management to do everything for everybody. Including rescue the soldier with the broken leg. <laughs> well, I mean, he's calling for the manager, okay? His leg got broken. He mad. <laughs> you got a soul? Well, you're the one rescuing our wounded dwarf. That's what I consider to be a soul. And you're recovering the wounded. Alrighty, chat. Um, I'm going to let you guys follow this point of view shot of our good, good friend. Uh-oh. We got two. Of course, Frog went and caused some problems. I'm going to follow uh, our good, good friend Diamond Destruct here, uh, who is rescuing a wounded soldier who has a broken leggy. Uh, I'm going to go eat a sandwich because I'm hangry. Uh, I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Um... Yeah, uh, when, when I come back, we'll play a good chunk more along that, at least an hour, I'd say, maybe a little longer. I mean, we're into mid-spring. I want to get the, all these all those bodies cleaned out of there. So um, I will be back in a little bit. Um, when I come back, we will continue the stream. Thank you very much, everybody, for hanging out today. It's been fun. Um, but uh, like I said, I will be back in a few minutes. I'm just going to go eat a sandwich. It's going to take me like five minutes tops. Um, so if anybody pops in and goes, where's streamer? Can you do me a huge favor and be like, streamer eating sandwich?
Why are we cursing our own Jesus? <sighs> Holy shit, Diamond. <laughs> well, <clears throat> congrats. I don't know what else to say, but uh, congrats. Getting more and more and more extreme. How many tickets are you at now? I'm too lazy to go look it up in my butt. You just won 35,000. You gotta be above like 50 now, yeah? I keep on fucking doing. The material in this shirt doesn't clean glasses. It just smears any kind of thing on your glasses all over your glasses instead of cleaning it because it's moisture wicking. It's uh, it's high tech fabric. So I try and clean my glasses and it just smears my glasses. And I have this habit of just grabbing my shirt and cleaning my glasses. Uh, we just dealt with an invasion, actually. I'm currently in the process of building a um, method of cleaning up bodies that is more efficient and less um, problems heavy. Have they finished that bridge yet? Yes, they have. Pit cleaner. So, currently working on this. But, you know, it's going all right. Aside from that. Port's going okay, I would say. But how's uh, Jack Nurick doing today on this fine afternoon? We are currently, like, a, popping keys off my keyboard, apparently. Trying to figure out ways of doing this in an efficient manner that also, like, you know, doesn't cause, like, the death of my dwarves' sanity via depression from piles of dead bodies. Because that's not very good for anyone's mental health, dwarves or otherwise, so. Trying to just sort this out as best I can, but there's only so much I can do at the end of the day. Where did all my granite go? Granite, 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 block, 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 granite, block. I just made a whole bunch more of you. I should definitely be seeing these. I can't wait until there's a search function in here. It's going to be so nice. The one thing I am truly looking forward to is just search func functions and everything for Dwarf Fort. Oh, there. Trying to transfer Steam authentication from one phone to a new phone? Yeah, I, I had to do that not too long ago. Been there. Not that bad. I've definitely dealt with worse authentication. I'm looking at you, various crypto wallets, uh, when it comes to having to transfer from one device to another. But um, outside of that, yeah, yeah very, there's various authentication thing uh, solutions that are annoying to put it nicely. I'm feeling this whole setup should probably be pretty efficient once. Once it's all done. Done and dusted and ready to go once we have all the dwarves out of here, etc. I think this whole system will be pretty good. Just build two. No, actually, let's use those two marble blocks for that spot right there. 
Well, regardless, I, I hope that that um, Steam Authenticator thing gets done quick. Is it a nice new phone at the very least? That's like worth it. But yeah, we're into late spring, which also means hopefully we didn't miss trading with the other faction, which would be really nice. I'd really like to trade with the rest of the humans. Well, Frog really hates being in prison. You should stop attacking people then. And then you wouldn't be in prison so much. Yeah, I, it's been a while since I've played this many rounds of Long Death in a week. Kind of nice, actually. Having some very different challenges to overcome for Long Death, but... It's also kind of anxiety-inducing because I'm very worried about, like, the future of Long Death because of this, but it's kind of nice at the same time. It's it's like a, a weird mixed-feeling thing, I would say, as to how I feel about Long Death getting attacked like this. I'm not going to... Yeah, that is going to cause problems. Where else I could put this? No, not really. Okay, let's get rid of that. That piece in the middle. And then replace it with another wall piece. But aside from dealing with Steam authentication, what you been up to, Jack Nerd? Anybody playing any fun games from the Steam sale? I've just been looking, slowly combing through that itch bundle. So I've just been combing through that to try and find games to try to play. Fortunately, the YouTube comments finally quieted off about that. They were kind of annoying yesterday, but today things are much quieter, for better or for worse. Kind of sucks having big dips and subs, but it is what it is. Fortunately, when it comes to people disagreeing with me shouting about my opinions, I just don't care at the end of the day. Grim Dawn kept you entertained for quite a bit. Grim Dawn, I've been told by a lot of people who like those types of games, is a very good one of those. I've never played it, but I've heard that it is a very good one of those. Well, it's good that those exist. I've just simply never had the pleasure of being able to enjoy those games. It was a fun conversation. You, you, you also got to remember, Merc, that my brain is broken. <laughs> so I sometimes take things in ways that shouldn't be. I'm making your way through Ace Combat 7, which is a good game, but you're bad at it. I feel like if I were to play an Ace Combat game in the current year, I would just set it to easy. Or whatever the lowest difficulty equivalent of that is. And just, like, button mash my way through it. Because I'm, I'm also terrible at those types of games. So I apologize for my brain doing a stupid merc. So I wouldn't want to argue with you. Um, where are we going with this? <laughs> not using blue. I'm not sure what color am I using. Could just use Gabbro. Only have so much. Of that. There's the granite. Takes a strange person to be able to properly read the emotion and intent behind text. Yeah, I feel like it's it's almost like an art form that we're having to learn as a society right now, to a degree, is how to properly discern 
and read emotions through text. It's like <laughs> reading emotion and intent via text is not a particularly easy feat, <laughs> to put it bluntly. If I get this bottom half, is this is this all hooked up? That that one's not hooked up yet. I don't care. So I can go down here and go down to you and go hook up the bridge. Once that's hooked up and we've got it flipped up, I can turn the pumps back on. I can get this bottom half sealed up and we can start pumping lava into here. Although this is hooked up, which means I gotta pull that lever. That's a very upset dwarf. Oh, interesting. I didn't even realize there was an alternate way for them to get up here. I guess that makes sense now that I see it, though. Interesting. I'm just looking forward to my weekend. Hope you don't mind the odd furry text emote. Why, why would I mind the odd furry text emote? The, the only time that, like, I get an annoyed by certain emoticons is when something seems to read as super serious, and then you put, like, a sarcastic XD at the end of it. Because it's not even that it annoys me, it's just, I'm confused at the intent of this message now. Is that supposed to be, like... So, are, are you trying to say something serious, or are you XDing at me? What, what's happening? Like, FG will do that to me sometimes, where I have no idea what she's trying to communicate. Because she'll just, like, say, like, a super serious sentence followed by XD, and it's like, I, what? <laughs> what that mean? Please explain. You mean, like, dark humor? I mean, dark humor is fine to a degree. The problem with dark humor is people just take it way too far. All the fucking time. So I tend to not like dark humor very, very much. Uh, D humor, yes. Disney XD. Oh, no, I hate you. You know, when I heard that they named Disney XD, Disney XD, I, like, that was, like, the beginning of the end for me in dealing with Disney. Now everybody's just like, oh yeah, Disney's great. And it's like, I, brrr, they named the thing XD. They need to go to prison. Uh oh, my mayor wants a male shirt, and uh, and figurines. Rock fig two, male shirt iron one. Whoops. You have to hop to beds. You have a good night, animal. Just don't jump on the bed. You'll break your springs. May you have the sweetest dreams, and may your days have the best fortunes yet. I mean, that seems pretty optimal, frankly. Um, see, I could construct a catapult to launch somebody towards their sweetest dreams and best days of fortunes. The problem is, is the landing might not be survivable. Um, the journey would be real fast, but the active landing might be a bit painful. But I could easily construct a catapult to launch somebody to their happiness and fortunes. It's like constructing... I'm just imagining somebody making a trebuchet to launch somebody at the Bank of America or something. Wealth! <laughs> Suddenly, there's people falling from the sky on Wall Street. 
Oh no! Cue it's raining men. Hallelujah. Pull that lever, Dorf. Cool. That means I can go all the way down to here and pull this lever. Now I don't even have that much more to seal. Gotta seal this. And I should seal it with kangaroo soap. <laughs> Just because it's funny. Let's use these two, why not? Uh, in this fortress? I've had the king for like 200 years now. Uh, the other fortress? No. If that's what you're asking about. But in this fortress, yeah, we, we have the king. Currently, the king is Radio Free Olive. Previously, it was King Massive. King Massive was a great king. Was with us for many years. Demanded we make many, 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 many. And then when you thought that we made enough, a couple more crutches. It's a lot of crutches. Whole lot of crutches. It was so many crutches, it was a bit ridiculous, actually. It's almost like the king was using us as a crutch. It was crutches and picks, was the other thing he made us make. Crutches and picks. We made a lot of crutches and picks. In terms of sites, it's, it's like a uh, mountain home. Four hill, two forts, two mountain, three forts, two mountain homes, or three forts, uh, one mountain home, five hillixes, and a dark pits. Unless I'm missing one, because they captured a goblin pit early on. Although, if you want to actually like dig into it for whatever it's worth, Jack Narek, um, bottom of that command is a link where you can uh, just download the save file from 400 years. You can retire long death and go take a look. Some fun stuff has come out of it already. I hear uh, a weed eater, which makes me nervous. Me and my neighbor have been trying to regrow a grass patch uh, behind my apartment. Um... And uh, the gardening company that they keep hiring is very bad at their job. And they have a tendency of shredding grass instead of cutting it. I'm very nervous that they're just, like, digging up my clover. Um, let me go take a peek at what he's doing in a second after I find this goddamn stuff. Granite. That's what I'm looking for. Granite blocks. Be back in a sec. They don't look like they're actively destroying things, so. Crutches and picks and hated leg day. <laughs> yeah, totally. Doesn't look like they're actively destroying things, but it's kind of hard to tell, so. Well, we'll, we'll let that pile up a little bit more. Hmm. Just need to seal this off. We use Kimberlite for the rest of it. The problem isn't the garden. The problem is, is the location and a very unfortunate sign, which led the entire building and all of the buildings surrounding it 
deciding unanimously that that patch of grass is where every single dog in the building has to pee. Um, because there's a sign over by the playground that says, do not walk your dog here, which is over by the other building. Um, we don't have any signs like that. And the people who manage the building that I live in, uh, the strata, if you will, don't give a shit. Um, and so the unfortunate result is that patch of grass is brown and dead 90% of the year because it doesn't have enough... Um, what's the word I'm looking for here? It doesn't have enough... It doesn't get enough water because the sprinklers on it don't work, so we have to water it. And dogs urinate on it 24-7. And this building, you're supposed to only have small dogs. Um, but that doesn't stop anybody from getting Rottweilers and cheap dogs and various other large dogs because people want large dogs. So the result is this grass is either dead or dying at all times. So we've been trying to rehabilitate it for about three years, and it looks a lot better now. The problem is every now and again, we also have to deal with the gardeners who then show up and just shred the whole thing. It's been a, it's been a long couple of years. Currently, it's this lovely mix of grasses and clover. They're using a weed whacker on it right now. Right now, it actually looks really nice. And I'm just worried that they're going to go out there and just shred it. But As long as they're not shredding it, I, I'm okay. Sounds like um, I, they're they're not gardeners. They show up and they le blow leaves around sometimes. Not generally into places where you want them. <laughs> like they operate a leaf blower. Trying to organize podcast scheduling times for tomorrow. <laughs> and people are being slow. The thing that I really want these gardeners to do is to stop fucking with our grass patch. And um, get like the hedge trimmers and actually trim the hedge. Because there's this hedge around my building. Um, which is this awful prickly stuff that grows really fast. It's, it makes it for a nice hedge if it's trimmed, but I don't think they've trimmed it since before the pandemic. So me and my neighbor go out there at night sometimes and trim it. <laughs> it's like literally like two o'clock in the morning on my day off and me and my neighbor will be out there with beer, just like with hedge trimmers because he's gone out and bought two and we'll just trim the hedges for the gardeners. I don't even, I only pay rent here. I don't even own my unit. So like the value of my unit doesn't matter. It's like kind of frustrating seeing people who actually live here and own their units just completely neglecting like everything about this building. It makes me really happy I don't own this unit, to be honest. All right, we can start filling this site up. Hell yeah. And then actually, hopefully, burninate all of it. I 
The pride of rentership? I mean, the pride of rentership is they can't actually find me if I get in trouble for doing something like this. <laughs> they can't. Um, they, they find my landlord, which is maybe worse, but like, meh. Nah. <laughs> the worst that could happen is I get yelled at by my landlord. And they tell me to stop doing a thing that I'm doing, which is fine. All right. Now, while we let that thing do its thing, we can go elsewhere in the fort and do other things. Need to make another male shirt. There's Miasma there. It's also summertime. Send them a bill for your gardening services? I... Pfft. I don't know. I mean... That neighbor that I've helped do stuff like that before um, is, as of a couple of weeks ago, renting my parking space as well. So technically, he is sort of paying me. But he's paying me in weed, so it's not exactly like financial payment. Weed for parking barter? Yeah, exactly. Uh, initially, I just gave him the parking spot for free, and then he's like, I'll buy you weed. And I'm like, okay. I won't complain. I was fully expecting to just give it to him, but... <laughs> you know, I gotta hand it to Steam. Their algorithm has no idea what kind of games I like. Players like you love Teardown? Some planet game that looks like it would make me throw up. A clicker that I'm not interested in. And Cyberpunk 2077. Steam, you don't know me very as well as you think you do. All right. Oh, shit. Did we get something that I missed? Ooh. Did that happen? Chat, we have a, um, a two-month-old baby that I totally missed. Anybody want to be a baby in the fortress? I totally missed this. This must have happened during the siege. It's the right time of year for them to be born. Yeah, you can, Ferrana. She's grouchy, dwelling upon being caught in the rain, and is the daughter of Yushri or Blaze Slave and uh, Etur Plain Thatchet. She is a casual worshipper of the fuchsia and a worshipper of shin russet amber the red rocks. She is two months old, born on the 13th of granite in the year 411. Yeah, now you're in both forts. Her very long hair is neatly combed and her teeth are crowded. Oh, that's interesting. That's a different thing that you don't normally see. Her nose is narrow and her eyebrows are quite long. Her head is somewhat tall and her hair is a crew and her skin is sandy taupe and her eyes are cobalt. She likes graphite, electrum, violet cespertine, uh, and giant platypus tooth as well as jute fabric and gems and leather armor and the words of the amethyst walls and the sight of the heliotrope barium when possible prefers to consume floating guts, oysters, and banana beer and bumblebee royal jelly. Huh. And absolutely hates mosquitoes. That part's relatable. Um, she personally believes it is important to conceal emotions and refrain from complaining. Uh, and she dreams of crafting a masterwork someday. She is ruled by irresistible cravings and urges, and she is always tense and jittery. She seeks out exciting and adventurous situations and cracks easily under pressure. She is slow to trust others and does not easily fall in love and rarely develops positive feelings. She tends to be a little tight with resources when working on projects, and she is quite comfortable with others that have a different appearance or culture. She has a little interest in joking around, and she is brave in the face of imminent danger. And she likes to keep things practical without delving too deeply into the abstract. She is often cheerful, and she is a friendly individual. And she rolls her eyes when she's annoyed, and she needs uh, and she starts to talk slowly when, and when she sorry when she's anno she rolls her eyes when she's annoyed, and when she's annoyed, she starts to talk slowly, and she needs alcohol to get through the working day. Uh, that was a lady, hence the she's. Um.
as this slowly flows over this way. I think that the water's still flowing. Yeah, it is. Good, good, good. Well, this lower thing's gonna fill up first. Shouldn't take too, too long. I think water just flowed onto that. That's actually kind of hilarious. Well, this little thingy down here is gonna fill up with lava. Shouldn't take too long. And then I can pull this lever right here, or pull the lever to let it all flow in and we'll get more flow and hopefully get enough so that we can clear all that out. Players like you love Dune Spice Wars. Can't get into 4X. Son I mean, it's a real-time 4X. It's almost more of an RTS. Uh, Sonic Origins. Never been interested in Sonic. Minecraft Dun Dungeons. You know, honestly, I think that I I, I would play a turn-based Minecraft roguelike, but they're never going to make one. Um, Mountain Blade Banner Lord because they wish they just did Skater XL. Skater XL is cool. F122. Okay. Because I played a single player game. Okay. Also can't do RTS? Fair enough. F1 2022 because you played a single player game. What was a single player game? Steam's algorithm is not the greatest these days, I will say. Although maybe that's partially due to the fact that we're all just spoiled by algorithms that are way too good. I was speaking of like algorithms that break my brain a little bit. I was reading about Google and search terms. Apparently people that are above the age of uh, like 25 use Google differently than like teens. The way we type into Google the phrases and terms that we use because the phrases and terms that we use for Google are less, how do I word this? Single player game was Jedi Fallen Order, <laughs> right? <laughs> sure. Um, the, the, the terms that we use to search Google are much more specific and deliberate because back in the day when you used Google, you had to like search multiple things, try multiple different variations, and like you'd search for a thing and then you'd have to scroll down a couple pages to actually hit it. Whereas now like if you type in a thing into Google and it's not in like the first two search terms, you just like go back and change a different thing. You can kind of get into FTL and Aurora 4X. I mean, FTL is a Completely different game than everything else you mentioned, but. All I know is uh, I get the IT information I need from Google that I need to work. Yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, apparently like the, the way young young people, children nowadays use Google is completely different than the way people have been using it for the last, you know, forever. That was a very short tantrum. Jeez. Instantly finished. Literally just tantrumed and he's like, I'm going to go get a drink. Mood. Well, we just let that thing do its thing for a little bit. All this continues to fill. Typing full sentences into Google. <laughs> I mean, like, Google is, like, almost like an interpretive art form now. You can type in... Y younger generations don't really type sentences. What? Wait, what? Let me see if I can find that article. Looking for this recent article. What was it? Speaking of now, I can't find it on Google. <laughs> The 
You're not fine. Uh. Keep finding this one, like. Hmm. I'll try and find it off stream later. I keep finding this Verge article that was similar, but <laughs> not the one I'm thinking of. We have the possibility of ludicrously specific when dealing with any kind of tech issue because junk help is everywhere. Uh, oh, true. Like with tech, with tech help, you do need to be like, like ludicrously specific. But when trying to figure out, like, I don't know, a song by Justin Bieber, that's that's a super different kind of thing. Humans have arrived to trade. Hope they don't mind walking over dead humans. We get those bodies tossed. Man, look at all those dead unicorns. It's so sad. Okay. Search results you want to get filtered out because they aren't associated with the topic. Really? <laughs> hmm. I feel like I have to be super general when I'm searching for things because I'm also usually looking for, like, various things to do with video games. So a lot of my searches are things like Insert video game name here. Uh, developer provided press sheets or uh, 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 pre uh, uh, press assets is another thing that I type in frequently. Unicorn sausage? No, these so these unicorns were mangled by humans, so they're not usable. The meat's destroyed, unfortunately. Hey, Ned Flunders. Although, fortunately, the unicorns prevailed against the humans. They, kill, <laughs> they killed one human and the humans left. You know, this is actually a, a fact, Krista. The reason uh, Bing is so good at finding pornography is because one of the most effectively tagged parts of the internet is the adult film industry. <laughs> They're very good at tagging things. Very good. And Bing is really bad at filtering out those things, which is why you can go to Bing... And if you use their image search, it's almost impossible to not find porn, even with safe search on. Whereas, like, with Google, you have to go, like, 30 or something pages deep before you start finding stuff that made it through safe search. But with Bing and a lot of other cheaper search engines that haven't been around as long, they're not as good at filtering that stuff out. So the reason you find a lot of stuff that you're not supposed to find is because they're very good at tagging them. Or not intending to find, I guess, is maybe the better term. Which is kind of amazing, but also a problem. No, Bing is pretty bad. I always give Bing a shot whenever I reinstall Windows. Whenever I have a new installation for Windows, I'm like, I'm going to try using Bing for a bit. Let's see how this goes. And always, like, within a day or so, I swap back to DuckDuckGo or Quant, which admittedly are worse search engines, but because they don't track me, I feel better about using them. Search engines that track me freak me out a little bit. Google is kind of creepy. Kind of. Yeah, which is why I use Quant. But the thing is, like, you know how we were talking about Google a couple of years ago, or how I mentioned in Google a couple of years ago, you had to literally be very specific and then sometimes go multiple pages to find what you're actually looking for. Um, that's what Quant is like. <laughs> you have to go, like, five pages to find the thing that you're looking for sometimes, which is kind of annoying. But Quant is an all right search engine. With Google, you can just add one word. Yeah, but if you... It, I'm talking about if you're not searching for porn. 
If you're not, if you didn't type in anything that's adult oriented into your search terms, in Bing, if you go like down a page and a half, you will find porn. You're being real loud with that uh, weed eater out, out there, aren't you, person? I'm gonna see what they're doing with the weed eater. Give me a sec. Oh my god! It's not a weed eater, chat. It's not a weed eater! I can tell you why it's tacky with one word. Well, two words. It's French. Um, they're trimming my fucking hedges for the first time in like two years. I guess they finally heard our complaints. Quant looks tacky? That's an understatement. But yes. It uh, it's French, which is why it's tacky looking. Uh, it's uh, it's it they're it's a startup from Paris, France. So it is a bit of a pain in the dick to use, though. For whatever that's worth. And I just want to put a corpse pile in here. Let's keep an eye on it. Your landlord watches my stream. God, I fucking hope not. <laughs> the, so, for, 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 for clarity's sake, um, my landlord... I, I've never actually met my landlord. Um, there is a management company that manages my apartment. Uh, which I won't name, because they're very small. They're a subset of a bigger realtor company. Uh, but it's a... Uh, lady and her daughter crew um and the only one i ever see is the daughter and she's really cute and i've said that before on stream so it would be bad if my landlord watches my stream <laughs> so it's it's always like a, oh hey yeah no the landlord's going to visit chat's like oh god are you gonna be okay and i'm like yeah she's hot it's fine <laughs> but you know mm. so yeah that would be bad i hope my landlord doesn't watch my stream god Chad, I just want to complain for two seconds and then not complain. I have to wake up at 4.30 in the morning to record a podcast tomorrow. <laughs> the things I do for content. We're just going to let the dwarves work on that for a little bit. Yeah, Quant is a pretty decent search engine. I've been using it for, oh God, probably maybe like two years now. I do end up using Google for image search though, because Quant's image search is bad. So whenever you see me look up images, I will um, tab over and show it to you. Not bad, but if you're still talking about my landlord, awkward. I'm just lucky that I like my landlord. My, my, the, the, comp, the, 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 Two ladies that manage my apartment are very nice and quick and very good at their jobs. So, been a nice time living here. Oh, the 4.30 a.m. thing? I mean, I woke up at 6 today, so yeah, it's not that bad. It's just... I like to pretend that Friday's my day off. <laughs> it's really not, though. It, it's fine though, because like that means we'll be done recording the podcast by like eight in the morning, and I can have it done edit. I can be done editing it by like one, which means I can just have the whole weekend then after that, pretty much. Aside from recording videos, we gotta prep stuff for Turn Adams chit chat as well. I'd be curious to hear your impressions of Quant after you mess around with it for like 
couple weeks. Or even a few days. It's one of those um, search engines, though, that I sometimes wonder, like, how they stay in business. <laughs> At least we've made it to an era where there's actual choice with search engines, though, you know? Like, I, I feel like in the early days of the internet, there was, you know, Dogpile, there was Yahoo, there was Ask, there was a bunch of others that I'm forgetting the names of, probably. Searchbit, there was uh, Netscape Search... It was, there was so many old search engines um, back in the day. And then there was Google. D does Ask Alta Vista? Yeah, that's another one that I was thinking of. Did, does Ask still exist? <laughs> or is has Ask just like transcended existing and just turned into spyware? Because I think that Ask has transcended existing. Because last time I used Ask Time, okay. Nobody intentionally uses Ask. Ask sometimes ends up getting installed from some fucking bad downloader that you downloaded from download.com because you needed to reinstall some old piece of software before there was actually good, like, repos to get free open source software. Anyway, um, like the last time I, or like the last time I had to install CCleaner before that was a virus, um, the last time Ask got inflicted on my web browser, it said powered by Yahoo. Does Ask still exist? <laughs> Does Ask still exist? It's currently owned by Interactive Corp. Ask.com, originally known as Ask Jeeves, is a question is a question answering focused e-business founded in 1996. Okay. Search engine shut down in 2010. Ask.com abandoned the abandoned the search industry with a loss of 130 search engineering jobs. Uh, because it would not compete, it could not compete against popular search engines such as Google. Early in, earlier in the year, Ask had launched a Q&A community for generating answers from real people as opposed to search algorithms. Then combined this with its question and answer repository, utilizing its extensive history of archived query data to search sites that provide answers to questions that people have. To avoid a situation in which no answers were available from its own resources, the company outsourced the un to an unnamed third-party search provider uh, to provider the comprehensive web search matches uh, that it has gathered itself. So no. It's no it's not an internet search engine, it's an answer engine. And from that Wikipedia page, isn't is that just a shitty search engine? <laughs> I th I think that's just a shitty search engine chat. Weird. That is so fucking strange. <laughs> That's all I could really say. That is super fucking strange. So no ask isn't a search engine anymore as of 2010. It's an ask, it's, it's a question and answer repository. So... By that logic, I would almost say that it's Quora, but better. God, I ended up with a Quora account recently to, like, try and figure something out. And uh, it, like, completely annihilated my email with marketing shit. And then I had to completely delete that account to stop them from doing that. God, fuck that website. Um, I, I was going <laughs> to turn into the Magic 8-Ball. I was going to say, it's, it's not quite like the Magic 8-Ball, but it's like... It's like WikiHow, but shittier. <laughs> it's... I don't even... Hmm. 
Yeah, who answers, I guess. Although I'm still I'm just constantly impressed that Yahoo still exists. And then Reddit replaced Yahoo Answers. Honestly, I know Reddit isn't the greatest website in the world for a lot of corporate reasons. I wish Reddit would replace large portions of the internet. <laughs> like, could we just have, like, a Reddit equivalent that just, like, nukes Facebook? There's actually, there's actually a really good subreddit called Reddit is now Facebook. Yeah. This is literally just, like, people posting Facebook-ass posts. Like, posts that you see, that you would normally see on Facebook, but, like, on Reddit, and it's just cross-posts. It's very funny to me. It's a very small subreddit, but it's a very amusing subreddit. To anybody who wants a weird subreddit to pay attention to. Also, Dwarf, can you, like, not do what you're doing? Why are... Why are you trying to clean a place that's about to be cleansed by cleansing fire? Dwarf had a stupid for a second. It's fine. <laughs> that was almost a calamity. Don't you love it when Dwarf is like, this floor is dirty. I'm going to go clean up the lava with a broom. <laughs> Dude. Fucking go do other things. As a literal old-timey newspaper, you have comics and MMO news. I... But then you have to have a Facebook account. I guess, like, if you have a Facebook account and for, like, other... Facebook affiliated websites or meta, I guess, affiliated websites, then it's fine. But I just, I refuse to make an account on anything that is owned by meta. You know, at least when Google changed their name to a freakish overlord like company, Alphabet, it kind of made sense. Meta is just stupid. It, like, it, it's just amplified the dumbness of that entire company. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I use Reddit is probably like the only social media that I actually use recreationally at this point. But, I don't know. This is a weird conversation. I don't really have anything to add to it. <laughs> it's just kind of a... I guess, like, the uses for social media in this day and age are kind of fascinating, but... 
Facebook just kind of annoys me. You've yet to find a subreddit you don't get quickly sick of. This seems like a you problem. Do you enjoy the Zuckerberg memes still? To a degree. Zuckerberg just kind of makes me angry, though. So the memes don't really help. Because they just kind of add to the anger for me at this point. I think the only subreddit recently that I've gotten that I got pretty quickly sick of was ah uh, what the fuck, which is just things that look cute initially and then you look at them a little closer and then you realize that they're actually terrifying and kind of disturbing. The problem is, is there's a lot of people that are like, oh, it's a spider. What? <laughs> it's like there, there's no what the fuck there. It's just aw. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of crappy subreddits out there, but, like, I mean, I, I have a pretty closed circuit loop of the subreddits that I frequent. Um, that's, that's basically it. It's, like, I, I have a very small list of subreddits, and I only, like, the most recent addition to my subscribed subreddits is uh, the Playdate subreddit. But, like... Game, like, subreddits don't generally make it into my, like, circles where I pay attention to them, right? Like, before that, I think the the one before that that I added was probably... <sighs> Maybe even the Dwarf Fortress subreddit? Like, I don't know. I only, like, subscribe to new subreddits very infrequently. Like, I'll occasionally, like, I have some that I'll just, like, pop into and browse occasionally, but I don't ever want to see them on the, on my front page. Like, there's a lot of various cat subreddits that I don't, I don't want on my front page. Um, and, like, grilled cheese. Like, sometimes I'll just go to the slash art grilled cheese and just browse grilled cheese for a bit and laugh at memes, but, like, I, I don't subscribe to that subreddit, you know? I think, to me, subreddits are, like, forums. There are good forums and there are bad forums, you know? And like back in the day, for every something awful, you had like 50 shitty forums, you know? And subreddits are kind of like that. You kind of have to find communities and forums that you jive with that work well that are good. But like the rest of the fucking owl isn't really a subreddit I need to go to very often because it's a lot of the same stuff being posted over and over. The contrast of a giant social media platform created by this awkward in parasocial individual. You know, that's literally every giant social media platform to a degree, though. The difference is some of them are more insufferable than others. Yeah, slash our unexpected turned into the car incident. Sub. I, I prefer maybe, maybe, maybe now over slash our unexpected. Maybe, maybe, maybe is pretty fucking amusing to me. <laughs> Although, the, the go-to actual car incident sub is a catastrophic failure, which is just like random humongous explosions out of nowhere and stuff, or like highways caving in. But I do believe that there is, there's a lot of... Ooh, Rog's Tantrum again. There's a lot of really, 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 really good things in Reddit. It's just a matter of kind of sussing it out. It's like anything on the internet. It's just unfortunate we don't get slash our place more frequently. Another kind of decent example about how some subreddits are great and some are insufferable is like for every PC Master Race and, like, crappy gaming subreddit, there's occasionally subreddits like Slash Hard Games, which are extremely good. Well mon monitored, well maintained, well moderated, no reposts. Like, it's very well put together subreddit. So for every really well put together subreddit, there's, like, like there, there's, like, 15 major gaming subreddits that are all 
kind of meh and a lot of the same memes and like not super helpful and don't generally have a lot of new or interesting information on them. But then there's Slash R Games, which is fantastic, so. I think to a degree it kind of just depends on what you're trying to find. What you're looking for as well. It's got some mead builds. Just rolled into the shop. Is good stuff if you is decent if you know stuff about cars. Huh. A subreddit that I was a part of for a really long time was before it just kind of became sad was banned from Club Penguin, which was just people saying silly things to get banned from Club Penguin and screenshots of it. It's like, you got banned for saying the word noodles and <laughs> stuff like that. Um, but then it just got kind of sad around the time Club Penguin got shut down proper. And then it was just people being sad and reposting old screenshots of them getting banned from Club Penguin. Speaking of Club Penguin, that was always one of my favorite meme uh, sub, uh, not subreddits, my, one of my favorite um, meme speedruns, which was the ban from Club's Penguin speedrun, where you had to make a new, you had to make an email account, verify that email, sign up for a Club Penguin account with that email, go to the email, verify the Club Penguin account, set up a name for your character in Club Penguin, and then get banned. It's like, it was like a 14 second speed run or something. Hey, tech it at war. Yeah, we're at war with the, the, one of the human factions that was bringing us tributes for years. They just decided to invade us one day. We're not currently at war, but um, if I go to the dead and missing section, we've killed plenties. These are all humans that are now deceased, courtesy of... Um, this. I mean, a lot of them are still just in the drain, but I'm currently um, filling up this little thingy over here with lava so that I can pull a lever so that I can hopefully clean out my lovely little drowning trap right here. I mean, maybe I'll just make this into an obsidian printer as well while I'm at it. Might as well, but yeah, it's, it's a uh, way to murder things. I will say... Reddit is possibly the best place to get pictures of cute cats. It used to be Tumblr was the best place to get pictures of cats. Reddit is now up there. Yep. Is Paranoid still alive? Uh, yeah. Uh, 58 years old. She is. Um, you killed two buzzards. Um, her fourth finger on her right hand is broken, apparently, and her upper front teeth are gone. She was depressed for a bit, but she's gotten over it. She is a hardened individual, as they say. You should put her in the military. She'd do good, probably. But um, I've told chat that you're going to be joining me on uh, Thursday next week on the 14th. Which will be interesting. I'm going to be putting out a, um announcement video. And the reason I, I, I asked you to like stitch something together is just a introduce yourself. Just say, hi, I'm this person. I make videos in this place. And I stream over here. And I'm going to be joining blah, blah, blah for people who don't know you. That's literally the only reason I've asked. I want, I want you to do something like that. It's just because it'll be helpful for people who don't know who you are. But aside from that, yeah. Um, should be fun, would think. I'm just waiting for this lava to fill. But we can hopefully burninate the rest, or at least most of these bodies. Jeez. There's so many of them. Otherwise, I will just... Get pumps and make cannons. If I gotta, I gotta. Yeah, hopefully work's been good, mate. Some legendary council? 
I mean, hopefully it gets you some YouTube subs. I like that this is a boulder that is melt in the process of melting still. And it's forbidable. <laughs> but it's currently magma. But because it was a it was a piece of iron ore, I think. It takes so long for it to melt. I can forbid a piece of magma. That's really cool. There's magma, and there's pools of magma, and then there's forbiddable magma. Read eccentricity. Let that keep filling. But I don't know. I wouldn't overthink it too much. The thing that we need to figure out, though, for that uh, Tarn chat is how we're actually going to run it. Because something that I've, I've wanted to do for a while is make it more along the lines of a kind of DF talk type deal instead of just a straight Q&A. Because up until now, they've just been like, we hang out or I, I hang out with Tarn and I ask, I ask him questions from a big document, right? I want it to be more, how do I word this? More akin to just a, more of an interview instead of, and less of a, let's just talk uh, and ask and ask and answer questions. And I'm, I'm totally fine to do the ask and answer questions. I'm gonna do the same setup as previously where I'm gonna put out a video with a, uh, a thing where people can submit questions, but. I don't really know how to go about it to make it, like, better. Or I guess part of the problem for me right now is, like, I would ask him things about stuff he's been working on, but I know what he's been working on, you know? And it's not fun things to ask. It's not like, oh, have you been working on magic systems <laughs> or anything? It's like, oh, how is the... uh. Button number 32 next to button 247. Is the tooltip for that finished yet? Like, that's not fun to talk about. Like, that's... It's part of the reason I waited so long for this round. Likely more than anyone is asking for? Well, I mean, if you want to put some of those topic ideas onto paper and pass them or into text format and shove them in a DM. Um, we can figure something out probably. Because the problem is I just sit here and blab about DF all day, right? And I do this so much that I, I my brain is just empty by the time I'm done streaming half the time. <laughs> Head empty, no thoughts. So we're working on granite blocks, making them figurines, and things are still filling. There really ain't too much more to think about right now. Although, what I could do, I could pull this lever. And this lever. This ain't actually going to drain this faster than it's filling, I don't think. Yeah, no, I've listened to early DF Talk episodes myself and thought more than once about how, man, I would totally just relaunch DF Talk <laughs> if I was given the opportunity to. It's like, man, if only I could just, like, take over that RSS feed and just run DF Talk, because I could totally do that. But not my thing. Although, admittedly, that's kind of what I'm trying to do, I guess.
All right, so let that lava start flowing. And when I pull this, eh, fuck it. Let's just open it. Oh, hi, Ghanian. How things? Good afternoon. I'm trying to clean up bodies. <laughs> I've got too many of them. Let's see how this goes. That's scary. What happened? When you say burn like on a like on a frying pan, like what do you mean by burn the hell out of yourself? That's not good. I'd say it was I'd hope it was I hope it was minor, but you just said you burned the hell out of yourself, which means it kind of wasn't. Nope, this is certainly flowing faster than it was previously. Mixture sodium. You're making soap on low sleep. Mixing your sodium hydroxide solution tipped it over chemical burns. Oh, God. Ouch. Yeah, what tech it said. Jesus. That sounds unpleasant. I, um, worst burns I ever got, since we're sharing, um, I picked up the wrong end of a soldering iron once. There's a reason why soldering irons are kept in little metal coils so that you don't grab the wrong end. I just kind of absentmindedly picked it up because I put it down and then... Somebody else used it and put it down at a slightly different angle. I wasn't looking, and I grabbed it. I had to pick it up and shake it off of my hand, <laughs> and it took a chunk of my hand with it. I don't actually have any scarring, miraculously enough, but that was, um, woof, painful. Luckily, you washed it reasonably quick, so scarring is low. Eh. Scarring just adds character. For for whatever it's worth, okay? If you're if if you're worried about embarrassing scars, I have a scar about this long across my ass. I fell into a pile of sheet metal when I was a small child. I just remember sitting in a bathtub full of blood. <laughs> um So, you know. <laughs> when it comes to embarrassing uh scars, they're, they're not that bad. You took a boiling pot with egg? Took a boiling pot with egg. Are you, are you like, you poured it on you? What? Literally looking at aprons now? Yeah, no kidding. Seems smart. You started your hands on fire about five years ago. Lighter fluid and a frustration don't mix. Oh God. Chat, how are we not all dead? You know, it's funny that we're talking about burns while I'm intentionally trying to burn bodies. <laughs> so what are you doing on stream? Burning bodies? What are you talking about? Burning ourselves? <laughs> it's a very hot stream right now, chat. Ooh. Yeah, that'd do it. I, um... This was pretty recently, actually. I put a metal spoon on the edge of a pan and didn't think about it and then picked it up and went back. It hit the ceiling. Blistered fingers and thumb, but somehow that's in some way no scarring. I actually do have permanent scars from burns, but you can't really see them because I have a couple on this arm and two on this arm. But um, one of the worst ones on this arm is right underneath this. 
big part of that tattoo. I got it before I got the tattoo. Um, and part of the reason I got that tattoo was to cover it up. Um, it was because I was cleaning uh, the stoves at the night shift job at McDonald's and they had the um, platters that come down like this to you know compress and cook burger patties. Um, and one of my absent-minded coworkers pushed the button while I was cleaning it and, and I didn't get my arm out in time and it seared me all the way along there and I had like a gash about yay big, about that deep into my arm, this like fucking one centimeter thick like dent in my arm. That was a trip to the ER. Wasn't pleasant. <laughs> Felt like shit. <laughs> Brother has a bracelet scarf from a kettle handle. While he was making coffee and dropped like two liters of boiling water on his hand and wrist. Ooh. You know, it, it's 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 funny to me because like I, I worked that job for years, right? And completely ignored the majority of like safety concerns. That's the only time I've actually been burnt and it wasn't my fault. I, no, there was two times I got burnt at that job. One time was that time when somebody else pushed a button that they weren't supposed to push. And the other time was when one of my coworkers thought it would be funny to throw an ice cube into one of the oil vats next to the one I was cleaning. It's got me fucked how absent-minded you need to be to pu to to push a cook cook while the person is literally in front of you with a scraper cleaning the grill. I, very ridiculous. Did he make it up to me? Uh, he said <laughs> sorry the next day when he saw me. Um, so yeah, I guess they made it up to me. Uh, my manager gave me a gift card to Walmart for 20 bucks. <laughs> that was my apology for getting, like, permanently scarred. You were gu uh, guilty of kicking? Yeah, but was there a person cleaning an empty one right next to the one that you were kicking ice cubes into? You had a friend who used to fix commercial dishwashers? Oh, this can't end well. <laughs> There's no way that that sentence ends well. I had a friend who used to fix commercial dishwashers. Fuck no, when that elephant came out of the storeroom, uh, it was everyone on serious mode for the next few hours. He was almost drowned in a... Man, you really do mean, like, commercial dishwashers. How big are we talking if he almost drowned in one? That's fucking scary, dude. The hell? There's something super satisfying about watching lava slowly flow through an area in Dwarf Fortress and just make everything burn. So satisfying. You have this foam cream that you get to apply for the next week to skip and get to skip the pants for a while. Oh, that's that. that oh, in winter. Well, hmm. just turn the heat up. It's fine. You get to like, you, who who doesn't want to have like a no pants week? As someone who lives alone, I have no pants weeks all the time. I'm not wearing pants right now. That's why I'm totally wearing pants, but. <laughs> you just get to like, pretend to be an, a, a gamer from like 2007. Pantsless, cream on thigh, Xbox controller. We. <laughs> Do you get sick leave or anything? Or are you just like, Kind of stuck. Get the worst luck. You gave him money to pay his back, to pay back his child support, and they came and arrested him. Uh, he had the worst luck. We gave him money to pay back child support, and so they came and arrested him, and extradited him out of state, and you never saw him again. Well, at least then you can work with no pants on. So that's also pretty optimal, I would say. Have you ever tried wearing a kilt, Ganyan? 
Yeah, why would you giving him money to pay back child support end with him getting arrested and taken out of state? That sentence is hurting my brain, too. My brain doesn't understand. Like, at all. <laughs> Cause like I'm trying, I'm trying to think of ways that you can avoid wearing pants for a week and still be decent. It's like, okay, morning coat, that's an option. Like a, a bathrobe, I could do it. Kilt could do it. I'm trying to think of other options, <laughs> aside from like, I don't know, nightgown. But when they got the check, they had an address and not paying child support is a crime. So they arrested him for not having, for having not paid, but he just paid. You know, okay. So I had a manager at one point, Prague. Hey, Ponce, what's up, dude? I had a manager at one point who, <laughs> we were talking about you and V-Man yesterday, by the way, and other streamers from the old days. Anyway, um, I, I had a manager who, was unemployed and sleeping on his friend's sofa for a couple of months, right? When he got employed again, got hired as a man in management at the store that I was working at, within two weeks, he paid off his credit card bill in full, right? Because he had like, it was like $2,000 or something in credit that he owed. And within a month and a half, he'd paid it off entirely. And he said that, after he'd paid it off, it took them like four days to register that he'd paid his credit card bills and he'd been lapsing and like accruing interest and whatnot on this credit. And they phoned him and threatened to take away his credit card and basically just like threatened like him with like losing his car. And he responded with, he's like, I'm not a delinquent. I was just unemployed. <laughs> um, also, I've already paid it. Um... So he ended up being fine, but house coat, bathrobe, yeah, pretty much. Slip? I've never heard the term slip before. Annual tribute has arrived. Sorry, Stone. I'm gonna have to give you screenshots. But how's things, Ponce? What you been up to? How's Smite been treating you? People still annoying, but game still fine? Still that, yeah. I'm kind of, I, I remember when you were saying that you needed to find a new um, multiplayer competitive game, I'm kind of surprised you landed on Smite. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm just, I'm kind of surprised that's the one you went with. Of like all of the options on the market right now, you went with Smite. <laughs> Not that there's like a ginormous set of options for like competitive games though. That's just a stopgap. I get you. I get you. Hey, Sirelac, what up? because you were looking at the release date for predecessor. Okay, so I know that predecessor is that is using assets for from that game. So I I know that predecessor is using assets from that game that Epic was making that never came out. What was the name of that game? I think, right? Unless I'm thinking of something totally fucking different. <laughs> Paragon. That was it. Right. Oh shit, this is a small one. 
one page. Probably because they brought a horse, a rabbit, and a hen. This is what happens when you punch the king. Wait, hold on a second. Chat, I just convicted my king of a crime. I don't believe I've ever done that before. Does the king get a prison sentence? Yep. The king is getting 29 days in prison for vandalism. Huh. I just kind of assumed that wouldn't work. Wow. We'll see how this goes. That was like Overwatch that almost almost immediately closed. You mean the uh, Amazon published one? Crucible. On your first playthrough of Citizen Sleeper, they just added a DLC pack to that. I'm so torn on Citizen Sleeper because they're doing three DLCs and that game is such a I play through it once and I see my ending and I'm happy kind of game. They're adding more content to it. It's like, do I play through it again? <laughs> do I wait? Oh my God. It is really fucking good. I'm not saying you shouldn't play it. I'm saying I want to play it again, but I have to wait until all three deal until all of all three of the free add-ons are out, which they announced like a two weeks after I finished it because they hold on. But that game is so fucking good. I love that game so much. Yeah, Citizen Sleeper Flux. Three new DLC episodes. Uh, yeah, they're all free. They're doing three free episodic updates. Which is cool. There's one out that's out. There's one out, or th there's one out in July. There's one out in October. And then there's another one out in 2023. Oh, you might be thinking of Battleborn. Crucible was too too recent. I mean, Crucible, admittedly, was another game that looked like Overwatch, so. So let's see if the Captain of the Guard's actually going to arrest the king. Really enjoyed what you played of it, though? For Paragon? I mean, I feel like there there was two games from back in the day that I really enjoyed, and neither of them made it out of beta. Paragon and Dawngate. <laughs> I loved both of those games. I see your DMs, by the way, uh, Tekken. So, yeah, no, I loved those games. Those are both fun games. Neither of them left. I'm sad. Definitely Battleborn, released three weeks before Overwatch. Yeah, so here's here's the thing about Battleborn. Battleborn is not the same genre as Overwatch. And this is why Battleborn failed. It's because it marketed itself as the same genre as Overwatch. Battleborn was a MOBA with towers and minions and leveling. It was like League of Legends, but an FPS. It was other games like that. But everybody just goes, oh, it's the same as Overwatch and didn't play it. Admittedly, Battleborn wasn't a very good game, but it marketed itself into oblivion. No, they marketed it as a hobby-grade game. Whatever that means. I'm so curious to see if this king actually goes to prison. <laughs>
Well, this seems to be still expanding. Seems to be. That's... I mean, I wouldn't say it's developer. Um, it's Gearbox's founder. Who, by the way, is the most influential mu magician in the world now. Because he bought the magic castle in Hollywood. You want to fall down a re weird, weird rabbit hole? Go look up Randy Pitchford and his magical habits. The last PAX... The... the the first and last PAX East I went to, Randy Pitchford um, did, was there and he did the announcement for um, Borderlands 3 panel. He led it. And that panel was started off with a hour and a half long magic show that Randy Pitchford... Um, did. Yes, Randy Pitchford's the guy who took all the bonus money. Yep. It was like a $10 million bonus or something. Um, but yeah, he <laughs> literally did a one hour and a half. It was an, it was an hour and a half long magic show that Randy Pitchford put on. And then a two minute trailer. <laughs> and then they told everybody to leave. <laughs> Basically was the Borderlands panel. Which is kind of amazing, by the way. Giggity, giggity, giggity. No, not giggity. Nothing about Randy Pitchford is giggity. Especially the part where Randy Pitchford also at one point um, accidentally left a USB stick full of business secrets and porn uh, in a medieval times. You can't speak civilly about that guy? I can just because the shit that he gets up to is so fucking stupid that it's funny. <laughs> Like, genuinely, the stuff Randy Pitchford gets up to is, like, it doesn't even make me mad. It's just, like... <laughs> Although, fortunately, if this makes you feel any better, he no longer... Um, because he, he sold um, Gearbox to Tencent, uh, he no longer has a controlling share. He's still in a management position, but he doesn't have a controlling share in the company anymore. It really does, doesn't it? It's like something from a fucking sitcom. Like, that's not something that should happen in real life, Tekken. Straight up, that's not something that should happen in... The guy's living his best life. St buying the magic castle, which apparently is like a very important thing for m magicians. Um, and leaving porn in medieval times. Yes, he's very, very much a living his best life. He's certainly living a life. I don't know about his best life. But those are going to eat through that drawbridge, which is kind of fine. I have a question. Serious question. Is McAfee dead? Amateur player, good to see you. How you been, dude? Serious question, though. Is McAfee dead? Because I saw an article a while ago about him being dead. And I refuse to believe it. He's not dead? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Like, that, that dude just, like, hurts my brain whenever I think about him too hard. He faked his death to escape police. I mean, wouldn't you? <laughs> Honestly. He definitely didn't uninstall himself. He made it back to America and ran for president. And you know, him and Joe Exotic should run for presidents together. Those two should just get married and then run for president. I feel like John McAfee and Joe Exotic would get along. I'd watch that reality TV show on Netflix. Not gonna lie, what a mess that'd be, but you'd still, but I'm all in for that timeline. I mean, aren't we all kind of? It would be an absolute clusterfuck, but God, would it ever be entertaining? Of him talking about the time that he fucked a dolphin. You know, no. And I have a very serious question. Do I want to? 
And did he fuck the dolphin or did the dolphin fuck him? Because usually that doesn't work that way. Your wife is also doing good. Uh, chemo's kicking her ass. Yeah, long three months so far, but surviving. Yeah. Last time we spoke seemed kind of not great, so hopefully things are picking up. Chemo's um, a rough time. It's one of those things where you desperately want to say, please God, don't show me, but after seeing but after seeing it, you're like, hmm, that was <laughs> me they. So how's the fort? Uh the humans were dumb enough to invade us, so now I'm burning their bodies in a tunnel. With lava. You know, just as dwarves do. But pretty good, frankly. Certainly could be worse. Certainly could be better, but <laughs> could be worse. Just burning humans. Are the sieges getting smaller? So far, they've all been about the same size, but they've gotten less frequent. The first year they invaded us, they sieged us four times in one year. Once a season. And now they're down to about once a year. Sometimes less, so. I got to repopulate. I don't think that's quite how the game works, but I like that theory. Into the game for steel alloys? I mean, I'm all for easier ways of getting steel. Is there any reason why cobalt specifically? I feel like if I do it on this side, it okay, that doesn't that didn't actually have the effect that I wanted it to, so let's open this back up. Apparently, turns out we actually need at maximum flow. A lot of magma? I know it really isn't. Not even a Z level worth. What's going on here? Uh, the humans invaded Long Death, so I drowned them. And then I drowned them again. And then I drown them again. Because you, you know you said that that's a lot of lava? That's not a lot of lava. That's a lot of water. Um, this is my half-assed way of cleaning this without actually going in there and making the dwarves scar themselves for life. <laughs> and then eventually, you know, getting all of the nice iron shields and picks and various other bits and pieces out of here. It's using allies for cutting tools, very hard, and wear resistance. Not sure about brittleness, but maybe I can make it for lighter and sharper weapons. Do you really need better weapons? I mean, steel is more than efficient enough. Not really a layman known metal? Definitely not. I mean, you work in steel fabrication, right? Or metal fabrication, if I'm not mistaken. So, you probably know more about metal than most. No, I don't think so. Yeah, it's I, it might be kind of like when the captain of the guard gets a prison sentence. If the captain of the guard gets a prison sentence, they don't actually take them to prison. Yeah, he's supposedly in prison right now, doing his prison sentence. But... I mean, I could jump over to the king. Oh, no. The king is actually in prison. Holy shit. <laughs> and he's miserable after being confined. Wow. Cobalt is pretty toxic, if you recall. So are many Twitch chats, but that's fine. That's funny. <laughs> 
they did actually drag the king to prison. I mean, I could just let him die of thirst, but that would be kind of mean. I think if he does another prison sentence, then we'll let him die. The thing is, there's no way of chaining them down and leaving them in prison permanently without also killing them. <laughs> He's still mandating I make him figurines, though, from prison. I mean, spiders are features, not bugs. So. You know, whenever, when you keep saying cobalt, I keep thinking cobaltite, but that's something else. That's where my brain keeps going. Cobaltite has cobalt in it, among other things. Yeah, I, I always joke about, like, if you play enough Dwarf Fortress, eventually you'll have a minor in geology, but uh, you'll have a minor in geology based on only things that are in the game. <laughs> you miss a lot of, like, fundamentals and important bits around the edges. Alright, that's... It's time to uh, seal the top of these, I think. But so are lead mines and the dwarves work the... Yeah, no, uh, dwar dwarves definitely like, you know, having lead mugs. Although my parents owned two lead goblets, so humans weren't exactly strangers to that concept as well. All right, I think maybe what I do is I go in here and I make this, uh, and I make this thing more efficient. Maybe it's time for us to actually enter into here because I need to rebuild some drawbridges anyway. And this doesn't seem to be filling. <laughs> I know why it's not filling, but it's also not filling. I do wonder what leaded wine tastes like. Best not to find out. And I don't think this is a waste not want not situation. I think this is a uh, yes waste, otherwise die <laughs> situation. Although I'm sure drinking leaded wine once wouldn't hurt. But you know, I'm sure many people have said that about cocaine, so. And before it's better than regular wine and you don't want regular wine anymore. Leaded wine or, or bust. Fuck it. Pull all the levers. Actually, no, I need to leave these two open. Or we're gonna pull the other three. And we're just gonna send the dwarves in there to clean it up. We've cleaned out a good chunk of them. That should clear up pretty quick, I think.
Let's see if I can go to corpses real quick. Do I have too many corpses to dump all? No, I don't. First thing he did was to put DF on it to play at the hospital. Hey, you know, at the very least it runs light. Next April for rules, you want Twitch to purposely remove all emotes for 24 hours. See, the reason they can't do that is I sell emotes for a living. It is part of my income is providing emotes to people. Lots of people subscribe to me specific, like not to watch my stream, but just to have access to my emotes. There's a, a good, a, maybe not a significant portion, but a percentage of my audience doesn't actually watch me all that much. They just sub for the emotes. So you really can't do that. <laughs> How about you just flip them all upside down? You know, I, I I like to think that we're at a point. No, it wouldn't. I like to think that we're at a point with Twitch where um, nothing, with, or just with the world in general, where April Fool's is just not funny and people have all just actually realized that April Fool's isn't funny. And I think that we're all better off for that, frankly. Or Gabbro, that works just fine. Set that as a raising bridge, right? My muscle memory is too quick, so. Find it less funny and more wonder what corporations will do for it. Let's like my Reddit with their annual games. Yeah. That creepy uncle your mom elbowed to indicate you you should laugh. To indicate you should laugh if you, you can't stand being in the same room. I don't. That's a odd comparison. I just don't like April Fool's because I never found it particularly funny. It was either not funny or... Like, I, I don't know, we're in a world where everybody just bullshits on the internet anyway, so it's just like, hey, it's now, it's the one day where it's okay to bullshit on the internet. And it's like, eh, maybe not. Maybe we still don't bullshit on the internet, guys. That's kind of my take on April Fool's. So April Fool's just kind of sucks. The streamer is in range. I'm sure I could change some words around to make that work, but. Whole bunch of shit just getting dumped now. Oh, wow. Look at all those item dumps popping up now and storing items these dwarves should just come flying in here I would think you know one of the um, premium features that I'm looking forward to more than anything is childcare and children be able being able to do chores so excited why are you in here to clean All of the things you could be doing. You choose to clean. This is the part up here that I'm worried about, this top side. I'm going to keep an eye on these dwarves and see if they go nuts.
I'm really glad that they got rid of that system. There's some like features in Dwarf, bugs in Dwarf Fortress that make good features and there's some that are just shitty and that one was just kind of shitty. So I'm glad that they fixed that one. Sorry, but hard to disagree, man. Dwarf Fortress is a better game for it. I think amplifying the worst in people isn't generally a benefit for any video game. Exhibit A, RimWorld. And I think amplifying the worst in people with any mechanic is a negative. I don't like RimWorld's community. I find RimWorld to be boring and bland and samey, but um, I wouldn't say I hate RimWorld or dislike RimWorld. I'm not even talking to you. I'm talking about what Zaklus said. Someone on uh, YouTube comments actually accused me of virtue signaling about RimWorld recently, which I think is a little strange. Like, how dare you accuse others of liking edgy things in video games? Like, I think it's kind of gross. I'm not allowed to have that opinion. I don't think Dwarf Fortress benefits from encouraging that kind of behavior either. Wait, what? How in the world is RimWorld similar to Factorio? What? <laughs> I also don't like Factorio, but I don't like conveyor belt games. It's the optimal play method, so yeah, of course it does. I have, for, for clarity's sake, Ghanian, I have 4,000 hours on RimWorld, approximately. My issue with RimWorld isn't, like, the game. The game itself is fine. It's a good little tower defense space buildy thing uh, with some fun min-maxing and management. I don't like the development of it because it they don't balance it in a way that's fun for the average player. They balance it in a way that's fun for people that are way too good at it. And I don't particularly like the way that its entire base marketing for its existence was based off the back of, we're like RimWorld, but then like, or RimWorld's entire base existence is based on, it sold itself on the fact that it's like Dwarf Fortress. Um, when in reality, it's nothing like Dwarf Fortress and not even close to coming anywhere near to being like Dwarf Fortress. The, the developer also had a habit for a while there of removing uh contributors from the credits when they quit the company um and various other things like i just I, I i'm not a huge fan of the guy who made it he's a canadian he seems like an all right dude but he's an odd character in a way that makes me uncomfortable like the fact that it's a hugely widely popular game and for years, you would literally watch streamers and make very specific adjustments to make our fun tactics that we found to defeat enemies in optimal ways. Would literally just nerf those out of existence. It would be like if Tarn just removed drawbridges because some people use them to defend. And it's an OP mat way of defending. And it's like... Hmm. <laughs> I don't I don't like it when devs do that. If a dev balances for the m most optimal tactics and not and doesn't balance for fun, it uh, kind of sucks. Yeah, it's it'd be like a, D a DM just like magically making a trap appear out of nowhere because they broke a strategy that the DM had in mind or something. Um it's it's that's not fun and as somebody who streamed that game throughout it's so when i i i, I started streaming RimWorld before it went into early access on steam right and i loved it and it had a lot of mechanics in it that were very interesting it had a fear mechanic which got completely removed from the game as an example the fear mechanic you could su fire use suppressive fire to scare the enemies and they would literally drop their guns and book it 
and it was the coolest mechanic ever. And then they'd be scrambling back to try and get their guns, and there was all sorts of mechanics in there that made it very dwarf fortressy, but also approachable. And almost every single one of those mechanics got removed because either the player base complained, or we found ways to gimmick them. Um, and so over... I loved RimWorld throughout its early access until about the point where it hit beta. When it hit beta, and there was something that changed about the balancing that I, I just kind of ruined the game for me really quickly. And also, you might remember the description for RimWorld on Steam for ages right here used to say, a sci-fi colony sim inspired by Dwarf Fortress. When it went into beta, they removed that. And down here, it used to say, oh, it, it, it says that's down here still, right? Inspired by Dwarf Fortress, Firefly, and Dune. They removed it from up here, which bothers me. They removed it from the main menu of the game, which also bothers me. Uh, they removed it from the website, which also bothers me. The only reason their Kickstarter really succeeded was from promotion from the Dwarf Fortress forums. Um... The, yeah, I, I don't know. There's just so many little things about RimWorld that bothers me that, and the flagrant encouragement of the community to be as edgy as possible. Just, if I ever see somebody memeing about war crimes again, I'm just gonna, I just ban them at this point. It's like, I just, there's some things that I just, I, I can't tolerate. <laughs> And I just don't like seeing it in any format. Yeah, the difference between me and... I guess the difference between me and Disnoff, Gonian, is... Disnoff got famous and made a lot of money. I didn't, right? So... <laughs> there is an alternate universe somewhere where I'm Disnoff. <laughs> Because of how much of that game I played back in the day. Yes. They get very old very quick. So I, I don't know. I just... I don't hate RimWorld. But there's enough things that have happened between the, develop, the, the developer of that game, the community of that game, over the years that I just kind of scratch my head and go, Really? And that's kind of my take on RimWorld. I don't, I don't hate RimWorld. I don't really, I really liked that game for years. I'm just really constantly annoyed and disappointed by its developer and the community behind it. And it's like, it's, it's kind of dangerous for me to talk smack about it because like I, I'm part of the team that organizes the Hot Potato Challenge, which is this huge charity event that raised like ninety thousand dollars for Doctors Without Borders last year via playing RimWorld. Um, I just, I feel like that game has kind of aped a lot of Dwarf Fortress's success and like I, another thing that will endlessly bother me about RimWorld during the Kickstarter, there was a promise RimWorld will never charge for DLC or updates really what about the three DLC packs that you have that all cost a lot of money? They're $20 a piece and terrible value that don't necessarily add better mechanics. Your game has sold millions of copies. Millions. Last I checked, Ludian, the studio that makes RimWorld, had like eight employees. You don't need to charge for your DLC. Or at the very least, you don't need to charge that much. So to me at this point, RimWorld just feels like the pull... Okay, so everybody loves Terraria, right? Terraria is a $10 game. It's always been a $10 game. They've never charged for DLC because that game sold so fucking well. RimWorld could be like Terraria. Instead, RimWorld is starting to feel like a weird... Paradox Interactive kind of problem, where it's just getting more expensive. And adding DLC packs doesn't actually make the game better. All it does is split your modding community. And that is a game that's being kept together by mods, right? 
And so you have this modding community that has to support all of these DLCs, and there are certain mods that require certain DLCs, and so it fractures it and makes it complicated, which breaks mod packs, which means people who play the game in a dedicated fashion basically have to buy the DLC, otherwise their mod packs stop working. It really, it just makes me angry. And that's, that's the easiest way to put it. It just pisses me off, and I don't like it. So I, I don't know. I don't hate RimWorld. The Sims has also got hundreds of people that work on it and is run by a greedy corporation. Ludian should be a charming indie developer. You know what I mean? They should be... Like, another example of this, right? Um, subset games. Made faster than light and into the breach. Faster than light was $10. Two years later, they released Advanced Edition for free. Into the Breach is doing the exact same thing on the 16th of August. They're getting a massive patch that they could easily charge $10 for. But they're releasing it for free. Because the game has sold well enough. Like, when you're a studio that's that small... Like, yeah, you can charge. That's fine. But keep it reasonable. And 20 fucking dollars for a worse version of a mechanic that Dwarf Fortress has that's also been added by players already is never going to be good value for anybody. That just sucks, man. Like, literally, that, that shit just sucks. Like, that's the only way to put it. It just sucks. And I, I hate it. I don't know. This makes me sad. Adro the Metal Outlaw, it's good to see you, man. What's up, man? Thanks for the 69 cents again. You're stupid. I mean, yes, but that's, 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 Intravision is kind of a different thing, though, because Intravision sold Prison Architect. Prison Architect didn't get money grabby until they sold it to, like, um, Paradox, right? That's the thing about Prison Architect, is Prison Architect was the exact same, th like, if Ludian sold RimWorld to Paradox... I'd feel very different about it because I'd be like, all right, this is Paradox, like, making money off of a thing that they bought. Okay, fine. This isn't a big publisher making money off of a thing that they got. This is a small developer that's already filthy rich milking a thing for all this guy. Adra, the Metal Outlaw. Thank you very much for the 53rd month. Five tree. 50 tree. It's like the opposite of tree fitty. Thank you very much. Seriously, man. Hope you've been well. Hope things have been good. Hope your summer's been nice and not too hot. But yeah, I, I loved RimWorld. And I still have a very soft spot, spot in my heart for that game. I wouldn't have played it for so long if I didn't. But the, the thing that I think people need to realize is... I don't hate it. I'm just really disappointed. That That's kind of the, the long and short of it. I'm just very disappointed in RimWorld because that game could have been so cool. It could have been so cool. It could have been. And it was for so long until he just consistently made it worse. Also, Frog for Hire, your dwarf has gone insane, chained up in the corner of the king's uh, dining hall, which is kind of amazing, actually, <laughs> because the dwarves are still bringing you food. Just thought I'd let you know. Speaking of, where's the king at? Eating. Well, hang in there, kingy. So, you know, I don't know. I I evangelized and what one the, the the another thing that I guess like this is my own fault and I've learned this now and I will never make this mistake again is people used to say to me, "Should I buy Rimworld? It seems a little bit expensive." While it was in early access. And the thing that I would always say in response is, "Well, they've said they're never going to release paid DLC, so at the very least you don't need to worry about paying for it multiple times." Well, I guess I've learned my lesson. I'm never going to say a thing like that about a developer ever again because turns out it's just bullshit.
I'll still trust Tarn Adams, though. You know, I, I'm in this industry not to make all of the money. I'm in this industry because I love video games, and I like art, and I like ver digital entertainment, and I like entertaining people. That's why I'm in this industry. I'm not in this industry to make all of the money. And because of that, I am attracted to people who are like me, who are in this industry, not because they want to make all of the money, but because they want to make art, because they want to encourage art, because they want to... Gosh, there's a lot of depressed merchants in here. Because I want to make art, right? That's, that, that's why, and I want to encourage other people making cool art. That's why I'm in this industry. turns out a lot of people are in this industry because I want to make all of the money, and I'm just very disappointed to see that, but it's true. All right, hot as hell this summer. Our highs are predicted to be 40 to 43 C every day till the beginning of September. Fuck. Those were the hottest days we had last year. That sucks. Hang in there, dude. You have a good night, Rolf. We could still name one developer that follow through with that will never make you pay for DLC thing. I mean, oh, Jesus. For whatever it's worth, um, there's also uh, Freehold Games. They have said they'll make you pay for DLC once the game is finished, but they said at most it'll be a $5 quest pack <laughs> for Caves of Cud. And that's totally reasonable in my mind. That's completely reasonable. I don't play Factorio, so I, I can't speak to Factorio because I, I know very little about Factorio. I just know that Factorio isn't for me, so I don't know. But I don't think they've ever charged for DLC. But yeah, I, I don't play those types of games. Yeah, I, th I think that Factorio just gets free updates, does it not? Yeah, I expect to pay a lot for KSP2 DLC, though. Sigil. I'll say, hey, Sigil, what's up? Oh, okay. Well, then, yeah, I I, I don't know any. Oh, it sounds like a big update, then. Yeah, that's cool. Free DLC. I don't even consider free DLC DLC. Free DLC is just easily marketable free update. <laughs> big update. I, I barely even count that as DLC, if it's free. Do you have a pretty good idea now of why I grumble about RimWorld when people talk about RimWorld? Have I aired all of my annoyances yet? This is the last patch we promised. Terraria needs to, like, actually go make a game that they can charge for again. <laughs> like, I, I, don't, I don't have any interest in Terraria, but my god, I got so much respect for ReLogic. Like, I, I, that shit's cool. Lots of respect for them. Although, I will say there is one thing that I jet. What just happened? Hmm. They're like birds attacking us? Um, what are you running from? Weird. Anyway, yeah, no, um, one of the... Where was I going with this? I had a thing that I was saying when I saw dwarves running.
Uh, it wasn't super successful. I kind of gave up. I've designed this in such a poor way that it's, it turns out it's actually kind of difficult to successfully burn them. I'm trying to, Ghanian. I know you're not talking to me. Village Terraria sequel updates the OG tar Terraria win release. Huh. Well, that's kind of cool. Yeah, no, I like, see, that, that's, that's the, that's the right way to go about being a small studio, you know? Like, think about this. RimWorld was originally selling at, what, 25 bucks? They sold a million copies in early access. That's before they increased the prices and released a bunch of DLC. Steam takes 30% of that. Ludian was largely like six people during that time. And they had community contributors translate the game, so they didn't even pay for translations. Think about how much money they made off of that fucking game. More than enough. They don't need to keep the game as expensive as it is. It's largely just money at this point. I need to, like, you know, it's funny that you say that. I, I have Star Sector on my hotbar on my PC right now. Just waiting for a reason to actually dive into it. One of these years. I haven't quite gotten to that point yet. I'm very worried about my dwarves right now. I'm seeing way too many depressed dwarves. Yeah, I'm not going to promote that shit, and I'm going to ask you very kindly to not promote that shit in my chat. Everything is free if you want it badly enough on the internet. Don't forget. I don't care what it is or what it isn't. There's are certain things that people who have an audience are not entitled to do. That is one of those things. I don't fucking care if the dev agrees with it or doesn't care. I care, okay? And I don't want you promoting that shit in my chat. That simple. Some fucking class. My game's worth $60, but priced at $15 bucks with a $15 DLC bundle, priced at $5 in both regularly. Yep. Give you an idea. Um, I've made about four different videos in the last two months, Ghanian. Uh, four, specifically. <laughs> um, that were all games on itch.io where I had the full version because the dev gave me a code. That code's probably not gonna change. I could just blurt out the code in a video too, but I'm a responsible adult. There's certain things in this industry that people just shouldn't do. Makes me feel ill when they do. People like that give the rest of us a bad rap. to fill those in. Wait, they raised the price for um, Hollow Knight? What? Wait, wait, what are you talking about, Merc? My problem isn't the act of fucking doing it. My problem is the precedent. One fucker at the top does that, and then it's suddenly okay for other people to do. 
Do not argue in favor of that again. Fuck. I don't want to discuss it anymore. Doesn't fucking matter my view. You can probably tell my view. I want the subject to go away and change. Not arguing in either fucking direction. I just don't want this to be discussed in my chat. Don't know how else you want me to make that clearer to you. What do you want me to say? Fuck yes, it's poor form. Christ. Hi, audio. Let's take a lovely fruit, a tomato. Remove everything that's good from it, the seeds, the vitamins, the, the nutrients, everything that's good about it, and just jam it full of shit garbage shit sugar and put it in a shit bottle that sounds like shit when you put it on your shit. It's shit! Stop eating ketchup! I'm out of coffee. Sad days. <laughs> to hook that back up. Um. Pull that lever. Recaffeinate? No. I have to wake up in 12 hours. It's 30 seconds delay, that's pretty bad. Back in my day, everybody had a two minute delay. Yeah, if you hit play and pause, it fixes it most of the time. That's audio's specific command. Yeah, Twitch delays are pretty good these days, Merc. I'm trying to calm down. I'm fucking livid at this exact moment in time. I apologize. But yeah, no, generally when I'm watching streams, I've got less than a second delay, too. Unless they're streaming to some bizarre server in the middle of Asia or something. Then I get a couple of seconds tops. Fucking damn it, I hate some people in this industry. All right. Um, hmm. How do I do this? Jump off a bridge is my plans for it, Merc. I don't fucking know, man. It's never going to get healthy again. We've been working at it for literally years, and they just keep destroying it. It's not going to happen, so what's the point of planning for what we're going to do with it once it's healthy again? All right. Um, I need to... Okay, let's just re-forbid all of this. I need to keep these dwarves out of here. This is not working. Did 
This is not working at all. Let's just get this hooked up. Nobody. Hmm. Nobody connecting item to lever. Really? Probably just assign that job. Can someone please go do that? Oh, I see. It got suspended. Duh. Okay, can someone else go do that, please? Link building trigger. There we go. Means on it. You know, it's kind of funny because that whole conversation started off with Gunnian stating that they don't want to push too far and take the conversation to a point where it makes me upset. Well, congrats. You pulled it off. You made me upset. <laughs> Maybe not in the way you were intending to. I hate my brain. Don't ever get born with a broken head if you can avoid it. I don't know what to do, chat. Kind of at a loss currently. Link building to trigger. I'm going to have to deal with a lot of pissed off merchants over the next couple minutes. Yeah, I wouldn't say I was so lucky, Mark. It's been a while since I've been this pissed off on stream. I would say it's been probably, it's been months since I've been this pissed off on stream. So I, hmm. this is taking a lot of self-control, put it that way. A large sum of self control. I don't like this time of year. Too hot. Want winter back. Summer can end now. Makes it hard to think. All right, let's lock the dwarves out of there. All of them, not just the military. Okay. <sighs> I appreciate your guys' help to try and, like, spin my head around, but how hot is it out there? I'm not going to answer that question because not as hot as half of chat. Too hot for me. Enough that it annoys me. You're welcome, Mark. Let's get that moved. Come down here. Over here and pull that lever. Get this fucking thing sealed off again. 
And we get to deal with merchants fighting. Because this is going to be an ongoing issue for a little bit, I think. It's all good, Ghanian. Take care of yourself, mate. All right, pulling that lever. Get that thing clunked. Bang. All right. Place the dwarves again. For what it's worth, I also don't think you deserve that. I don't think anybody deserves to tolerate me. Um. All right. There's that done. Let's get these crimes reported. Let's see if we can deal with these dwarves over the next little bit, because that's not going to work. My fear is true. Right, so who's tantruming? What is the thing that is making the dwarves book it? Send you out. Who else is a problem? You know, my brain is broken. This is something that I talk about pretty openly and frequently. Um, I would have preferred that you just left in silence, Ganyan. But you do you, man. You out too. You didn't know that? What do you mean by F zero hard jazz? I think what you what you're referring to is just like Japanese pop jazz. That's all it really was, which is just kind of like this weird, like, electronic blend of jazz and other things. <sighs> I really love it when people push me and 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 then blame me for overreacting. I don't know. Um, all right, what are we doing here? Trying to keep these dwarves in check. Appreciate you, King. Whose teeth were those? Oh, <laughs> frog for hires. Okay. Probably got those knocked out when he got arrested. Can dump those. Game, are you okay? The game did that. I'm gonna just lock into place for a second thing, which it does sometimes. Usually happens when the game rolls over into a full moon in a busy world because all of the uh, were creatures like explode into various things, but. All right, never mind. There still is somebody who's a problem. Send you away. Verified woman conflict. Who are you in conflict with? This person? Nope. 
I know what kind of music you're talking. Like you're you're very like fundamentally explaining it. I know what kind of music you're talking about. I just don't know the name for it. I'd usually think of it as like pop jazz or electro jazz, but I mean, there's a lot of very jazzy music in old games that it, they don't really make games like that anymore. No, not not really, not exploding, but like when large numbers of characters die at an off-site location, it lags the game, which is why large worlds are, worlds are so laggy at times. Because large worlds have this bad habit of... How do I explain this? Uh, have this bad habit of having various, like, where creature and night creature outbreaks around the world. And then when, like, the full moon kicks in, if there's, say, a huge condensed number of, let's just say, were camels in a human sieve with 10,000 people in each location, then... There's a lot of people dying there every full moon, and the game processes that when the full moon rolls around. So sometimes if you're running a larger world, the game will just lock up when the full moon kicks in. Never for very long, usually. Maybe a couple of seconds tops, but still, it's enough that it's noticeable. Um, let's make everybody a new set of clothing. Wrong hotkey combo. I did that one. What's after hoods? Sock. I mean, it's something that might even be fixed by premium. I don't know. Karn's been talking a lot about making uh what are you in conflict with? Child over there. Can't be the captain of the guard. Not stone, is it? Someone is hostile with the rest of the fortress. Right now, and I don't know who it is. That's uh, the confet. Sorry, I'm, I'm just, I'm not very good at giving logical explanations for things right now, audio. Sorry, but it's bad moment, exactly. Is trying to manage things. Oh, there goes that dwarf. That was a mistake. Fuck. I'm gonna do a thing that I've never done in Long Death before. Because I think I may have just killed the fort.
All right. Um, get all of these dwarves out of here. The dwarves in this version of the game are too fragile. And I'm going to potentially lose the fort if I keep going down the route that I'm going. So I need to be very careful. References are inheritables, but members of one door family made a gold artifacts useless, but but all members of one door family made a gold artifacts armor is useless, but gold, that's rad. One of my favorite artifacts I ever got was a gold spear, with an image of my king on it, which was super neat. And I'm still very happy about it. It's a fucking cool ass artifact. Alright, um... I, I appreciate the suggestion, but it doesn't help. Mark. That's not exactly a brick. <laughs> the problem is me, not the game. got nothing to do with the game. Me needing to be very carefully, methodically rebuilding this drawbridge. Okay. Hmm. No, I know how to fix the problem. It's very simple to fix the problem. The issue is I'm teetering on the edge of multiple um Loyalty Cascades, currently. But I'm not having a problem playing the game at this exact moment. My problem is my streaming demeanor. And so streaming a different fort isn't actually a benefit in any way, shape, or form. I am in a unpleasant bad mood right now. Um, due to somebody, you know, asking me to do a thing and then getting mad when I did a thing after pushing me for about an hour into subjects I didn't want to talk about. So stating that they valued said subjects. So it's like, I, I'm just kind of annoyed at it currently. And now I've got multiple dwarves that are probably going to die. There's nothing I can do about it. And I'm sad. See, like that. Hopefully we can imprison stone after that. Hopefully somebody saw that. I don't think anybody did though. And I don't think stone is going to report that crime themselves. No, spouse is nobility. I don't know if I want good luck, dude. <laughs> Stone. I have to.
You're reporting that crime? Fucking hell, I hope so. Indras, I really don't need you to kill Stone. I also really don't need Stone to kill anybody. Wish that you go and knock a statue over or something that we could just report. These old keyboards? I, for the first half of that sentence, I thought you were talking about a dog. For whatever that's worth. Alright, yep. Yeah. Stone, you're the problem. Sorry there, Ming. You gotta go. You need to leave the fort. I can bring you back once we're in a better state. The fort. to myself. Get out, too. I don't know what clonking means. Is that even a word? I, I wouldn't have picked up that you were talking about a keyboard even without autocorrect. Would not have picked that up. Apologies, but... Okay. Um... Mechanical keyboard is a word I would have understood. So I like my brown switches, Merc. Ceramics browns are very pleasant. Be noisy without, you know, having the same general problems that most headaches cause. What the fuck are you running from? Fucking fuck, man. Literally just stone. Let's see if this option works. I'm going to have to lock this dwarf up, I think. Chat can answer that question for you, Bill. big guns.
you just please walk into a room that I can lock you in? That'll do. That door is locked. That's pulled. Pull that lever. Uh, we're a few more than one away, but we're getting there, I suppose. Four twenty four it, I think, is what you mean. Not in the same situation, are you, Zendros? <laughs> really hope you're not. That is a long way off, Bill. Like a very long way off. All right, well, I got the crud hole full. I just need to make sure there's nobody else who's still considered aggro. Nobody reported that crime yet. There's a second one. Who are you running from? Who are you related to? Ay, 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 ay. At least you're not actively getting into fights with anybody. Don't want to lose another dwarf. Who is making you pin? Who is not at peace with you? I don't know. Taffy, okay. It's fine. Also, hi, Taffy. Okay. Sorry, I'm in kind of a cruddy mood currently. Trying to calm down. But also, Long Death is teetering in a bad spot. And I'm trying to, hopefully, be at peace. Okay, found it. It's you two that are aggro. But you're related to Jack Nurik. <sighs> Fuck. I hate this game sometimes. <laughs> All right, so I, if I expel this dwarf who's causing problems, I expel Jack Nurik. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to expel this dwarf, and then I'm going to invite Jack Nurik back in a couple of years. Because I can do that. I 
Well, that's the idea, but it doesn't matter now, DJ. Or could die today. That's where I'm at right now. I'm stressed all living fuck. And it doesn't help that it's also on a day where crappy chat interactions. So I'm in a really bad mood currently. That's putting it nicely. Oh, I, I don't know. I'm about this far away from just like alt f 4 and dealing with it tomorrow. Or next week, rather. Like, I currently kind of need to just isolate two-thirds of the fort. Can't. I think I've got it figured out. Uh, let's keep expelling merchants. It can really do. Hope it's the right ones to expel. Teetering on the edge of a loyalty cascade is a dangerous point to be in in Dwarf Fortress. You end up just losing unnecessary dwarves. I am super happy that this shit's getting fixed. You see these dwarves running around in the middle of nowhere? It's because they're seeing something who's something or some entity on the map that is part of a different faction because they've become hostile to each other. Which essentially means that I have no way of recovering parts of the fort. If dwarves just want to run away screaming, thinking they're in conflict when they see a dwarf that they don't like, there's literally nothing I can do to fix that. All I can do is figure out who is the dwarf that they don't like and expel them. Because if I tell the dwarves to kill that dwarf, then I'm killing a dwarf that's in my faction. And if I kill a dwarf that's in my faction, that's the equivalent of literally just saying, bye-bye, fortress. I, I really don't have it figured out. There's no winning here. <laughs> um, I appreciate you having a lot of faith in me, but currently of the opinion that there is no fixing this. all because I got impatient. I have to figure out what entity is hostile. That's not a solution to the problem that I have. And if you can't figure that out on your own tapioca, I can't explain it to you. Tapioca, if you suggest that again, you can be timed out for the rest of the day. You good? If you want to do that to a fortress you've kept alive for this long, be my guest. I don't want to do that. Okay? I don't know how else to explain that to you. Uh, that's fair, but I'm. You also weren't here 30 minutes ago. I'm not in a great mood today. Apologies. <laughs> this is a really crappy problem of my own making. I'm not mad at you nor Merc. You guys are fine. I'm not mad at anybody in the chat right now. <laughs> okay? You all good. Also, please don't refer to me as Almighty ever again. And lastly, my name is Greg or Blind. Stop calling me Blindy. My name isn't Blindy. It's Blind IRL. Just call me Blind. It's fine. That's not much better. Just, you know how a second ago 
I asked you to call me Greg or Blind Tapioca? Please. Thank you. It's not a difficult request. Cheers, man. If I knew the solu- we'd already have a solution, Mark. If I knew who the problem dwarf was, we wouldn't have a problem. Hope that answers your question. I have a few possible suspects, but they're not dwarves I'm willing to lose right now. Hmm. Well, that's kind of funny. Remember how I locked Stone in a room by himself? He just broke out the window. <laughs> That's kind of amazing, actually. And is now tantruming around again. I blame this disorderly conduct charge on Stone. I feel like this happens, I just feel so bad. <laughs> I wish I could search this screen. There you are. See? Who just killed you? Who did you just kill? Anonymo. Literally nothing I can do about this, because if I kill this fucking dwarf, god damn. this game right now all right that's enough i've given up trying to fix this just stop asking please i don't need your suggestions give up trying to fix this i don't know what to do guys um long death's done for the day that's that's enough long death i am not in a good headspace for this i can't handle this problem and i can't handle chat suggestions long death might end that's my current statement. Long death might end. I mean, I have a backup save from year 400. From 11 years ago. But the, the rule's always been with long death that, no, we don't backup saves. We don't Go back. If long death dies, long death dies. And largely in this current state, long death is in this state that it is because I wasn't paying any attention because I was pissed. Because of that stupid fucking discussion. And that's my fault. That's that's not your guys' fault. That's my fault for not paying attention. Uh, I'm just, I'm in a state of livid rage right now. Like, I, I, I can't fully explain how pissed off I am because I'm trying my damnedest to keep it cool. But it's like, long discussion I didn't want to have about a game I didn't want to talk about ended with me shouting, because I got pissed, ended with that person then 
basically saying, it's like, yeah, I can't watch your streams anymore. I'm going to go unfollow. Goodbye. Thanks for the years of entertainment, which never feels good, by the way. Like, that that's like the last thing I ever want to read on a stream, right? Um, now the fort's falling apart. The, today's like the worst day I've had in years. Although today's stream largely has been great. Like, no, no complaint, but...